Should I go over just because you said so? Who do you think I am? Xiao Chen thought coldly in his heart. Xiao Chen wanted to ignore him, but when he saw that the manservant did not leave he asked, who asked you to pass on the message? The manservant replied honestly, the first young master of the Zhang clan. Young master Zhang Muang said he wanted to invite you over for some wine and introduce you to his friends. Xiao Chen picked up his cup and drained it in one gulp. He said indifferently, tell him to come over himself. Honestly, I do not actually know him. The manservant revealed an unsightly expression, he did not know what to do. If he passed on this message, those people would definitely be upset at him. Furthermore, those people were not the kind of people who ought to be provoked. Fatty Jin laughed, since when are the people of Liusheng Pavilion so gutless? Just follow the instructions of this brother and pass on the message exactly as he said it. Since Fatty Jin said something, the manservant had no other choice but to do as he was told. This fatty truly has bad intentions. He is clearly helping himself, trying to quietly stir up conflicts between myself and them, Xiao Chen thought to himself. However, he did not mind this since Zhang Muang did not respect him. There was no need for Xiao Chen to belittle himself. Fatty Jin raised his cup and toasted Xiao Chen, Brother Xiao, you are very bold. Do you know who those people are? Xiao Chen said indifferently, tell me the details. Fatty Jin raised his cup and then pointed at one of them, that is Duan Mu Qing, her clan is the top noble clan in Sichui Prefecture. They are one of the three powers of Dongming Province and have an innate bloodline. Their hereditary martial spirit is the Ice Phoenix, it has already been passed down for thousands of years. The male sitting to her right is Hua Yunfei. The Hua noble clan is also one of the three powers of Dongming Province. Their clan's martial spirit is a gushing holy river. However, his martial spirit had a mutation. The holy river turned into a horrifying blood river. The last one is even more terrifying, he is the last disciple of the Misty Sword sect master, Chu Chaoyun. Ha ha. I suppose I do not have to introduce the Misty Sword sect, since they have existed for even longer than the Holy Lands. However, the most frightening is not one of these people. Instead, it is that fellow called Zhang Muang. He is from the Bai clan, the strongest power in Whitewater City. As they said, it is better to deal with King Yama than the little demons. You did not give him face in front of these people, with his character. Ha <laughs> ha. TL notes, it is better to deal with King Yama than the little demons, this means that the lackeys are even more difficult to deal with. According to Chinese folklore, King Yama is the one in hell. The meaning of Jin Dabao's final two laughs was obvious. Xiao Chen was very clear on the consequences of offending that lackey. However, he had the ability to protect himself and was not afraid. He only had a few doubts in his heart, why did the younger generation of the three powers of Dongming province come to Whitewater City? Xiao Chen asked, you should know why this group of people are here, right? Fatty Jin fanned himself and put on an appearance of knowing what was going on. He smiled, it would be useless to tell you. Aside from Zhang Muang, all of them have already surmounted the martial master realm and are already martial grand masters. With your current cultivation level, it is best you do not know. Fatty Jin stopped halfway through, it was clear that he was trying entice Xiao Chen to continue asking him, then pretending that he was put on the spot and had no other choice but to divulge what he knew. He wanted Xiao Chen to owe him a favor. Although Xiao Chen was curious, it was not to the point where he had to know at any cost. Furthermore, it was clear that this fatty was no ordinary person. Thinking of the plan he mentioned earlier, Xiao Chen felt it was better that he did not mix with him too much. Who knows? He might die as a result of this fatty and would not even know about it. Seeing that Xiao Bai already had its fill, he smiled faintly in his heart and prepared to take his leave. This brother, do you dare to state your name? Just as Xiao Chen was about to say something, Zhang Muang led two servants over, walking with a gloomy face. Xiao Chen took a look behind him and discovered that the group seated at the table across had already finished their meal. Duan Mu Qing and the other two had already left. He thought about it for a moment and guessed Zhang Muang's motive. Since they had already left, Zhang Muang no longer needed to maintain his previous elegant demeanor. Seeing that Xiao Chen did not immediately answer Zhang Muang's question, a cultivator behind him pointed at Xiao Chen and said, how arrogant. 
You did not even give our young master face when he invited you over to have a drink. Who do you think you are? Looking down on the Zhang clan of Whitewater City. Xiao Chen got up and formed a fist with his right hand, it gave off a reserved purple light. Without saying any useless words or wasting any time, he directly punched the chest of this cultivator. With a loud bang, the purple light burst out fiercely and a huge force knocked the servant flying back. The servant kept trying to grab onto something with his hands, but he was not able to do so. Bang! The servant landed on a table, smashing it into two halves. However, the huge force did not weaken, and the servant continued to roll on the floor before finally crashing into the wall. He vomited a mouthful of blood before fainting. Xiao Chen dusted his hands off and stared at Zhang Muang. He smiled indifferently, my apologies. When a dog barks at me, I will always take action instead of trying to reason with it. Let me answer your question now. My name is Xiao Chen. It's the Xiao with a grass, head, and the Chen of mourning. TL Note. Sometimes in China, when introducing their names, people will explain which Chinese characters make up their name, as there are many characters that have the same sound. In this case, the Xiao is written as Xiao, the grass head refers to the top of the character for grass Sao. You will notice that they share the same, top, or, head. As for Chen Qian, mourning in Chinese is Zhao Chen Zhao Qian. Goodbye. Xiao Chen leapt over the fourth floor railing once he said that, directly jumping out. When the spirit fox on the table saw that Xiao Chen had left, it hurriedly jumped after him. When Xiao Chen saw that Xiao Bai jumped after him, he was startled. He immediately turned his body over in midair and caught the spirit fox, hugging it. He scolded it, you jumped when I jumped. Are you not afraid of falling to death? Xiao Chen carried the spirit fox and took a deep breath, before leaping in mid-air and landing on the roof of a house. The total distance he vaulted down was about a hundred meters. After a few more bounds, he disappeared from the crowd's view. Brother Xiao, you still have not told me if you agree to my plan. Fatty Jin leaned on the railing and shouted towards the distant Xiao Chen in a loud voice. Zhang Muang punched out suddenly, his fist landing on the table where Xiao Chen was drinking at earlier. The table immediately broke into four pieces, and the tableware shattered with tinkling sounds upon hitting the ground. After the customers on the fourth floor saw what happened, they were no longer in the mood to continue eating. They threw down stacks of banknotes and left after they paid their bills. Zhang Muang stood where he was with an ashen complexion, as he watched Xiao Chen leave, his eyes were full of anger. He had never seen anyone so arrogant in Whitewater City before. How dare he actually injure his man in front of him and then calmly report his name, before leaving immediately. The people on the fourth floor were all of some status in Whitewater City. Probably by the next day the entire Whitewater City would see him as a joke. First young master, you have to take revenge for me. The servant in the corner woke up in a dazed state, he was not clear on the current situation and grumbled as he walked with a tremble towards Zhang Muang's side. Bang! Zhang Muang was currently angry, and he raised his leg to kick the servant away. He scolded himself ruthlessly, you trash. You caused me to lose all my face. Zhang Muang turned around, wanting to leave this place immediately, he wanted to use his clan's spies to find out Xiao Chen's place of residence. He wished he could hack Xiao Chen into thousands of pieces immediately. Young Master Zhang, please wait for a bit. It seems that you have not paid your bill yet. Fatty Jin blocked Zhang Muang with a gleeful face. Zhang Muang could not be bothered with him and just took out a wad of banknotes, throwing it on the floor. Fatty Jin took a quick look and smiled, Young Master Zhang, the amount does not seem to be correct. Take a look. You have damaged two of my tables and chased away all the guests on the fourth floor. Three thousand tails of silver would not be enough. Zhang Muang looked at Jin Dabao in disdain and took out a few gold banknotes, throwing them angrily on the floor before trampling on them before cursing out, damn fatty. Is that enough? Jin Dabao saw the gold banknotes, and his eyes lit up. His eyes narrowed as he said, that is definitely enough, young master Zhang is indeed young master Zhang. This amount is a huge sum. Take care. I will not send you off further. You are welcome to come and smash my tables again. Ah. Look at my mouth. I start rambling when I get happy. Don't be angry, I meant we welcome young master Zhang to come back for a meal. 
Jin Dabao did not mind Zhang Muang's mockings at all. He only knelt down and happily picked up the banknotes on the floor, piece by piece. Every time he picked up a piece, the expression on his face seemed as though he became more and more drunk. Young master, let me pick them up. This shameless chore is not befitting of your status, a manservant of Liusheng Pavilion said, after he could no longer bear to continue watching. Jin Dabao pushed aside the manservant, saying, go to the side. Do you not see that I am enjoying myself? Not everyone can meet a foolish spendthrift who is willing to compensate 10,000 tails of silver for two tables, like I did. Ha ha. The sounds of the zither on the fourth floor had stopped at an unknown time. From behind the screens a young girl in a pink dress walked out leisurely, carrying a zither. She was a beautiful woman, with her hair tied into a bun at the top of her head and fastened with a hair pin, her skin was as white as snow, and it seemed so fragile that even the wind could break it. These things made her seem incomparably fresh and pure. However, when she walked over leisurely, a flirtatious expression appeared on her naturally. It was very charming, making her look tender, beautiful, and alluring. When Fatty Jin saw this girl, he immediately stopped picking up the money. He immediately leapt over. If Xiao Chen was here, he would definitely have the same impression of a male pig in heat. Miss Xiao Xiao, I did not expect that you would be here. Dabao missed you so much. Fatty Jin's plump body was moving fast, as though he was flying. He spread open his arms and ran toward the girl. If Xiao Chen saw this, he would blush with shame. Dang. The seven-stringed zither in Xiao Xiao's embrace moved forward slightly, stopping on the fatty's lower jaw. Fatty Jin immediately covered his mouth in pain, kneeling on the ground. Xiao Xiao hugged her zither as she looked at the fatty on the ground. Smiling coldly, she said, Fatty Jin, you really do not change your ways. Always using the same moves every time. Fatty Jin stood up gleefully. Unfortunately, his lower jaw was now swollen. His originally vulgar look actually managed to turn even more vulgar when he smiled. Fortunately, this fatty has hard teeth. Otherwise, if I were jabbed by you like this every time I would have lost all my teeth. After Fatty Jin got up, he shamelessly laughed. As he spoke, he unconsciously walked to Xiao Xiao's side and placed a fat hand on her tiny shoulder. Xiao Xiao was currently looking in the direction where Xiao Chen had just left, it seemed as though she did not notice the fatty's actions. The fatty's heart rate sped up several times, this goddess was right in front of him, and he could finally touch her. The fat on his face quivered. Who? Xiao Xiao suddenly turned around, and the seemingly ordinary zither headed towards the fatty's face. A strong wind followed it as it ruthlessly struck towards him. The fatty was startled and quickly ducked to evade. Seeing Xiao Xiao glaring angrily at him, the fatty straightened himself and smiled, I could not help myself. Every time I see Miss Xiao Xiao there is this impulse in me. This is a normal reaction for men. Miss Xiao Xiao, please do not pay any mind to it. Impulse my ass, how can there be someone as shameless as you? Xiao Xiao scolded the fatty furiously in her heart 10,000 times. However, she knew that with the fatty's thick skin, the more you scolded him, the more smug became. The best method was to just ignore him. Xiao Xiao looked around for a clean table before she took a seat and said, Damn fatty, how is that youth from earlier related to you? When the fatty heard this, he was startled and extremely astonished. He said in an incredibly serious tone, could it be that your elder brother Jin, alone, is insufficient to satisfy you? Xiao Xiao, your appetite is too big. C.A. Xiao Xiao could no longer resist any more, so she slapped the zither with her palm. The zither rose into the air and caused a qi wave to smash ruthlessly into the fatty. Fatty Jin knew about the origins of this zither and did not dare to come up against it head on. He evaded toward the side, revealing a speed that did not match with his body. Who? The zither attacked incessantly, and with a boom, it created a hole the size of a bowl in the wooden walls of Liusheng Pavilion. The walls of Liusheng Pavilion were made from peak grade sandalwood. An entire wooden plank of it would cost thousands of tails of gold. When the fatty saw such a big hole, his heart bled. He ran to the front of the hole and measured the size of it with his hands, trying to calculate how much money he had lost. Damn, I lost at least half the money I just picked up, the fatty cried out in agony after he measured the size of the hole. Boom. 
The zither, which had already flown out earlier, flew back in with a shua sound. This time, it did so with a larger force, creating another hole in the wall. The fatty was incredibly heartbroken, he said in a hoarse voice, crap. There goes the other half. Seems like I did not earn anything today in the end. The zither returned to Xiao Xiao's hands once again before she took a seat on a bench. Her eyes were closed and a drunk expression could be seen on her pure white face as she caressed the strings of the zither gently. Ding. She suddenly opened her eyes and both her hands rapidly plucked the zither strings. An impassioned melody of a powerful army struggling in a battlefield suddenly rang out. Its volume slowly became louder, and very soon it pulled everyone into a fired up state, as if they were in a battlefield. Tong, tong, tong. Streams of sound waves spread out in all directions as the zither string rang out. The fatty thought silently in his heart, crap. My mouth created trouble for me again. Just as he thought that, all the antique porcelain used as decoration on the fourth floor began shattering. Not a single piece managed to escape. At the end, the zither sounds gradually grew even louder as the killing intent got heavier. Aside from the table that Su Xiaoxiao sat at, everything on the fourth floor soared up into the air. Bang! Su Xiaoxiao finished the melody on a heavy note, causing all the table and chairs in the air to shatter. Countless amounts of sawdust were scattered in the air, settling down only after a long time. The fatty's face, which usually had a smile on it, was currently drained of blood, looking very pale. It seemed as though he might collapse at any time, it was extremely funny. A manservant at the side hurried over to support him. He said in a soft voice, young master, don't be too upset. When the manager knew that Miss Su Xiaoxiao would be coming, he guessed that you would definitely anger her. So he replaced all the antiques with counterfeits in advance. The fatty's eyes opened wide as he said, really. The manager understands me really well. Really. When fatty Jin heard this, his spirits lifted up and the smile returned to his face. However, he still had a bitter expression, the others are fake, but the two holes are definitely very real. There is no way for that to be fake. In the end, I still made a loss. Damn fatty. Still not coming over. Su Xiaoxiao put aside the zither and scolded him. Her mood had only improved after causing all this destruction. Fatty Jin did not dare to throw any tantrums and hurriedly rushed over. His face was full of smiles as he said, Miss Xiao Xiao, what orders do you have for me? This fat brother will guarantee your satisfaction. Su Xiao Xiao frowned slightly and glared at him, that youth from earlier, how is he related to you? The fatty did not dare to run his mouth this time and replied honestly, I just met him today and wanted to do some business with him. I only know his name is Xiao Chen and do not know any other details. Xiao Chen. When Su Xiao Xiao heard this name, she thought of a certain possibility. A smile immediately appeared on her face, this careless smile was like flowers blossoming, nothing more beautiful can be imagined. When the fatty at her side saw this, he was dumbstruck. When Su Xiao Xiao saw the fatty's foolish appearance, she could not help but feel disdain in her heart. She asked, how much do you know about the ancient remains that the Bai clan talked about? Jin Dabao recovered his wits and replied, I know a little about it. The Bai clan's people obtained a map of an ancient treasure site, but they did not have the strength to enter. So they invited the three great powers of Dongming province to explore the ancient remains together. However, someone in the Bai clan leaked the information. So this news was spread to everyone. The great powers of Zaihe province and Nanling province also sent people to rush over. Even the imperial court sent someone to come over. Su Xiaoxiao was astonished in her heart. The allure of the remains left by the ancient powers was too great. It seemed like it would be difficult for her to attempt to benefit from this. West of Whitewater City, in a small isolated courtyard, a sturdy wooden pole stood upright in the courtyard. Xiao Chen grasped his lunar shadow saber tightly and focused on looking at the wooden pole, raising his aura to the extreme. Kai. Drawing the saber. Xiao Chen's expression changed, and he suddenly unsheathed the lunar shadow saber. He struck the wooden pole at an inclined angle, and a section of the wooden pole that was as thick as his arm was sliced off. Shua. 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 Xiao Chen quickly hacked out three more times. When the fourth strike landed, the wooden pole wobbled for a little before it went crashing to the ground. 
It was just four simple saber strikes, but Xiao Chen's forehead was covered in sweat. He wiped the sweat off and muttered to himself, it's still insufficient. It has already been half a month, yet there is no progress. This small isolated courtyard was purchased by Xiao Chen after he came to Whitewater City. After he settled down, he immediately started to review all the martial techniques and immortal spells that he had learned. He realized that the things he had learned were too varied and messy. He decided to retrain himself and not rush to restore his cultivation back to inferior grade martial master from superior grade martial disciple. He figured that he might as well use this opportunity to strengthen his foundations. All the martial techniques he developed using the Battle Sage Origins changing character formula were temporarily pushed to the side, focusing on the truths that were contained in the Battle Sage Origins changing character formula. He now saw that he had not even begun to understand the essence of it and had only scratched its surface. He was not able to use it as though it was a part of himself. After using those techniques for a long period of time, with his current cultivation, he found that it was doing more harm than good to him. In the long run, it would cause him to thoroughly lose himself, lost in these martial techniques that came from foreign sources. Thus, he wanted to focus on the rushing thunder saber technique and azure dragon cloud soaring art. He cultivated the azure dragon cloud soaring art in a quiet place in the savage forest. As for the cultivation of the rushing thunder saber technique, there were no major requirements for it. Thus, whenever he came back to rest, he would go into the yard to practice. The rushing thunder saber technique was about doing everything in one breath, to raise the aura to the extreme, and use the rushing thunder chop as the initiating move. The accumulated energy would be released out explosively. This was an extremely bold and powerful martial technique. If he could execute it all the way up to the rushing thunder third chain chop, the explosive energy would be raised to the peak and then increased by many folds before finally exceeding a regular earth rank martial technique. However, he discovered that this saber technique had a fatal flaw, the first strike. If it was unable to cause the opponent to retreat, then the techniques that followed could not be executed anymore. The aura would be used up and could not be used to form the following techniques. Xiao Chen thought of the swordsmen of ancient China from his previous life. He felt that their methods of training saber techniques made sense, so he decided to follow their methods to practice in this world. This wooden pole that stood upright may be as thick as an arm, but it was actually very light. It was a special wood of the Tianwu continent. With just the strength required to move a feather, it was possible to move it. Within this extremely short period of time, what Xiao Chen wanted to do was to be able to rapidly cut the wooden pole, but the wooden pole had to still remain standing. What appeared to be a simple saber strike actually exhausted a large amount of his concentration. Of the slightly more than one month's time that he spent in Whitewater City, Xiao Chen spent most of it practicing the first move of the rushing thunder saber technique, drawing the saber. Every day, the number of times he brandished his saber numbered at least a thousand. Initially, the moment he touched the wooden pole, it would fall. Slowly, he became able to hack it at once. Then he was able to continuously execute four saber strikes. From that point on, his progress became stagnant. Shaking his head, Xiao Chen erected the wooden pole once again and continued to practice the first move of the rushing thunder saber technique. Unwittingly, the sun above his head had sank to the west. The sunset dyed the clouds that filled the sky red, turning the entire sky a fiery color. Xiao Chen continued to repeat the same action tirelessly, he did not even notice as time flowed by. Only after the sky turned completely dark did Xiao Chen stop what he was doing. His shirt was completely wet with sweat, and the soreness of his arms was all he felt. Without resting immediately, Xiao Chen sat down on the ground cross-legged and entered into a state of cultivation. When the body reached its limits, if one cultivated then, they would often experience an unexpected result. After an hour, the Purple Thunder Divine Incantation had circulated for many cycles in Xiao Chen's body. Suddenly, he opened his eyes. The sweat in his body had already entirely evaporated into steam, the blood in his body was boiling, and the soreness in his arms completely vanished. Who? Xiao Chen got up, took a long breath out, and stretched his arm out. In a split second, all the bones in his body gave off crackling sounds. After all these, he felt a very comfortable and invigorating feeling. 
Ku. Xiao Bai, who had been standing on the stone table all the while, quickly jumped down when it saw that Xiao Chen had completed his cultivation. Its eyes were filled with intelligence and gave off a gleam in the night, as it rushed towards Xiao Chen's embrace. Xiao Chen smiled faintly and picked it up. After he teased it for a bit, he put it away in the spirit blood jade. Just as Xiao Chen prepared to go to sleep, a faint killing intent came from the distance. Xiao Chen frowned and extended out his spiritual sense in the direction of the killing intent. In the dark of night, a human shadow holding a broad saber leapt from roof to roof, heading towards Xiao Chen's courtyard rapidly. When Xiao Chen saw the person's face clearly, he smiled coldly to himself. This person was Zhang Muang's other servant, the person who claimed he could kill Xiao Chen with one palm. The power of the Jiang clan was indeed great in Whitewater City. Before even half a day had passed, they had actually managed to find the place where he stayed. It seemed like he would not be able to stay here long term. Seeing that human figure come closer, Xiao Chen slowly moved to a corner of the wall close to the door. He withdrew the aura of his body completely, and the black lunar shadow saber could not be seen in the dark of night. Dong. The human figure jumped from the roof and landed firmly on Xiao Chen's courtyard wall. He did not come down in a rush, and released his perception. He felt that it was strange he could not sense anyone in the courtyard. He muttered to himself, could it be that the information was wrong? No, that can't be right. It perhaps this kid has not returned yet. I will go down and hide myself. Drawing the sword. In the instant he jumped down, a resplendent electrical light suddenly lit up in the darkness of night. A saber light carrying a peerless aura moved quickly and gracefully. Before the man could react to it, his body was chopped in two halves. This saber strike was strangely incredibly fast, and even though the man's body was cut into two halves, it did not separate in the air immediately, he did not even feel any pain. When he landed, his legs carried on the momentum and continued running for a few meters. In the next instant, he revealed a horrifying expression as he looked at his own legs running. He turned his head around, the instant the electrical light faded, he saw Xiao Chen's ice-cold gaze. Xiao Chen fired out a stream of purple flames and burned the body to ashes. After that, he packed up some stuff in his room and immediately left the courtyard. The next morning, Xiao Chen came out of a desolate inn. He was wearing a black cloak, shrouding his entire body in shadows as he slowly made his way to Liusheng Pavilion. A get-up like Xiao Chen's was not too strange amongst cultivators. Thus, when he walked over to Liusheng Pavilion, it did not attract anyone's attention. He casually found an empty table and took a seat. Xiao Chen called the waiter over, please get your boss to come over. Tell him there is some business for him. The waiter looked at Xiao Chen and found it funny, can the boss of Liusheng Pavilion simply be seen by anyone when they want to? My apologies, our guest. I believe that you do not understand our rules. Xiao Chen smiled faintly and took out a 500 silver tails banknote, as well as a wooden carving. He handed them to the waiter saying, please do me this favor and run this errand. When your boss sees this wooden carving, he will not blame you. The waiter opened his eyes wide in glee as he received the silver banknotes, esteemed guest as a frank and straightforward person. I will go now, but I can't say for sure if the boss will see you or not. Xiao Chen picked up the teacup on the table and gently took a sip. Smiling as he said, that's fine, so long as you report the results to me. Whether it succeeds or not, I will not blame you. Not long after the waiter left, the heavy footsteps of Jin Dabao could be heard coming from the second floor. Seeing Xiao Chen's get up, he was secretly astonished before he came running over gleefully, Brother Xiao, why are you dressed up like this? Are you on the run? If you are, you can come and find me. I have my ways. Where do you want to go? Just name it. Xiao Chen said nothing, his right hand, which was holding the teacup, suddenly made a move and with a shua sound he grabbed the wooden carving in the fatty's hands back he placed the wooden carving down and then he grabbed the teacup that was slowly falling jin dabao's eyes narrowed and carefully evaluated xiao chen he was astonished in his heart he did not expect that xiao chen would be so fast when he made his move he was carelessly caught off guard xiao chen put the teacup down and said indifferently brother dabao you don't have to worry about the matter of me being on the run. 
I am only here to talk business. I am a straightforward person. I only have one question for you. Are you willing or not? Jin Dabao had a smile on his face again, of course. Why not? Xiao Chen said, then let's talk about the details. The wooden carving you saw the last time. I will not be carving that again. The carving that I would cooperate with you on is the one you just saw. Fatty Jin frowned and said in a manner that seemed like he was somewhat put on the spot, I say, Brother Xiao, for these two wooden carvings, the difference in price for with and without the additional clothes is not just one or two times. Then we are at an impasse. I have my bottom line. I will not sell the carving of Princess Ying Yu with just her bra on. Goodbye, Xiao Chen got up, and then proceeded to walk toward the door. Fatty Jin hurriedly got up and held Xiao Chen back. Smiling, he said, Brother Xiao, don't be in such a rush. Did I reject it? I was deliberating on the price. Sit down and talk. Please sit. Xiao Chen smiled to himself in his heart. He had anticipated that this fatty would be tempted by this transaction. He had accurately guessed that Jin Dabao would not let him leave just like that. When dealing with such calculative people, he could not take his conscience into account. He had to show off his strong side, or else he would be the one suffering a disadvantage. Seeing that Xiao Chen sat down once again, Fatty Jin said, Brother Xiao, how about this? You are a very straightforward person, so I will not beat around the bush. We will follow the plan mentioned previously. You supply the goods, and I'll handle the sales. After that, we will split the profits 30 to 70 in my favor. Xiao Chen thought for a while, I do not like the way profit is split. It takes too long for money to come in. Just state a price, how much would you be willing to purchase a wooden carving for? Fatty Jin muttered to himself irresolutely before saying, how about 100 tails of gold per wooden carving? Xiao Chen was astonished, to think that he could sell it for such an expensive price. 100 tails of gold was equivalent to 10,000 tails of silver. The cost of making the wooden carving was almost negligible. The profit margin was way higher than what Xiao Chen expected. The silver tails that he currently had on him were obtained in Linlang Pavilion by selling the fasting pills. It was a much more complicated process to refine medicine, in comparison, creating wooden carvings was a lot easier. In the introduction of the life bestowal spell in the Compendium of Cultivation, it had some specific records on making wooden carvings, Xiao Chen's carving skills came from there. In this world, where the martial way reigned supreme, there were very few people who would venture into and research auxiliary skills like this. Xiao Chen's handiwork was unique in this world. He originally wanted to reject Fatty Jin's proposal, but after the assassination attempt last night, he felt a sense of urgency in his heart. The path of cultivation required a large amount of money. Not to mention expensive medicinal pills, good armor, and spirit weapons alone would require a cultivator to pay a huge price. One of the important reasons why the disciples of the huge noble clans cultivated faster than the rest was because they had access to good medicinal pills and quality equipment. Although Xiao Chen could earn money from refining medicinal pills, he was still unable to refine any high-grade ones. Furthermore, the process of refining medicinal pills also required a large influx of money. Also, Xiao Chen intended to refine more equipment in future. That required a large amount of money as well, so he was actually very much in need of money. When Fatty Jin saw that Xiao Chen did not say anything, he thought that the price he quoted was too low. He said, Brother Xiao, are you not satisfied with this price? This is already the best price I can give you. I am not taking advantage of you, this is the highest I can go. Xiao Chen recovered his wits and smiled, no that's not it. I was just a little astonished. How in the world are you selling it for you to be able to purchase it at such a high price? Shua. The gold folding fan in the fatty's hand opened quickly. Xiao Chen knew in his heart that when he did this action, it was time for him to start bragging. Indeed after the fatty fanned himself vigorously, he smiled cockily, Brother Xiao, you probably do not know, but this princess has a very strong influence in the imperial court and the imperial capital. It is not exaggerating to call her a goddess. Not only is her strength at the peak, she has the appearance of a fairy. This fatty has already noticed this long ago. Using this business opportunity, I have found people to write quite a few books on her. 
it could be said that every male within the imperial capital has a copy. Under the influence of these books, as well as some other inspiration, I had already thought of the idea of having wooden carvings long ago. Unfortunately, I could not find a craftsman suitable for the job. Thus, when I saw Brother Xiao, I felt that there was an affinity between us. I have been searching for someone like you for a long time. Xiao Chen was secretly astonished in his heart, this fatty is truly a business genius, to think that he could devise such an innovative marketing method. After that, he suddenly thought of something. He asked in a probing manner, Brother Dabao, those books of yours. They are not erotic novels right? Fatty Jin smiled somewhat awkwardly, those. Um, they can't really be called erotic novels. I can only say that they are novels that have some romance and fantasy elements to them. Xiao Chen felt ashamed in his heart, I knew it. This fatty would definitely not do it in a morally upright manner. He asked somewhat worriedly, are you not afraid that the imperial court will find out about you doing this? Fatty Jin smiled in a vulgar manner, there is no need to worry about this at all. The officer in charge of investigating this has some dealings with me. We even privately discussed some of the details of the novels. The novels we have are serialized, if he closed us down, he would no longer be able to read them. Xiao Chen had to admire him from the bottom of his heart this time. He took out the wooden carvings that he had made previously and handed them over to Fatty Jin, I had made these in the past. There should be about a hundred of them. Give me a price. Fatty Jin said nothing, an excited smile filling his face as he took every wooden carving and carefully inspected them, one by one. He looked very serious as he did this. On the fourth floor of Liusheng Pavilion, Zhang Muang and Duan Muqing were seated at a table alone. Zhang Muang smiled elegantly, Miss Duanmu, I have already made a deal with that owner of the spirit fox. My servant has already gone to retrieve the goods. He should be sending them to you anytime now. Duanmu Ching smiled mildly, how much did you spend? I will pay you double. I will not let you suffer any disadvantages. Seeing the hard to come by smile of Duanmu Ching, the joy on Zhang Muang's face deepened, I did not spend much. Miss Duanmu doesn't have to bother with that as long as you are happy. Duan Mu Ching was mildly startled, that person from yesterday wanted a heaven-ranked spirit weapon before he was willing to sell it. Young Master Zhang, did you play any underhanded tricks? Zhang Muang panicked in his heart. He said in a serious manner, Miss Duan Mu, although my clan has some power in Whitewater City, normally I would not bully someone. Furthermore, with Miss Duan Mu around, if I did any such things, wouldn't that be equal to me looking down on the Duanmu clan? Duanmu Ching found this funny in her heart, but she did not say anything. The two of them continued to wait, but after a long time the servant that Zhang Muang mentioned did not arrive. I think something must have happened. Let's talk about this another day. I shall be leaving first. Duanmu Ching finally lost patience and headed down the stairs. Zhang Muang scolded the servant ruthlessly in his heart. Throwing out a stack of Silver Tail's banknotes, he chased after her. Zhang Muang chased her all the way to the second floor before finally catching up. He hurriedly shouted out in a loud voice, Miss Duanmu, let me explain. Duanmu Ching stopped walking and said politely, Young Master Zhang, there is nothing to explain. This is not some important matter, you don't have to worry about it. Seeing Duan Mu Ching's expression, Zhang Muang knew that his plan had backfired. He could not help but to feel anxious. Just at that moment, Fatty Jin had finished counting all the hundred wooden carvings. He put them aside with a happy expression and took out a stack of Gold Tail's banknotes. He said, Brother Xiao, please count it. Xiao Chen immediately put aside all the banknotes and got up, there is no need to count, it was good doing business with you. When I have more, I will bring them to you. Just as he turned, he coincidentally met Zhang Muang's gaze. When Zhang Muang saw Xiao Chen, dressed in a black cloak, an astonished look appeared on his face. Xiao Chen. After the astonishment, came boundless rage. Zhang Muang found it completely unexpected that he would actually run into Xiao Chen here. He flew into a rage born of humiliation as he walked towards Xiao Chen. Zhang Muang did not expect to run into Xiao Chen here today. When he thought about the matters of the previous day, as well as what happened earlier, the old grudges added together with the new. 
Zhang Muang could not hold back the anger he suppressed for a long time. Even with Duan Muqing beside him, he could no longer be bothered to maintain his elegance. Only one thought remained in his head, which was to kill Xiao Chen on the spot, to make him pay for all the humiliation that he suffered. When Xiao Chen saw Zhang Muang suddenly, he felt mildly astonished, as well. However, he calmed down almost immediately. He noticed Zhang Muang did not bring any of his servants with him. Young Master Zhang, we meet again, Xiao Chen had a faint smile on his face, there was no fear on it at all. Instead, it was like greeting an old friend. Xiao Chen was smiling as he headed over to him. Zhang Muang cursed out at him, meet your. Before he could finish cursing, he saw a black saber appear in Xiao Chen's hand. The position of Xiao Chen's feet shifted and he quickly took up a stance. Drawing the saber. A saber light reflected in his eyes. Zhang Muang had never seen such a quick saber before, neither had he seen such a tyrannical person. Who would think that Xiao Chen actually dared to make a move on him in Whitewater City? In this critical moment of danger, he executed his strength as a martial master to its peak and retreated backward desperately. His quick movement saved his life, this saber did not hack him into two. And yet, there was a saber wound as deep as a finger on his chest. A stream of fresh blood spurted out into the air. The resulting force from the saber caused his body to fly backward. A large hole was torn in the chest of Zhang Muang's shirt, a piece of yellow paper drifted out of it. When Xiao Chen saw this, he quickly grabbed it. Zhang Muang, who fell to the ground, wanted to stand up when he saw Xiao Chen grab the piece of paper. However, he discovered his wounds were too severe. Blood flowed out unceasingly, and he did not have any strength to even stand. He could not help but panic in his heart. He coughed blood into the air as he shouted, Miss Duanmu, that is the copy of the map to the ancient remains. Do not let him keep it. When Duanmu Ching heard this, her face turned frosty. She waved both her hands and streams of cold chi flowed behind her before they finally gathered in the middle of her hands. A palm filled with cold chi smashed ruthlessly towards Xiao Chen. This opponent was very strong, so Xiao Chen did not dare to receive it head on. He pushed off the ground with his feet and his body soared into the air, launching down from the second floor. Boom! The table behind Xiao Chen immediately turned into ice before it explosively shattered, turning into countless ice shards. What a tyrannical cold chi! When the cultivators on the second floor witnessed the situation, they were completely astonished. They hurriedly paid their bills, they did not wish to be dragged into this battle for no reason at all. Bang! When Duan Muqing saw Xiao Chen descend to the first floor, she pushed off the wooden floor fiercely and her body immediately dropped to the first floor as well, landing beside Xiao Chen. Damn it! Are you trying to destroy my shop? When Fatty Jin saw the huge hole on the floor, he could not help but curse loudly. Once Duan Muqing landed, she fired a stream of cold chi at Xiao Chen's back. The cold chi rapidly congealed in the air, taking the shape of a small bird. Kai. Duan Muqing formed a hand seal with both her hands and the ice phoenix martial spirit in her body cried out. The bird flew into the air and its eyes gleamed. Its size and speed immediately doubled. Xiao Chen instantly stopped moving as he felt a dangerous aura coming from behind him. His mind went blank as he recalled his normal state when practicing with the saber. He focused as his right hand grasped the lunar shadow saber tightly. His aura soared to its peak. Drawing the saber. Just as the ice bird was behind Xiao Chen by half a meter, Xiao Chen suddenly spun around and made his move. The saber gave off a reserved light and with a, shua, sound, it split the ice bird in half right down the middle. Where the ice bird was split in half, one could see it was very smooth, there was no trace of bumps or roughness. Based on this, one could tell how fast this saber was. A trace of astonishment flashed in her heart, though her beautiful eyes had no trace of fright in them. There was no change in her facial expression. Following the instant Xiao Chen made his move, there was a flurry of movement and the doorway of Liusheng Pavilion was choked up. The guests on the first floor were mostly ordinary citizens. When they saw Xiao Chen jump down from the second floor, they knew there was going to be a battle and they all settled their bills and ran. Duan Muqing looked at Xiao Chen without expression as she said indifferently, hand over the map and I will not kill you. 
Xiao Chen held onto his saber and stood straight, smiling coldly to himself. If an ordinary superior grade martial disciple was struck by the ice bird, Duanmu Qing's earlier attack, they would be dead, if not severely injured. Seeing that he was able to destroy the ice bird in one move, then saying she would not kill him, Xiao Chen could only say this girl's scheme was not ordinary. Xiao Chen said nothing. Instead, he raised his left hand into the air and five streams of purple fire formed in the sky. After revolving in a circle, they were fired rapidly at Duan Mu Qing. Duan Mu Qing's face instantly turned frosty as she saw Xiao Chen did not know what was good for himself. To think he actually made a move against me. She snorted and the temperature around her dropped, a boundless cold chi rose up from the ground. When the five streams of purple flames met the cold chi, their speed immediately slowed. However, what surprised Duan Mu Qing was that these five streams of flames did not immediately stop. Instead, they were like small fish, swimming forward slowly. Although their speed was slow, they would not retreat. With just a thought from Xiao Chen, the five streams of flames merged together, forming a single huge flame, its speed increased explosively. The cold chi that filled the air could no longer stop the progress of the flame. The look in Duan Mu Qing's black eyes became even more frigid. The cold chi that was around her started to condense slowly. Drip. Drip. The water droplets formed by the cold chi continuously dripped on the wooden floor around Duan Mu Qing. The water droplets rapidly gathered together and froze into hard ice. Dang. 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 Three ice walls formed from that piece of ice and appeared in front of Duan Mu Qing. The purple flame smashed explosively through the first wall and continued on to the second. Xiao Chen's brain worked fast as lightning, after the purple flame smashed through the first ice wall, he could obviously feel the strength of the flame had been significantly reduced. He knew this flame would not deal any significant damage to Duan Mu Qing. Since he was not able to gain any advantage, he had to leave. Once Xiao Chen made up his mind, he immediately headed to the nearest window. It was clearly ridiculous for a superior grade marital disciple to go against a martial grand master. Bang! After the purple flame smashed through the third wall, it immediately vanished into thin air. Duan Mu Qing watched Xiao Chen rushing away, her gaze became even colder and her fine black hair fluttered in the air. Ice! Duan Mu Qing shouted and her shirt and long skirt started to flutter, her fine black black hair floated up. She spread her perception throughout the first floor of Liusheng Pavilion. A violent cold chi erupted out of her body. Shua. Everything in the entire first floor was covered in two inches of thick ice. In an instant, the first floor became a shining ice palace. The originally open window had been covered by a thick layer of ice. Xiao Chen's rapidly moving body smashed violently against it with a loud bang. The ice did not even tremble. The backlash of smashing into the frozen barrier caused him to crash to the ground. He moved very fast when he was bounced back by the ice. All he felt now was the soreness of his shoulder. This was an innate bloodline. The power of an inherited martial spirit. Xiao Chen looking around the glittering environment. He thought to himself in astonishment, this was simply too horrifying. Duan Mu Qing walked over slowly. Her hair turned completely white. Her glower turned cold, there was not a shred of emotion on her face. Hand over the map and I will not kill you, she opened her mouth and said. As she spoke each word, the temperature of the ice palace plummeted further. The purple thunder divine incantation circulated rapidly within Xiao Chen's body, resisting the inexhaustible cold wind inside the ice palace. Just as Xiao Chen hesitated on whether he should hand over the map, Xiao Bai jumped out from the spirit blood jade. It stood in front of Xiao Chen and took a deep breath. Its snow-white belly bloated up and it spat out a white-colored light ball. Damn it! Xiao Chen cursed in his heart as he watched Xiao Bai's movements. He pushed off the ground violently, not sparing any of his essence. The electricity on the lunar shadow saber kept arcing around unceasingly. Ha! Xiao Chen shouted and headed to the earlier window. The lunar shadow saber struck the ice wall violently. A small crack appeared on the rigid ice under Xiao Chen's fully powered strike. Bang! 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 He felt incredibly anxious. Xiao Chen put aside his saber and punched at that crack forcefully. He finally created a large hole in that hard wall. 
Xiao Chen could not be bothered about the details and directly squeezed through it. When Duan Muqing saw Xiao Chen trying to escape, a icy gleam flashed in her eyes. She was about to make a move when the light ball that Xiao Bai spat out arrived before her. Against this ordinary looking light ball, Duan Muqing paid little attention to it and casually sent out a palm strike against it. Just an infant spirit beast, how strong could its attack be? The instant Duan Muqing's hand struck the light ball, a resplendent glow lit the entire ice palace. The light was even more glaring than the sun. It was so bright that no one could stand to look at it directly. Boom. The glow faded and a horrifying energy spread out in all directions. In that instant, the ice palace that Duan Muqing created was broken apart instantly. Boom. 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 All the pillars in the Liusheng Pavilion shattered. In the next instant, the entire Liusheng Pavilion crushed down. The entire building turned to ruins. Xiao Chen, who had just escaped, did not have enough time to evade. He was struck by the shockwave and was blasted into the sky, vomiting a mouthful of blood. A white figure escaped the rubble of Liusheng Pavilion. Xiao Bai quickly ran to Xiao Chen. It had a dispirited expression, its usual liveliness was absent. After seeing its current appearance, Xiao Chen's anger dissipated significantly. He carried it in his embrace and rushed forward. The danger had not passed yet. Through his spiritual sense, he noticed a strong aura swelling up in the rubble of Liusheng Pavilion. Kai. A bright phoenix cry resounded throughout the entire Whitewater City. A stream of ice burst through the rubble of Liusheng Pavilion and flew into the air before becoming a huge ice phoenix. The ice phoenix stretched its wings out and a horrifyingly strong perception was spread out in all directions. Locking on Xiao Chen's figure, it took to the skies. In the instant Duan Muqing became the ice phoenix and flew off, a smaller figure, carrying a zither, emerged from the rubble and vaulted towards the two people. After a long time, a fatty covered in dust stumbled out from the rubble. He swore as he stood and looked at the chaos, the completely destroyed Liusheng Pavilion. He cursed in dissatisfaction, who in the world did I offend? That is Duan Muqing. To think, she actually materialized her inherited martial spirit. How strong exactly is her opponent? Indeed, despite being thousands of meters away, the pressure of this martial spirit, that had existed since the Tianwu dynasty, is this heavy. Haha. Ha. You all probably do know no. From what I heard from the people that came out of the Liusheng Pavilion, the person that forced Duan Muqing to materialize her martial spirit is only a superior grade martial disciple. It seems he is an outsider. That's not possible, Duan Muqing is a martial grand master. A superior grade martial disciple is an aunt to her. Why did she materialize her martial spirit, and probably even used martial techniques? His words are absolutely true. I came out of Liusheng Pavilion. That person is actually only a superior grade martial disciple. First, he injured Zhang Muang, then he snatched away a map of the ancient remains. Finally, he escaped from Duan Muqing's pursuit. The ice phoenix radiated a cold light as it flew to the sky, soaring above the nine heavens. Everyone within White Water City was able to see it clearly. All the cultivators were discussing it. White Water City, Zhang Residence. The final disciple of the Misty Sword sect leader peered at the Ice Phoenix in the sky. The expression on his face changed slightly as he muttered, who is it? To actually be able to force Duan Muqing to materialize her martial spirit. Just as he finished speaking, a sword made of light appeared below his feet and brought him to the sky. He became a shadow as he rushed off in the direction of Duan Muqing, soon he vanished into the sky. In another room within the Zhang residence, the Hua clan's successor, Hua Yunfei, revealed a playful smile when he saw Duan Muqing in the sky. After Chu Chaoyun flew off, he said, Interesting, I want to see who it is that managed to attract the attention of these two geniuses of Dongming province. Within the room, a few Hua clan elders advised, Successor, our purpose in coming here this time is only for the remains of the ancient people. It is best that there are no complications. Hua Yunfei smiled indifferently, and said in an arrogant manner, it is rare for a mutated martial spirit to appear in our Hua clan. It is destined for our clan to rise up, no one can stop us. So, what if there are some small complications? Don't follow me. Just as he said this, he became a red river and flowed towards the sky. 
it seemed like a blood cloud covered the places that he went. The sky was hidden, creating an ominous feeling. Within the room of the Duanmu clan in the Zhang clan, a pretty girl looked at Duanmu Ching and asked worriedly, Second elder, is Miss Duanmu in danger? Should we be assisting her? The incomparably graceful and luxuriously dressed second elder looked very calm as he spoke gently, there is no need. If she cannot deal with this little problem, how is she going to rule our Duanmu clan? At the same time, the Zhang clan head, Zhang Mingxun, was rapidly making arrangements within the great hall of the Zhang clan. Second elder, immediately set out on a journey and received the important guest from Nanling province. Whether our Zhang clan can gain an opportunity will depend on this guest. Third elder, go to Liusheng pavilion and bring the trash, Zhang Muang, back. Throw him into isolation for a month. Due to Xiao Chen's saber strike, there were surging undercurrents in Whitewater City, there was a drastic change in the situation. However, regardless of how shocking the situation was or whether the situation changed drastically, Fatty Jin's currently felt persistent grief. This was a grief that belonged only to him, repeatedly dampening his spirits. Young master, please stop standing. You have been standing for an hour already. If you keep standing, you will fall sick, a manservant consoled the grieving Jin Dabao in the midst of the rubble of Liusheng Pavilion. Although Liusheng Pavilion had completely collapsed, there were no major injuries or deaths. The guests from the first and second floors had fled long before the explosion happened. The cultivators on the third and fourth floors had considerably higher cultivations and were able to jump to safety in an instant. The waiters and menservants in the pavilion were all very astute. When there were signs of trouble, they all ran out and only appeared again after things were settled. Ah! Just as the fatty was about to lecture him, a tiny moan sounded out. Jin Dabao quickly reacted and looked towards the origin of the sound. Pulling aside a few heavy wooden boards, Jin Dabao saw a severely injured Zhang Muang. Xiao Chen made a deep cut on his chest. It was even possible to see the internal organs in his chest cavity. At the moment, his wounds have not healed, blood was still flowing out slowly. The collapse of Liusheng Pavilion, combined with the fact that he was already severely injured, meant Zhang Muang was on his final breaths. He could not stop moaning and looked extremely pitiful. He no longer had the elegance he had before. The moment Fatty Jin saw this, his grief vanished and he said to Zhang Muang, with a smile filling his face, isn't this young master Zhang, why are you in such a state? Zhang Muang's face was pale, he was extremely weak, and his voice was very soft as he muttered intermittently, save me. Jin Dabao cupped his ears and leaned forward, saying in a loud voice, young master Zhang, can you speak louder? Oh, I heard it save you. No problem. Jin Dabao had a gleeful look on his face as he took out a porcelain bottle and jiggled it in front of Zhang Muang. Young Master Zhang, can you see this? This is a peak grade golden salve, refined by a rank 7 alchemist. All you have to do is to scatter this on your wounds. No matter what kind of wound, it will be able to heal it. Furthermore, this medicine does not have any side effects, it will not leave behind any scars. It is absolutely the best choice for an elegant young master like you, Fatty Jin spoke in a manner that was filled with temptation as he extended out the bottle to the front of Zhang Muang. Zhang Muang's expression revealed joy as he extended out his left hand with difficulty. He wanted to take the porcelain bottle but Fatty Jin quickly pulled his hand back. The joy on Zhang Muang's face vanished. He looked at Jin Dabao, his gaze filled with doubt. He did not know what was going on. Jin Dabao's face made it seemed he was in a difficult position, young master Zhang, the moment I met you, I felt that we have been brought together by fate. Normally, I would just give this golden salve away and would not even complain about it. However, as you can see, this Liusheng pavilion turned into a pile of rubble because of you. You have cut off the path of fortune for this fatty. I am now extremely broke. Doesn't your Zhang clan own a street for commerce west of the city? Let me have it, so I can reopen Liusheng Pavilion. What do you think? All I need is a word from you, and you can have this peak grade golden salve. I'll even apply it for you, personally. This fatty was truly shameless. His Liusheng Pavilion was merely just a restaurant. Its profits over the period of one year in Whitewater City would be at most 5 million tails of silver. However, the Commerce Street of the Zhang clan had countless business there. 
Just the rent received alone was 20 million tails of silver. Fatty Jin spoke as though the Zhang clan was gaining in this transaction. Zhang Muang's lips moved, his voice was very weak. Jin Dabao cupped his ears again and leaned forward as he said, Young Master Zhang, please speak loudly, I can't hear you. What did you say? Screw. Your. Mother. Damn it. After the fatty heard this, his smile immediately vanished. He had a wooden expression as he said, This fatty is being kind-hearted and wanted to save your life. All I wanted was a street and yet you cursed me like that. This fatty is very upset. Getting snubbed despite showing good intentions really feels horrible. Let's go. With this fatty blocking the way, let's see who dares come over. Even if the Zhang clan's people arrive, they won't be able to take you away. Just as the fatty got up and took a step, his pant leg was snagged by a hand. Jin Dabao had long anticipated Zhang Muang would not give up so simply. He hurriedly put on a smile and turned around, Young Master Zhang, did you change your mind? Your voice is too soft. I'm listening but don't you curse at me again. Or else, this fatty will get angry. That. What's your name? Come quickly and crouch down over here so I can use you as a table. Young Master Zhang has agreed already. In an instant, brush and paper appeared in the fatty's hands. A manservant crouched on the floor as he sucked on the brush as though he was very learned. Then, he dipped the brush in ink and started to scribble wildly. TL note. Scribble wildly, Kuang Sao. This is an excessively free cursive style in Chinese calligraphy. After he drew up the contract, he placed it under Zhang Muang's hand and smiled. Young Master Zhang, please imprint your handprint and signed it. What nice handwriting. Even though young Master Zhang is so injured, your penmanship is still excellent. You are the perfect model of someone from a noble clan. When Zhang Muang signed the contract, the fatty immediately rolled it up and took out the peak grade golden salve. He slowly scattered it on Zhang Muang's wounds. The pained expression on Zhang Muang's face slowly faded. As he was seriously hurt, the moment he relaxed, he fainted. Ha ha ha. How great. I lost a gold mine only to gain a treasure mountain. Fatty Jin laughed maniacally as he held the contract. The manservant at the side saw that Fatty Jin had truly applied the peak grade golden salve on Zhang Muang. He did not understand and asked, Young master, did you really apply the peak grade golden salve made by a rank 7 alchemist? Yes, is there a problem? That manservant said with a tone of doubt, this is not your usual style. I thought young master would just simply use a rank 3 medicine, skimping on the materials. Fatty Jin put aside the contract and he took out his gold folding fan, hitting the manservant's head ruthlessly. He laughed loudly, what do you know? How many foolish and rash people, like Zhang Muang, do you think there are in the great Qin nation? Don't the Zhang clan still have three more streets? This fatty will treat him now, and the next time I can go to him and cheat him out of another street. This small amount of money is nothing. The manservant spoke in awe, young master is truly wise. This is throwing a line to catch a big fish, right? Why did I not think of that? TL note, throwing a line to catch a big fish. This means adopting a long-term plan to secure something big. Don't ask any more of these kinds of stupid business questions, the fatty commanded a pretentious manner. After he said this, he opened his gold folding fan and fanned himself vigorously. He inclined his head upward by 45 degrees and looked at the clouds floating above. He sighed in sorrow, sometimes, having such a high intelligence is such a bane. Who in the world can understand me? Life is truly as lonely as snow. Wah. Just as Fatty Jin finished his words, all the waiters and manservant at the rubble of Liusheng Pavilion could not help but vomit. Outside Whitewater City, Xiao Chen ran frantically towards the savage forest. He felt heartbroken as he looked at the incredibly weak Xiao Bai, who had fainted in his embrace. The attack Xiao Bai executed was the most powerful attack in the mysterious Nine Heavenly Revolution transformation. It compressed the essence of the body nine times before releasing it out in an explosive manner. It caused a lot of damage to the body. Once, when Xiao Chen waxed training in Savage Forest, he ran into a rank 4 spirit beast. At a very critical moment, Xiao Bai used this move. It was then Xiao Chen realized the might of this technique, as well as the harm it does to the body. Thus, he scolded Xiao Bai severely, telling it to never use it. Who knew? 
it would actually use it today. Raising his head, he saw Duan Muqing, who turned into the ice phoenix, chasing tightly after him. From another two directions, a figure riding a sword and a blood cloud caught his attention. Remembering the fatty's introduction, Xiao Chen could guess the identity of these two people. He smiled faintly and said to himself, the three geniuses of Dongming province are chasing after me, they think too highly of me. Xiao Chen executed the Azure Dragon Cloud Soaring Art to its extreme and leapt around in a zigzag fashion. From afar, it looked like the shadow of an Azure Dragon, soaring into the sky. As long as he entered Savage Forest, Xiao Chen had the confidence to throw off his pursuers. He had trained within Savage Forest for more than a month and was extremely familiar with it. Boom! Just as Xiao Chen was about to enter the outer periphery of Savage Forest, Duan Mu Qing suddenly transformed into a stream of flowing ice and landed in front of Xiao Chen. The flowing ice moved as though it was water, changing its shape continuously. After a short period of time, it took human form. Duan Mu Qing's beauty appeared in front of Xiao Chen. Her white hair fluttered all over the place and there was a fire lit in her eyes, she looked like a transcendental goddess. She spoke slowly in a frigid voice, hand over the map and I will not make things difficult for you. Xiao Chen did not reply and quickly used lightning evasion to run. If he had wanted to give it to her, he would have already done so at Liusheng Pavilion. Now that he was at the edge of Savage Forest, he had to make an attempt. Although Xiao Chen did not know what map this was, seeing how anxious she appeared, it was clear that it was not some ordinary map. How? Hua. The blood river in the sky descended to the ground. Hua Yunfei appeared behind Duan Muqing. Kai. Chu Chaoyun, who was riding on the sword, landed rapidly and firmly on the ground. The sword underneath his feet morphed into a beam of light and flew into his forehead. The three of them were in no rush to chase after Xiao Chen. Hua Yunfei looked at the two of them, revealing a trace of a demonic smile as he said, My friends, since Miss Duan Mu still has not caught this fellow yet, let's do this. The three of us will work together to chase after him. Whoever who obtains the map will have to share it with the others. What do you think? There were no changes in Chu Chaoyun's expression, his current emotions could not be seen through. He said, I agree. Our three clans have turned up without invitation. Zhang Mingxun has been resisting the pressure we place on him, refusing to lead the way. He must be waiting for help. I hear that the Ji clan from Nanling province is arriving soon. When they arrive, there will be another strong opponent. If we can snatch the map and rush ahead of the Zhang clan, our three clans can disregard the Zhang clan and work together to search. Duan Mu Qing's white hair slowly turned black again, the fiery look in her eyes seemed to have calmed down and became more welcoming. She pursed her red lips and responded, sure. After the three of them spoke, they immediately entered Savage Forest. Each of them using their own methods to chase in the direction Xiao Chen fled. After the three of them left, Su Xiaoxiao appeared, carrying her zither. She said softly, it really is the Azure Dragon Cloud Soaring Art. I did not see incorrectly the last time. The head of the Four Holy Beast, the Azure Dragon, has reappeared in this world. After she said this, she did not enter Savage Forest. She looked to be deep in thought. After a long time, she quickly rushed towards Whitewater City. Not long after Su Xiaoxiao left, the Zhang clan's first elder, Zhang Yuns, rushed over, leading a group of cultivators. This group of cultivators were all martial masters, there were 200 of them. Zhang Yuns looked at Savage Forest in front of him and said, Split yourselves into 20 groups, each group consisting of 10 people. After you discover the target, take action immediately. 10 martial masters going against a single inferior grade martial disciple. There should be no danger of anything going wrong. After he said this, he took out a few portraits and handed them out, Savage Forest is very large. It is possible that we might not find him by simply relying on our numbers. If you meet any cultivators that are training in the forest, hand this portrait to them and ask for their assistance in capturing him. In the outer perimeters of Savage Forest, Xiao Chen was rapidly dashing through the woods. His spiritual sense was extended out. The situation within 800 meters of himself was reflected in his mind. The entire Savage Forest extended out for thousands of kilometers. Just the outer perimeter itself was more than a thousand hectares. 
Aside from spirit beasts, there were many hunters and cultivators who came to train. By hiding in savage forest, his pursuers would be searching for a needle in a haystack. Hu Kai. A group of gray wolves appeared in Xiao Chen's spiritual sense. The gray wolves were rank 3 spirit beasts that moved in a group. There would be at least 20 of them every time they appeared. Xiao Chen knew they were not easy to deal with and he prepared to go around them. Xiao Chen withdrew his spiritual sense and used it to sweep through the area to either side. Just at that moment, there was the sound of footsteps. Xiao Chen trembled in his heart, he did not know who they were. He quickly hid in a bush to the side. This fellow really knows how to hide. After searching for so long, there is still no trace of him. I wonder how this fellow offended the Zhang clan. To think that he was actually able to cause the Zhang clan to set a bounty of 1000 gold tails on him, announcing it to the entire city. I heard this fellow had stolen a treasure map from the Zhang clan. It is the map of the ancient remains according to recent rumors. If we get it, do you think we can go try our luck? Haha. Ha. Just based on your cultivation as a medial grade martial master. I would advise you not to dream too big. That map is just a copy, the original is still in the hands of the Zhang clan. The three great powers of Dongming province are here already. I'm afraid, even before you come close, you would be killed. We are better off not playing any tricks and behaving, handing the map over to the Zhang clan and earning some hush money. You're right. This treasure is very enticing. Without our lives, we would not be able to enjoy it. Let's keep searching, I'm very sure I saw that fellow running in this direction. Xiao Chen, who had hidden in the bush, was startled. To think the Zhang clan's influence is so strong. They are able to pull all the cultivators in Savage Forest over to their side. Seems like I'm in trouble, I have to quickly rush over to that place. One of the cultivators held a steel knife in his hand and walked over to the bush where Xiao Chen hid. He used the steel knife to clear the thorny undergrowth that was in his path unceasingly. I'm about to be discovered, I can't go on like this, seeing that person get nearer, Xiao Chen thought in his heart, I have to take the initiative and make my move. Wow! Xiao Chen launched out of the bush and, taking advantage of the moment the person was startled, he used his saber to slice him into two halves. After that, he quickly rushed towards the remaining five cultivators. He killed Lao Ju, quickly kill him. When the crowd saw that Lao Ju was cut into two halves with a single move, they were shocked. Lao Ju was a medial grade martial master. To think that he could be killed in one move by this person. Drawing the saber. Xiao Chen executed the rushing thunder saber technique, the electrical light of the lunar shadow saber shined in all directions. The energy of the rank 6 demonic core was displayed fully. The saber light flashed in the sky and a cultivator in the front was chopped into two halves as well. Arc light chop. I'll kill you. When a cultivator to the side saw that another of his companions was killed by Xiao Chen, his eyes became bloodshot and he ignored his own well-being. He brandished his sword with the intent to kill Xiao Chen, facing the arc light chop head on. Fu Kai. Once the rushing thunder saber technique was initiated, the user could not retreat, or else his aura would drop to a very low point. He would not be able to raise his aura back and use the rushing thunder saber technique for a short period of time. Xiao Chen did not evade his strike. The sword slashed across Xiao Chen's chest leaving a wound, dripping with blood. However, before this person could feel pleased about it, he was cut into two halves by the arc light chop. Rushing heaven chop. Xiao Chen held the lunar shadow saber and sword into the air. He pierced through the chest of a person in front of him. The huge force instantly exploded that person's body into tiny pieces. Rushing thunder chop. Thunder crackled in the sky, Xiao Chen used the might of the heavenly lightning and came crashing downward. One of the people below used his saber to block. The blade of the saber snapped with a loud bang, the lunar shadow saber easily sliced his body in two halves, from head to legs. Rushing thunder second chain chop. Xiao Chen spun around and gathered all the energy of the previous four strikes, releasing it explosively in the rushing thunder second chain chop. The person who was getting ready to sneak attack Xiao Chen from behind was shattered to powder by the tremendous force behind the saber. Seeing the six corpses on the ground, Xiao Chen did not feel any unease in his heart. Since these people wanted to kill him to get the map, they should be prepared to get killed, themselves. 
He took out a Qi returning pill and placed it in his mouth. Xiao Chen looked at the scar on his chest and frowned slightly. If Tang Feng did not destroy his battle armor when he shot him, this saber would never be able to injure him. After leaving Mohe City, Xiao Chen discovered the profound rank battle armor, which Xiao Shang gave him, had lost its spirituality, becoming an ordinary soft armor. In order to not hamper his movements, Xiao Chen threw away the battle armor. With Xiao Chen's strength, he could have taken his time and killed this group of people without wasting much of his essence. Xiao Chen was worried that it would drag on for too long and attract more trouble. Thus, he used his more essence demanding rushing thunder saber technique, so he could deal with the problem as fast as possible. He took out a blood replenishing pill, crushed it and scattered it on his wounds. Then, Xiao Chen opened the bags of the six cultivators. These were cultivators that had trained in savage forest for a long time. There was a large amount of spirit cores and herbs. Xiao Chen counted them, there was a total of 4 rank 3 spirit cores and 5 rank 4 herbs. The others were just some items of low value. Xiao Chen casually threw them away. These are worth some money. Xiao Chen revealed a smile on his face as he put the rank 3 spirit cores and rank 4 herbs into the universe ring. On the following journey, Xiao Chen decided that even if his essence was exhausted rapidly, he would keep his spiritual sense extended out. As long as he detected someone, he would avoid them. Does not matter whether they have any malicious intent or not, he would go around them. When it was near dusk, Xiao Chen arrived at a desolate place in the outer periphery of Savage Forest. Upon arriving there, Xiao Chen's tense mood finally relaxed. He also withdrew his spiritual sense. He took large steps as he walked into the forest before him. As his figure moved into the forest, it had a very odd pace to it. After an extended time, Xiao Chen's figure suddenly and mysteriously disappeared into the forest. Within the forest, Xiao Chen seemed to have disappeared into thin air. When Xiao Chen reappeared, the scene in front of his eyes had a devastating change. There was a gushing waterfall in the distance, flowing down from a mountain stream into a long river below. At the river bank, there was a large and spacious area. Just by standing on the bank, one could have smelled the clean and refreshing air. This river was known as Zhuang River. There were many rivers in Savage Forest, this river was just one of the unremarkable many. Xiao Chen was it was the source of the river. This place would not be easily noticed by those who did not know of it. Practically no one paid any attention to this place but Xiao Chen's spiritual sense could detect something unusual in this area. In the cave behind the waterfall, there was a large stone. The spiritual energy was extremely dense there. If one cultivated on top of it, they would be able to be faster by about 50% compared to cultivating outside. After Xiao Chen accidentally discovered it, he immediately laid down an illusion formation in order to misdirect others. This area was originally very desolate, when Xiao Chen was laying the formation, he went about it in an unhurried manner, not worrying at all. This illusion formation took Xiao Chen a total of 10 days to complete. As long as no martial king came here, no one would be able to discover this place. Even if they came to the surrounding area by accident, they would unconsciously go around it. Now that Xiao Chen was here, he was completely safe. He casually found a flat rock and sat cross-legged. He slowly circulated the purple thunder divine incantation and entered into a state of cultivation. The sun rose and scattered its light on the land, the night passed, uninterrupted. Xiao Chen opened his eyes and took a deep breath. He jumped down from the rock and washed his face at the riverside. In the morning, the waterfall had stopped gushing and the surface of the river was as calm as a mirror. Xiao Chen raised his leg and stepped on the surface of the river, his body miraculously stopped on the surface of the water. Xiao Chen's heart was as calm as the water as he circulated the mental cultivation methods of the Azure Dragon Cloud Soaring Art. He closed his eyes and slowly walked on the river's surface. Every step he took sent ripples through the water. In the ancient legends, the dragon was the overlord of the sky and seas. It could submerge itself in the abyss, overturn the seas and rivers, and summon the wind and rain, there was nothing it could not do. When it flew up into the nine heavens, it could ride on the clouds, summon the wind and lightning in an instant, and fly thousands of kilometers in a flash. The azure dragon cloud soaring art was such a movement technique. 
When practiced to great perfection, the legend of riding on clouds or overturning the seas and rivers could be easily accomplished. In the past few days, Xiao Chen had been practicing the Azure Dragon cloud soaring art in the middle of Zhuang River. He initially did not make any progress, however, now he was in the small success stage and was able to walk on the water's surface slowly. Xiao Chen walked slowly on the water, comprehending the profoundness of the Azure Dragon cloud soaring art. When the sun rose to its peak, the sound of water falling could be heard. The energetic waterfall began to gush once again. The calm river surface became turbulent. Xiao Chen opened his eyes and a grave look appeared in his gaze. From this moment forward, at this time every day, the training truly started. If Xiao Chen was careless, he would instantly drop into the water, getting soaked in the process. The river water was flowing rapidly. Xiao Chen stood on the surface. Every step he took against the flow, he exhausted a large amount of essence. However, his body still swayed left and right on the water. Pu Tong. When Xiao Chen walked about a hundred steps, he could no longer maintain it and fell into the river. The turbulent water flushed Xiao Chen's body down the river rapidly. The peaceful Zhuang River now revealed its malevolent side. The turbulent water carried a huge force, it was pushing on Xiao Chen's body, making it exceptionally difficult for him to maintain balance as he flowed downstream rapidly. This was not the first time this had happened to him. Xiao Chen did not panic and was very calm. Holding his breath, his body slowly sank to the bottom of the river. The essence in his body circulated as he waited to take action after he accumulated some strength. He pushed off the riverbed with his feet and his body shot up like an arrow, leaping out of the water. When he fell toward the water again, he somersaulted in the air and landed firmly on the river's bank. Looking at the rushing river, Xiao Chen felt gratitude. If a regular cultivator was not in a good state of mind, it would be possible for them to die in the turbulent water. Xiao Chen was feeling very uncomfortable as his whole body was dripping wet. Xiao Chen dried his face and removed his clothing. Then, he took out a set of dry clothes from the universe ring and changed into them. At this moment, it was no longer suitable to practice the movement technique. Xiao Chen did not waste any time after that. After eating some dried rations, he took out a wooden pole and stood it upright on the ground. He held the lunar shadow saber and stood under the blazing sun, practicing the first move of the rushing thunder saber technique. In his opinion, he had to be able to chop at the pole at least 20 times before the wooden pole fell over for it to be considered to be in the great perfection stage. He was currently able to do it four times, that was barely considered to be in the small success stage. There was still a long way to go before hitting the large success stage. Shua, 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 Shua. After practicing for two hours, Xiao Chen was able to make five consecutive cuts. The light wooden pole wobbled for a moment but it did not fall over. Finally, there is some progress. I can make five consecutive chops. Xiao Chen said joyfully as he wiped the sweat from his forehead and the handle of his saber. After leaving Mohe City, Xiao Chen realized that there were too many geniuses in this world. He pretty much amounted to nothing. Just in Dongming province alone, before reaching the age of 16 or 17, the successors of the three great powers had cultivated to martial grand master already. This was a realm that most regular cultivators would not reach in their lifetime. However, they were able to do it easily before the age of 16 or 17. It can only be said, when constantly comparing oneself to others, it will only make one angry. When the scope was widened to include the entire world, there were countless scary geniuses. Xiao Chen's current achievements were simple, not even worth mentioning. He was like a drop in the ocean, totally unremarkable. Since he had arrived in this world where strength reigned, he was not resigned to being ruled over by others, to become a stepping stone for others, and sink into the dregs of history. Without a strong talent, he had to put in many times the effort, just like the Thunder Emperor from a thousand year ago. He was born in a poor family, but he relied on only himself to trample over all the geniuses of the noble families. He had obtained the inheritance of the Thunder Emperor, even if he could not be bothered with his own pride he had to care about the legendary reputation of the Thunder Emperor. Since he did not have this kind of demonic talent, he had to put in hundreds or thousands times more the effort. He erected a wooden pole once again and focused himself. 
he continued tirelessly practicing drawing the saber. The number of wooden poles which laid on the ground continued to increase. After an hour, Xiao Chen sheathed his saber and rested for a while. He then walked slowly to the river's bank and gazed at the gushing waterfall in the distance, it had already weakened significantly. Kill. He shouted lightly and jumped violently onto the surface of the turbulent water, running at a rapid speed on its surface. Ripples surged through the surroundings, the water splashed two meters high beside him. Xiao Chen kept running, not stopping to rest even for a moment. When he reached underneath the waterfall, he shouted loudly and leapt up high into the air. A spear made of chi appeared in front of him. With a, shua, sound, it sliced apart the cascading water. Xiao Chen landed on a rock behind the waterfall. This was the cave that was behind the rush of water. It was only about two meters deep and the air was very humid. The water that flowed down over the entrance of the cave was like a curtain of water. It was very similar to the water curtain cave in his previous life. TL notes, Shui Lian Dong, Water Curtain Cave, is a reference to a Chinese legend of a monkey born from a rock and eventually turning into a deity. Many of you might have read about this before, it's the legend of Sun Wukong in Journey to the West. The Water Curtain Cave is where this monkey lived in his early days. In the cavern was a very smooth and flat rock. Xiao Chen revealed a faint smile and slowly sat upon it. He immediately entered into a state of cultivation, the purple thunder divine incantation circulated unceasingly in his body. The dense spiritual energy in the surroundings poured into Xiao Chen's body continuously. The spiritual energy was so dense that it was like a fog, it was almost as though it would liquefy. Xiao Chen only circulated it with a cycle and the meridians in the body were already saturated with spiritual energy. That was a sense of extreme excitement rising from the area where his martial spirit was. Xiao Chen knew this was a sign of advancing in cultivation realm. As long as he was willing, he could immediately recover his cultivation as an inferior grade martial master. However, Xiao Chen did not do that. Back then, after using the Ninth Heaven's Thunder Formation, his cultivation fell to superior grade martial disciple. He then thought about it carefully and felt that this was not a bad thing. Instead, it was an opportunity for him to establish a firmer foundation. He only spent a few months to progress from spirit refinement to inferior grade martial master. To an ordinary cultivator, this was something inconceivable. Regardless of the situation, he never did establish a proper foundation. It was important for the foundation of a tall building to be done properly. Only by establishing a proper foundation, would the tall building not collapse. The path of martial cultivation had the same principles. If spirit refinement was to be compared to digging out a foundation, then martial disciple was the equivalent to laying the foundation. Xiao Chen had spent considerably more time than others in the spirit refinement realm, he spent a total of 15 years. The foundation that he dug was much deeper than others. Now, all he had to do was to lay his foundation once again and make a foundation that was unbreakable. With just a thought, Xiao Chen infused the large amount of spiritual energy he absorbed into his flesh and bones, slowly tempering his body. After the essence circulated in his body for nine cycles, Xiao Chen's eyes shot open. There was a sticky black substance covering his body. Xiao Chen leapt out of the entrance of the cave into the gushing waterfall, washing away the impurities that were eliminated from his body thoroughly. He immediately felt undoubtedly refreshed, he was carefree and relaxed. He could not help but shout loudly. His aura exploded out to the extreme. The water droplets that clung to his body instantly evaporated. Boom! Xiao Chen landed heavily on the surface of the water. A huge force extended out from the bottom of his feet. In the next moment, a three-meter high splash soared around him. Pushing off with his feet lightly, Xiao Chen returned to the river bank. The sun was setting on the boundless horizon, night had arrived. One day went by so quickly. A small white figure rushed over from the outside of the illusion formation. When Xiao Chen saw it, he revealed a smile. No matter how boring or lonely this cultivation session was, he would still have Xiao Bai to accompany him. After recovering for a night, Xiao Bai regained its high-spirited nature. It had escaped from the spirit blood jade long ago. Xiao Chen was not too worried about its safety. Xiao Bai's speed was incredibly fast after cultivating the mysterious Nine Heavenly Revolution transformation. 
even Xiao Chen would be left in the dust. When it ran over to Xiao Chen, there was a herb in its mouth. It placed it in Xiao Chen's hand as though it was paying tribute. Xiao Chen did not find this strange, Xiao Bai was quite sensitive to such natural treasures with a spiritual nature. Every time it went out, it would normally return with some harvest. Xiao Chen carefully inspected the herb in his hand. His eyes lit up as he said in joy, Rank 5 Spirit Herb, Vanilla Rue. This is a stock of superior grade 30-year-old herb. It is worth thousands of gold tails. Hearing Xiao Chen's joyful words, Xiao Bai exposed a very human-like smile. Obviously, it was very pleased. The sun rose and set, the clouds gathered and scattered. The days in the mountain valley passed very quickly. In the blink of an eye, Xiao Chen had cultivated for a week in front of this waterfall. In the meantime, Xiao Chen unceasingly practiced the azure dragon cloud soaring art. When the river became turbulent, he would go to the riverbank and practice the rushing thunder saber technique. At dusk, he would cultivate the purple thunder divine incantation, continuously strengthening his foundation and tempering his body. Wow. On this day, Xiao Chen leapt out from the cave behind the waterfall. He landed heavily on the water's surface, creating a huge splash, water droplets flew everywhere. The waves soared to the sky. He pushed lightly off and Xiao Chen returned to the riverbank. After a week of cultivating, the essence in his body turned purer and denser. It was comparable to that of a superior grade martial master. After resting for a short while, Xiao Chen looked at the exit of the illusion formation. Normally, Xiao Bai would have returned by now. Why is it not back yet? Xiao Bao was naturally loved by the forest, it had a special relationship with the woods. Ever since they came to Savage Forest, Xiao Chen was not able to control it, it would always run out on its own. Xiao Bai, who cultivated the mysterious Nine Heavenly Revolution transformation, was unrivaled in the periphery of Savage Forest. However, Xiao Chen still worried about it. If it ran into the inner reaches of Savage Forest, it would be problematic. Just as Xiao Chen hesitated on whether to go out and search for Xiao Bai, a white figure appeared in his vision. Before Xiao Chen could smile, he discovered there was something wrong with Xiao Bai. It was slower than usual. When it got near, he discovered there was a lot of bleeding wounds on its snow white pelt. The red blood against its snow white fur was very prominent. Xiao Bai peeked at Xiao Chen's gaze, as though it was afraid and did not dare to come near, as if it was a kid who had done something wrong. Xiao Chen had a sullen expression as he picked Xiao Bai up, carrying it. After carefully inspecting its wounds, he sighed in relief. These were only superficial wounds. Next, he took out a blood replenishing pill and crushed it before slowly applying it onto Xiao Bai's wounds. He then went to the riverside and washed the blood from Xiao Bai's body. See, if you dare to keep running outside what will happen. Now, you know how dangerous it is. Xiao Chen lectured Xiao Bai as he placed it on a patch of soft grass. The blood replenishing pill's effect was quite good. After it completed permeated the wounds, Xiao Bai immediately began to heal and slowly form scabs. When it saw Xiao Chen lecturing it, it got up in a somewhat indignant manner and gesticulated while making, zia zia, sounds. Although Xiao Bai was unable to speak human language, Xiao Chen was able to understand roughly what it was saying because it had signed a blood contract with him. It saw a stock of spirit herb in the outer periphery and wanted to pick it, as it did normally. Who knew there was a four-legged snake resting nearby it was extremely fast. Before Xiao Bai managed to get near, it was injured by the claws of the four-legged snake. Xiao Bai was startled and quickly rushed back. Xiao Chen thought about it, from Xiao Bai's description, this four-legged snake should be the rank four spirit beast, black-legged snake. However, why would there be a rank four spirit beast in the outer periphery of Savage Forest? A rank four spirit beast was the equivalent to a human martial grand master. Rank three spirit beasts were rarely seen in the outer periphery of Savage Forest. Yet, for a rank 4 spirit beast to appear to be guarding a stock of natural treasure, it showed that the natural treasure was of a very high rank. Xiao Chen looked at Xiao Bai and asked it seriously, are you sure you were in the outer periphery of Savage Forest? Xiao Bai nodded gravely. Xiao Chen thoughts moved rapidly, this stock of natural treasure was obviously not ordinary. It was quite possibly like the red nascent fruit in the outskirts of Sevenhorn Mountain. 
that place could be the location with the densest spiritual energy in the entire outer periphery of Savage Forest. If it were under normal circumstances, Xiao Chen would have made up his mind to get it. A rank 4 spirit beast was only as strong as a martial grand master. However, a spirit beast was just a beast, its thoughts were not as flexible as a human's, nor could it use martial techniques or spirit weapons. If he paid a certain price, Xiao Chen had the confidence to deal with this black-legged snake. However, the problem was he did not know if the people of the Zhang clan have returned yet. If they were still around, and the Zhang clan caught wind of his movements, it would be very difficult to escape. Seeking fortune amidst danger, the path of cultivation has always been filled with boundless danger. The key is to take a gamble, Xiao Chen made his decision and stopped hesitating. After Xiao Bai recovered to a certain extent, he said, Xiao Bai, lead the way, I'll take revenge on your behalf. Xiao Bai cried happily and led Xiao Chen out of the illusion formation. The scene in front of Xiao Chen suddenly changed. The huge tree and the silent forest appeared before Xiao Chen's vision. Xiao Bai's speed was especially fast, if Xiao Chen did not execute the Azure Dragon Cloud Soaring Art, he would not be able to catch up. One man and one beast traveling very fast. Xiao Chen ignored all the spirit beasts that they encountered and left them behind. After arriving at a small ravine, Xiao Bai froze. Xiao Chen extended his spirit sense into the ravine. At the end of the ravine, in an extremely well-hidden crevice, Xiao Chen saw a seven-colored petal. Seven Leaf Flower Xiao Chen was incomparably astonished. To think there would be a seven-leaf flower growing here, it was too shocking. The seven-leaf flower was a true natural treasure. It had a total of seven different colored flower petals at its most mature state. Every ten years, a new petal would grow. Once the seven petals grew in twenty years thereafter, there would be a rainbow-colored seven-leaf fruit. Xiao Chen extended his spiritual sense to the seven-leaf flower and observed it carefully. He discovered, with disappointment, the fruit in the middle of the flower petals had been picked by someone. They only left behind the different colored petals. Even though the seven color fruit had been picked, the remaining flower petals were still useful to cultivators. Each petal could temper the cultivator's body once. After the tempering of the seven petal flower, the body of the cultivator would undergo a qualitative change. Xiao Chen withdrew his spiritual sense and asked Xiao Bai, when you came earlier, was the fruit still there? Xiao Bai continuously made, Zia Zia, sounds. After Xiao Chen listened to it, he could not help but ask curiously, when Xiao Bai came earlier, it was still here. Why is it gone now? When he scanned the entire ravine earlier, he did not see the black-legged snake. Xiao Chen was sure that the seven-leaf fruit had been snatched by it. With a thought from Xiao Chen, he released his spiritual sense again. He carefully observed and searched every corner of the ravine. Finally, on a slope in the ravine, Xiao Chen discovered a trace of the black-legged snake. It was hiding behind a huge stone. The sparkling and translucent seven-leaf fruit was laying in front of the black-legged snake. The black-legged snake's eyes were closed. There was a golden spiritual energy wafting from the seven-leaf fruit. The body of the black-legged snake was two meters long, below the body of the snake were its four legs. Its body was as thick as a bowl, and it was covered in blackish gold scales. It opened its mouth wide and sucked in all the golden spiritual energy. It wore an extremely cheerful expression. Xiao Chen was astonished in his heart, this black-legged snake is not stupid, it knows that the seven-leaf fruit contains a shocking amount of spiritual energy that it cannot swallow in one bite. Xiao Chen executed the gravity spell, landing lightly on the side of the ravine where the seven-leaf flower was. A faint fragrance emitted from the seven-leaf flower. Xiao Chen revealed a faint smile. He grabbed the roots and pulled gently, carefully picking it and placing it into the universe ring. Who? He landed lightly on the ground and extended out his spiritual sense once again. The black-legged snake was drunk on the spiritual energy of the seven-leaf fruit. It did not notice the situation at all. The corners of Xiao Chen's mouth curled in a cold smile. He used his spiritual sense to lock onto the side of the black-legged snake, then he shouted lightly. Lightning evasion. There was a crack of thunder in the ravine, lightning streaked across the air. Xiao Chen suddenly appeared beside the black-legged snake. His lunar shadow saber gave off a resplendent electrical light. 
the drawing the saber that he practiced many times was executed without hesitation. Kang. The lunar shadow saber chopped violently on the spine of the black-legged snake. This location happened to be the weakest point of the snake. A 66 cm long gash appeared on the blackish gold scales. The black blood of the black-legged snake spurted out like a fountain. He actually did not manage to chop it in half. Xiao Chen was very surprised. He thought that he could take advantage of it was not paying attention and deal with it in one blow. He never expected that he would be able to only wound it. Under the intense pain, the black-legged snake's mouth gaped wide, to a point where it seemed exaggerated. It gave off a painful hoarse sound as its huge tail thrashed towards Xiao Chen. The tail of the black-legged snake hit as hard as a hammer, it twisted itself to an inconceivable angle and attacked from above. The twinkling black liquid from the tip of its tail was actually venom. Xiao Chen was overwhelmed with shock and he quickly retreated backward. The snake tail struck the spot where Xiao Chen was like a hammer. The huge force created a half a meter wide pit. Bang! After the snake tail landed, it swept across horizontally, rapidly heading toward Xiao Chen. Xiao Chen was startled, he never expected that the snake tail could move with such a fast speed. His body stopped in mid-air and rose higher by 3.3 meters, evading the huge tail flying at him. Before Xiao Chen could relax, he saw the tail circling around in the air. The length actually tripled and headed towards Xiao Chen. Boom! Not only did its length triple, its speed was also increased significantly. Xiao Chen had never seen such a strange thing in his life. He was caught off guard was struck by the tail. The huge force behind the snake tail caused Xiao Chen to be flung to the ground. Xiao Chen's body had undergone many rounds of tempering and was showing the early signs of an iron body. After Xiao Chen was struck by the tail, he felt his insides churn a little. He did not suffer from too much damage. If an ordinary martial master was struck by this, he would have died from his internal organs rupturing. Xiao Chen landed on the slope and rolled down at a great speed. That black-legged snake dashed to him quickly with its four feet. Its two-meter-long body was headed toward Xiao Chen at a rapid speed. Xiao Chen shouted lightly and stopped himself from rolling. He pushed off with his right foot, leaping into the air before landing firmly on the ground. When the black-legged snake saw that Xiao Chen immediately landed in a clear area within the valley, it realized that Xiao Chen was not slower than itself, it opened its mouth and spat a black liquid at its opponent. Xiao Chen flicked his finger and a purple flame condensed at his its tip. After circulating once, it was fired at the venomous fluid. Pu Si. The venomous fluid was instantly struck by the flame. After giving off, Chi Chi, sounds, the venomous fluid dissipated into thick black smoke and blossomed in all directions. The speed of the black smoky spread was extremely fast. In a blink of the eye, it covered half the space in the ravine. Xiao Chen did not panic. He took out a black flannel handkerchief and used it to cover his mouth and nose. This flannel was made from the skin of spirit beasts, it was able to filter out most gases. The black flannel was not some precious treasure, most cultivators who enter savage forest would normally carry one. Xiao Chen preferred to be prepared, just in case. The first time he entered savage forest, he had one already prepared. The thick smoke pervaded the air, his surroundings were covered in fog. His vision was severely impaired. Xiao Chen extended out his spiritual sense, immediately catching wind of the black-legged snake's position. Seeing that Xiao Chen was inside the poisonous cloud, the black-legged snake thought his vision was limited. It quickly ran over to Xiao Chen and ruthlessly used its huge tail to smash forward. Xiao Chen retreated hastily. The huge tail quickly extended, chasing after Xiao Chen. Xiao Chen used his spiritual sense to lock onto the huge tail. He discovered, after the tail extended, the originally dense scales had thinned out. Chance. Xiao Chen thought to himself. This black-legged snake must think that he was not able to see it in this thick smoke. That must be why it was so daring and attacked him without restraint. Kill. Xiao Chen shouted loudly and quickly executed the Azure Dragon Cloud Soaring Art. He leapt off the ground and reached a height of 10 meters instantly. The shadow of a dragon appeared behind him and he executed the simplified version of the descending divine dragon chop. The black-legged snake felt a dangerous aura and it quickly withdrew its tail. 
However, the speed of the descending divine dragon chop was incredibly swift. Xiao Chen managed to ruthlessly chop at a spot where the scales were quite sparse as it only managed to withdraw its tail halfway. The tail of the black-legged snake was instantly chopped in half. Who see? At where the tail was chopped off, blood spurted out like a geyser. The blood of this fellow is probably venomous as well. If I get some on me, it would be problematic. Xiao Chen hurriedly retreated backward. Earlier, Xiao Chen had attacked the weak spot of the black-legged snake. The proverbs say, when attacking, attack where it hurts the most. Although Xiao Chen's full-powered strike did not hack it in too earlier, it still managed to cause severe harm. At this moment, the weapon it relied on, its tail, was severed by Xiao Chen. On top of the previous injury, it was like a tiger without its fangs. It was no longer a danger to Xiao Chen. The black-legged snake also understood this. It cried out painfully and its four feet pushed off the ground, launching itself at Xiao Chen with its jaw open wide. It no longer cared for its own well-being, this was a suicidal attack aimed at taking Xiao Chen down with it. Xiao Chen became sullen. This was the final attack of the black-legged snake. Its speed was extremely swift there was no way to evade it. If he could not chop it in half with one move, the counterattack of the black-legged snake would cause him severe damage. In the time it took for a spark to fly, Xiao Chen's mind went black. He recalled the state he had while he practiced his saber technique. He thought to himself slowly, do not panic, just treat it like the wooden pole I normally practice on. Drawing the saber. The electrical light on his lunar shadow saber shone brightly. When the black-legged snake was less than half a meter away, Xiao Chen abruptly made his move. The saber flashed by and the black-legged snake was severed in half from its head to the stump of its tail. Xiao Chen rolled to the side and evaded the venomous blood that splashed down. The two halves of the black-legged snake landed heavily with a thud. The poisonous cloud in the ravine slowly dissipated. Xiao Chen removed the flannel and headed for the huge rock where the black-legged snake had rested earlier. He carefully placed the seven-leaf fruit in his universe ring. Xiao Chen did not let the corpse of the black-legged snake go to waste either. Everything of the black-legged snake was considered a treasure. The blackish gold scales of the snake were tough and hard to break, they are great materials for forging battle armor. Its four legs can be used to brew wine and refine medicinal pills. They had excellent effects. Xiao Chen took out a sharp knife and cut them off. Wang Wang. After Xiao Chen packed everything and prepared to get up to leave, he heard a buzzing in his head. Suddenly, he felt dizzy and his limbs go stiff. He was on the verge of collapsing. Crap. The poisonous cloud must have permeated my skin. I have to find a place quickly and expel the poison. Or else, I'll be in deep trouble. Shua. Shua. Sounds of footsteps came from outside the ravine. Xiao Chen extended his spiritual sense. He felt his heart tighten. It was the Zhang clan's people, they had not left yet. The sounds of the earlier battle must have alerted them. It really is that fellow. To think he actually dares to show himself. Because the first elder could not manage to find him, he was scolded by the clan head severely, causing us to be scolded by the first elder as well. We have to capture him this time. Send the signal, hurry and inform the first elder and the others. These words entered Xiao Chen's ears. He did his best to keep his eyes open and maintain a clear mind. He looked towards the direction of the ravine and saw ten cultivators, all of which were martial masters. Kill. One of them shouted loudly, he held a thick machete and rushed towards Xiao Chen. He saw Xiao Chen was only a superior grade martial disciple. Although he felt something was wrong, he made the first move to gain the credit. Drawing the saber. Xiao Chen exhibited the Azure Dragon Cloud Soaring Art to its extreme. His body transformed into a beam of light. Executing the rushing thunder saber technique, the lunar shadow saber suddenly glowed. There was a flash from the saber and the Zhang clan cultivator that made a move was struck dead instantly. Xiao Chen looked at the remaining nine martial masters. He did not retreat and instead rushed forward, brandishing the lunar shadow saber. Bang! After he took a few steps, the cultivator that was struck suddenly split into two halves and fell to the ground with a thud, spurting out blood. The remaining nine martial masters were startled and frightened. They did not expect Xiao Chen, a superior grade martial disciple, to kill a martial master with one strike. 
This was simply inconceivable. What are we afraid of? No matter how strong he is, he is still just a superior grade martial disciple. There are nine of us, there is no need to be afraid. Furthermore, the first elder is on his way. All we have to do is to delay him, one of the Zhang clan cultivators told the others. Another of them agreed, indeed, there is no need to fear him, just a superior grade martial disciple. No matter how strong he is, he is still weaker than us by an entire cultivation realm. Xiao Chen did not speak. The situation was dire, he did not dare tarry. He was desperately burning through his essence. The ten wild clouds by the azure dragon martial spirit were bubbling rapidly, sending the tempered pure essence to his entire body. Drawing the saber. The saber flashed and Xiao Chen made another move. Under the execution of the azure dragon cloud soaring art, his body moved around gracefully. The cultivator that spoke first was instantly chopped in half. Arc light chop. Rushing heaven chop. Rushing thunder chop. Rushing thunder second chain chop. Within the ravine, thunder crackled and the wind strongly blew. Saber lights flew everywhere as Xiao Chen executed the rushing thunder saber technique with his full strength. Although Xiao Chen was currently a superior grade martial disciple, he was once a martial master. After cultivating for the past few days, the essence in his body was much purer and stronger than the Zhang clan cultivators. Furthermore, he had the heaven-ranked azure dragon cloud soaring art movement technique and the rushing thunder saber technique, they were comparable to an earth rake martial technique. These people were simply no match for Xiao Chen. Each time the saber flashed, someone would die. After the five moves of the rushing thunder saber technique were used, only four Zhang clan cultivators remained. The four cultivators could just roughly make out Xiao Chen's figure, they were not able to see how Xiao Chen instantly killed those six men. Seeing the death god like Xiao Chen, an intent to flee grew in their heart, they made a break for the outside of the ravine. Seeing the four flee, Xiao Chen did not chase after them. He headed out of the ravine. The most important thing for him now was to find a safe place and force the poison out. Because he was circulating his essence with all his might, the poison in his body was temporarily suppressed. However, this was an extremely dangerous situation. If he was not able to force the poison out before it made a counterattack, the poison would do lethal damage to his body. Just as Xiao Chen left the ravine, he felt a strong aura chasing after him. The Zhang clan's expert is here, I have to increase my pace. Brat, where do you think you can run? Behind Xiao Chen, the ashen face of the Zhang clan's first elder, Zhang Yuns, appeared and he shouted loudly. He catapulted himself from the ground and landed on a big tree. Leaping off again, he headed towards Xiao Chen. His speed doubled and was actually able to catch up with Xiao Chen, despite his pace. He sent out a palm strike, targeting Xiao Chen's back. Feeling the palm strike coming, Xiao Chen spun around and sent out a palm strike as well. Although Xiao Chen spat out a mouthful of blood, he borrowed the force from Zhang Yun's strike and retreated backward at an even more terrifying speed. Zhang Yun's could not help but feel anger, this brat actually used the force of my palm strike to increase the distance between us. Thinking back to when he was scolded by Zhang Mingxun the day before, Zhang Yun's shouted lividly and chased after him. Feeling that Zhang Yun's was catching up to him again, Xiao Chen complained incessantly in his heart. If it was an ordinary day, he would have left him in the dust already. However, because he had to use his essence to suppress the poison, he had no way of utilizing the Azure Dragon Cloud Soaring Art to its full extent. His current speed was much slower than usual. I have to think of a way, Xiao Chen thought anxiously in his heart. He saw Zhang Yun's get closer and he stopped suddenly. Then, he slowly executed the gravity spell. By using the gravity spell, he would be slower. However, he would be able to fly into the sky and escape from his pursuers on the ground. Once he was in the sky, whether he would still be targeted or not, Xiao Chen would not care. Zhang Yun saw Xiao Chen stop suddenly and felt joy in his heart. He increased his pace and rushed towards Xiao Chen. He brandished the saber from behind his back. This time, he would not give Xiao Chen the chance to borrow the force of his attack to escape, he would kill him in a single slash. Who? The saber flashed, and just as the saber was about to hit Xiao Chen, Xiao Chen suddenly rose in the air. The execution of the gravity spell was completed. 
He flew higher and higher, and soon, he was 200 meters above the ground. It's actually a flying martial technique. What exactly are the origins of this person? A Zhang clan cultivator rushed over and uttered in shock as he watched Xiao Chen flying in the sky. Zhang Yun's glared at Xiao Chen with a cold gaze. He said in a sullen voice, no matter his origins, he stole the map of the Zhang clan and injured the first young master severely. He has to pay the price for that. Bring me the bow. A cultivator hurriedly took out a long bow with a cold gleam and handed it to Zhang Yun's. The bow gave off a faint radiance as well as a faint spiritual energy. This bow was actually a spirit weapon. Zhang Yun seized an arrow and knocked it. He drew back the bowstring till the bow resembled a full moon. A cold gleam flashed on the arrowhead as he aimed at Xiao Chen. Su. The arrow gave off a wang sound as it flew from the bow. It was fast and graceful as it headed towards Xiao Chen. Hearing the sound of the arrow splitting the air, Xiao Chen heaved a long sigh in his heart. Even if he was at his peak, he was not fully confident of evading this arrow. Xiao Chen did his best to dodge to the side, however, this arrow still pierced his right chest. If he had not checked what Zhang Yun's was doing with his spiritual sense and knew to dodge, this arrow would have pierced his heart. A bleeding hole, the width of a finger, appeared on his right chest. Blood flowed unceasingly. Xiao Chen hurriedly took out a blood replenishing pill and popped it into his mouth as he felt an unbearable pain. Xiao Chen did his best to maintain the gravity spell as he continued to fly forward unsteadily. The poison that had been suppressed started to act. His staggering motions made it look as if he would fall from the sky at any moment. I finally found you after searching for a week. Hua Yunfei was standing at the top of a distant tree. He looked extremely handsome with his long hair and clothes fluttering in the wind. He looked at Xiao Chen and exposed a malicious smile. He transformed into a blood river, gushing towards Xiao Chen. The blood river in the sky looked like a churning red cloud. A horrifying malicious chi spread out in all directions from, rippling in the sky. Xiao Chen felt the blood river behind him and was startled. Hua Yunfei has not left yet. In that case, Duan Muqing and Chu Chaoyun are probably still around. I have to hurry to the illusion formation. Fu Si. The blood river rotated and transformed into a waterspout. Its speed suddenly doubled, instantly catching up to Xiao Chen. Then, he turned back into a human and struck Xiao Chen down from the sky with a palm strike. Bang! Xiao Chen fell from the sky, landing on the ground with a thud. The chi and blood in his body were churning as he vomited another mouthful of blood. His pale face became very startling. Hua Yunfei landed and looked at Xiao Chen on the ground. He laughed disdainfully, I thought you were some genius, to be able to force Duan Muqing to materialize her martial spirit. To think that you are just a piece of trash. Xiao Chen stood slowly and looked at Hua Yunfei, all you have is an innate bloodline and have awakened your martial spirit from birth. If I did not condense my martial spirit at the age of 15, I would still be able to deal with you, supposing I were more severely injured than I am now. Still dare to be stubborn. Hua Yunfei snorted coldly. He moved swiftly, leaving behind a trail of blood everywhere he went. In a blink of the eye, he arrived before Xiao Chen. He raised his leg and kicked him. Boom. Xiao Chen suddenly flew backward, smashing through three huge trees before landing on the ground heavily. After he landed, he vomited three mouthfuls of blood. There was no longer any trace of blood in his pale countenance. Hua Yunfei flew over and was surprised when he saw Xiao Chen's body was not damaged. To think that your body is so resilient. Your bones did not break, even after my kick. However, no matter how strong your body is, in terms of cultivation realm, you are trash. Take out the map and I'll end your pain quickly. Xiao Chen stayed silent and stood slowly. He used his spiritual sense to seal up the spirit blood jade, preventing Xiao Bai from coming out as it wanted. He brandished the lunar shadow saber and the essence in his body circulated in the manner of the return of the azure dragon's cultivation methods. He looked at Hua Yunfei with a cold expression. Hua Yunfei frowned slightly, Xiao Chen's gaze made him feel very uncomfortable. He snorted coldly and left another trail of blood on the ground, arriving before Xiao Chen instantly and kicking him again. Bang, 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 bang. This time, Hua Yunfei used 50% of his strength. 
Xiao Chen flew like a cannonball, smashing consecutively through five huge trees. Xiao Chen bent over and stuck the lunar shadow saber into the ground, creating a long gash. Holding the lunar shadow saber, he did not fall on the ground this time. Black lines began to appear on his pale face, the suppressed poison in his body finally started to make a counterattack. Xiao Chen coughed out a few pieces of black blood clots, laughing maniacally. This, combined with the dense black lines on his face, made him look extremely horrifying. Continue. Did you not drink milk? With only that much strength, you are not even comparable to a woman, the corner of Xiao Chen's mouth curled in a cold smile as he mocked him. Hua Yunfei's complexion changed as his expression turned grave. There was an intense killing intent that appeared in his eyes. He looked at Xiao Chen with cold eyes and an expressionless face. In his eyes, Xiao Chen was already a dead man. Hua Yunfei pushed off the ground with his feet, leaping into the air. A blood-colored ghostly figure appeared behind him as he sent a palm strike towards Xiao Chen's brain. Xiao Chen looked coldly at Hua Junfei launching himself over. He raised the lunar shadow saber slightly, casually taking a stance, the tip of his saber pointed at Hua Yunfei. It was just a casual stance, there did not seem to be any action. It appeared as though there was not much difference from earlier. Xiao Chen still looked severely injured. Hua Junfei's right eyelid twitched for no reason, he felt a sense of danger. It felt as if something in his heart was hollowed out. TL Note, twitching of the eyelid is a Chinese superstition. Twitching of the right eyelid is a bad omen while the twitching of the left is a good omen. Could it be that this brat still has trump cards? Hua Yunfei thought doubtfully. No matter, even if he still has some trump cards, he would not have the opportunity to use them. In another breath of time, I will smash his crown apart. Thinking his, he ignored the uncomfortable feeling in his heart. Smiling coldly, he continued to smash his palm towards Xiao Chen's crown. Just at this moment, Xiao Chen suddenly shouted lightly, and his aura suddenly rose. His body emitted a boundless earth-shattering aura. Time seemed to have stopped, Hua Yunfei's palm stopped before Xiao Chen's head, and he was not able to proceed further. After a short moment, an irresistible force was emitted by Xiao Chen's body. Hua Yunfei was blasted back, as though he was a feather that was blown. The quiet surrounding of the forest seemed as though there were great unending sea waves bellowing. A vast ocean appeared behind Xiao Chen. There were huge torrential waves, surging layer upon layer. The trees with a 500-meter radius were all uprooted, smashed into bits by the bellowing sea. Amidst the ocean, the head of an azure dragon peeked out. Its cry could be heard from everywhere. Within the periphery of savage forest, all the spirit beasts felt a fear coming from their bloodline, deep in their hearts. Every one of them laid on the ground, prostrating and trembling without control. A dragon stuck in shallow waters invites the tricks of the shrimp, a tiger in the plains will get bullied by dogs. Who knows when the tiger will descend onto the plains, or when the tide will come in and the dragon will have sufficient water. When the azure dragon returns, I will cause the rivers to flow in reverse. TL Note. This is an adaptation of a Chinese poem, speaking of how the mighty would be bullied by the weak when they are placed in unfavorable situations. Like a fish out of water. The might of the ancient holy beast was released. Under the influence of this boundless might, Hua Yunfei felt the essence in his body turn chaotic, it no longer headed his commands. His hands and feet seemed to not work properly, they could not move at all. This apocalyptic strength was held by Xiao Chen once again. The azure dragon circled in the sky before rushing at Hua Yunfei. Seeing the azure dragon rushing at him, Hua Yunfei felt a sense of despair. To think that it's a heaven-ranked martial technique. How could it be? Am I going to die here? That cannot be. This is a mutated martial spirit that appeared once in a thousand years in the Hua clan. It is rare, even in the ancient times. This is the time for us to rise up. How can an insignificant superior grade martial disciple possibly defeat me? Hua Yunfei was shouting maniacally in his heart. A human figure walked out from the boundless blood river in his dantian. This person was dressed in blood-colored clothes and was merged with the river, as though he came from the nine layers of hell. He gave off a boundless malicious chi. When he raised his head to look at the azure dragon in the sky, he revealed an evil-looking smile. Boom! That person suddenly jumped into the dantian, 
turning into a huge blood-colored illusion. It stood in the middle of heaven and earth and blocked the descending azure dragon with its hands. Bang! A horrifying shock wave rippled in all directions. All the trees within a thousand meters were snapped before turning into dust. Within this circular zone, only the bottom half of the trees were left. The azure dragon howled angrily. The blood-colored illusion turned compact. The ground under Hua Yunfei suddenly cracked open, causing him to fall into it. Seeing that the azure dragon could not be stopped, the blood-colored man heaved a long sigh and turned into a blood-colored viscous liquid, wrapping around Hua Yunfei. Without anything obstructing it, the azure dragon smashed into Hua Yunfei with a loud, bang. Countless pieces of crushed rock flew from the crack in the ground. Hua Yunfei unendingly fell downwards. It was unknown how long he fell. After a long time, there were unceasing explosion sounds in the crack before he gradually came to a stop. Kai. Kai. The blood vessels all over Xiao Chen's body ruptured. Countless amount of black blood spurted out in all directions. His face revealed a look of extreme anguish as he knelt onto the ground with a, putong, sound. His flesh could be seen drying up rapidly, just like the time he first awakened his martial spirit. It was clear that the Azure Dragon exhausted too much essence. Since he did not have sufficient essence, the Azure Dragon took the spiritual energy in his flesh. After a long time, Xiao Chen's originally muscular body was left with only skin and bones. His eyes were sunken and his skin was dry. However, the most surprising thing was when the Azure Dragon absorbed from his flesh and blood, it absorbed all the poison as well. High in the sky, in the distance, an ice phoenix and the figure of a sword descended rapidly. Duan Mu Ching and Chu Chaoyun landed firmly on the ground. The two of them looked at the surroundings. Countless trees were snapped in half. There were many fissures on the ground. They were astonished in their hearts. Chu Chaoyun walked slowly to the huge crack. When he saw Hua Yunfei lying on the bottom, a trace of killing intent flashed in his eyes. The sword behind him buzzed relentlessly. Duan Mu Ching said expressionlessly, you wish to kill him. Chu Chaoyun smiled faintly, if there is an opportunity, I would not hesitate to make a move. Unfortunately, this was a blessing in disguise for him. He has awakened the manifestation of this martial spirit. If I want to kill him, the moment my killing intent manifests, it would awaken him immediately. After today, he will only become more terrifying. Duan Mu Ching walked over slowly, her eyes full of shock. It is already difficult to awaken the manifestation of an inherited martial spirit. It is even harder to manifest a mutated inherited martial spirit. After today, within Dongming province, there will be no one in the younger generation who will be a match for him. Chu Chaoyun smiled subtly and turned his gaze to the dried up Xiao Chen lying on the ground. In such a large Dongming province, there are definitely plenty of hidden geniuses. Don't just cast your sights on the three powers. Who knows? There might be someone was as comparable to him somewhere nearby. A trace of pity appeared on Duan Mu Ching's pretty face, this person could be said to have had a great opportunity, obtaining a heaven-ranked martial technique from somewhere. Unfortunately, he overestimated himself and executed it. Furthermore, this was not his first time executing the heaven-ranked martial technique. If he executes it once again, he is likely to die on the spot. Without a heaven-ranked martial technique, how would he be able to fight against Hua Yunfei? He is, after all, just a superior grade martial disciple. Hua Yunfei did not continue to discuss this topic. He asked, how are you going to deal with the map of the ancient remnants? Are we still including Hua Yunfei? Just as Duan Mu Ching was about to reply, a resplendent blood color light shot out of the spirit blood jade in front of Xiao Chen's chest. Xiao Bai finally broke through the restrictions Xiao Chen had set upon it. Seeing the dried up body of Xiao Chen on the ground, it let out a mournful cry. The pure look in its eyes suddenly became bloodshot. Boom! A huge six-tailed spirit fox appeared before the two of them. There was a surging aura coming from its body. The six tails behind it stood erect, its hair all stood on its end. It looked very terrifying. Crap, this little fellow is about to go berserk. Let's go quickly. The two of them were startled. They hurriedly used their own methods to fly into the sky and flee. Xiao Bai opened its mouth and the spiritual energy from the surroundings rushed toward it. The mysterious Nine Heavenly Revolution transformation was circulating unceasingly. 
The boundless essence was compressing nine times, forming into a huge light ball. The light ball kept rotating, it was very bright. A strong wind arose from around it, causing all the leaves, the crushed stone, dirt, and dust to fly around. Boom! The light ball flashed by in the air, looking like an arc of electricity. The two people in the distance were instantly struck. They both vomited a mouthful of blood before landing on the ground heavily. Xiao Bai looked at Xiao Chen on the ground. Its bloodshot eyes misted up. It pulled Xiao Chen onto its back and quickly ran off into the distance. Within the illusion formation, on a clear area on the Zhuang River's bank, the dried up Xiao Chen lay on the ground. It was unknown whether he was dead or alive. Xiao Bai's body had already recovered to its usual appearance. After it went berserk, it would be extremely weak and dispirited. However, it did not rest immediately when it looked at Xiao Chen's condition. Instead, it rushed out of the illusion formation. Four hours later, it returned covered in blood. It was clutching a medicinal fruit with light flowing around it in its paws. If Xiao Chen were not unconscious, he would immediately recognize this fruit in its paws to be the red corpomelo. This was an important ingredient for refining top quality healing medicinal pills. The red core pomelo grew in the deep areas of Savage Forest. There must have been strong spirit beasts guarding it. Xiao Bai dragged its frail body over and picked the herb. It was unknown how much damage it sustained. Xiao Bai looked for the porcelain bowl that Xiao Chen normally drank from, and carefully broke the red core pomelo apart. The red core pomelo turned into a gratifying medicinal liquid. Xiao Bai lifted the bowl up and poured the medicinal liquid into Xiao Chen's mouth. Finally, it poured a little on the arrow wound on Xiao Chen's chest. After completing all this, Xiao Bai's tensed mood finally relaxed. Its extremely exhausted body immediately became a beam of white light and flew into the spirit blood jade. The medicinal strength of the red core pomelo infused into Xiao Chen's body. This method of direct consumption was considered taboo to ordinary cultivators. This was because the unprocessed medicinal fruit contained an extremely tyrannical medicinal strength. If used directly and one was not careful, their blood and chi will churn, causing their body to explode and die. Most alchemists would refine this red core pomelo into at least 10 essence returning pills and separate out the medicinal strength. Only by doing this would it be suitable for cultivators to use. Xiao Chen's current situation was special. His body was now like a building that still had a thousand things to be done before completion. The blood and chi in his body were very sparse, he would be able to handle this, even if he consumed another red core pomelo. Within Whitewater City, people saw the Zhang clan's first elder coming out of Savage Forest. He was then followed by Duan Muqing, Chu Chaoyun, and Hua Yunfei, they were all in sorry states. Especially Hua Yunfei, he looked very pale and he was very weak. It was obvious that he suffered from serious injuries. The entire White Water City instantly became chaotic. This Xiao Chen was actually able to cause so many to return in low spirits following a defeat. Where did this saint come from? He was actually able to injure the successors of the three powers of Dongming province. Particularly Hua Yunfei, he was just 17 years old and had awakened his mutated martial spirit at birth. After he made his debut, he had never been defeated by someone of the same generation. Even those of the older generation had to be wary of him. Only death remained when the Blood River passed. This was a saying about Hua Yunfei in the Dongming province. This was a saying that everyone knew. There were already many people who considered him to the top expert of the younger generation and had given him the title in their hearts. Even many of the people in power thought that, after the Thunder Emperor, he was likely to become the Tianwu continent's proud son of heaven, the first in the past thousand years. However, no one expected that Hua Yunfei would be defeated by a superior grade martial disciple in this insignificant Whitewater city. No one dared to believe it when the news spread. After a short period of time, the rumors of Xiao Chen were spoken about constantly. Some said that he was a successor of a hidden noble clan, some said that he was the last disciple of an unknown sect. There were even ridiculous rumors that he was a cultivator sent by the Great Jin Nation. White Water City, Zhang Clan, Great Hall. Zhang Mingxun smacked his palm on the table violently, Zhang Yun's. Are you doing your job properly? You are already a martial grand master, yet you are unable to deal with a superior martial disciple. 
Have you no shame? Zhang Yuns, who was below, said in a somewhat unconvinced tone, even the successors of the three powers were injured by him. I managed to injure him severely with one arrow. When Zhang Mingxun heard this, he was extremely infuriated. His complexion turned ashen as he scolded him in anger, still trying to give excuses. The map was almost obtained by them as a result and you still want me to praise you for that. Zhang Yuns knew he said the wrong things as he quickly lowered his head and said, Clan head, I know what to do. I will rush back quickly. If I don't capture that brat, I'll never return. Zhang Mingxun had a dark look on his face as he smiled coldly, if you cannot capture him, you may kill him. If the map lands in the hands of the three powers, you can forget about keeping your first elder position. Zhang Yunzi's back was covered in cold sweat. After he got up and took his leave, he scolded Xiao Chen mentally several times, if I manage to get my hands on you, I'll let you experience a life worse than death. Not long after Zhang Yun's left, a Zhang clan disciple rushed in and said to Zhang Mingxun, reporting to clan head. Someone submitted a copy of the map to the ancient remnants to the stronghold the clan set up in the east of the city, claiming the reward of 1,000 gold tails. Zhang Mingxun was filled with joy when he heard this, could it be another cultivator managed to kill him? He urged in a hurry, quick, show it to me. Before that Zhang clan disciple managed to hand the map to Zhang Mingxun, another Zhang clan disciple rushed in and said in a loud voice, reporting to clan head. Someone submitted a copy of the map to the ancient remnants to the stronghold the clan set up in the west of the city, claiming the reward of 1,000 gold tails. A seed of doubt was planted in Zhang Mingxuan's heart, why was there two copies of the map? Could one of them be fake? Reporting to clan head, someone submitted a copy of the map to the ancient remnants to the stronghold that the clan set up in the north of the city, claiming the reward of 1,000 gold tails. Reporting to clan head, just as Zhang Mingxuan's suspicions grew, a throng of people rushed in, reporting that someone summited the map and claimed the rewards. Adding the earlier two people, there were 10 copies of the map in total, causing them to lose 10,000 gold tails. 10,000 gold tails was a significant sum of money. The Zhang clan only received an income of 1 million gold tails per year. This was 1% of their annual income of the entire clan. Anyone would feel a heartache at such a loss. Zhang Mingxun suppressed the anger in his heart and checked the 10 copies of the map. He discovered they were all fakes. Furthermore, these 10 copies were almost identical to each other. It was clear that this was done by a single person. Zhang Mingxun smiled coldly to himself. In the past hundred years, no one in Whitewater City had ever dared to mock the Zhang clan. This reward was set by himself, so of course, he knew about the loopholes. However, he did not expect someone to take advantage of the loophole. In the past hundred years, the Zhang clan has become the strongest power in Whitewater City. He dared to issue a bounty because he was confident. However, he did not expect that someone would actually dare to take advantage of this loophole. He said in a cold voice, find out who did this within three days. I will destroy his entire clan. Does he think that our Zhang clan is easy to bully? The people left the moment they received the order. At this time, a cultivator beside him said in a soft voice, Clan head, there seem to be two words hidden on the map. When Zhang Mingxun heard this, had an apprehensive expression on his face. He casually picked up a map and looked at it carefully. The route drawn on the map, amidst the mountain and river, indistinctly formed strokes, strokes that made up Chinese characters. TL Note you probably noticed by now that Chinese characters are written by using a series of strokes merged together to form a pictogram. After a long time, Zhang Mingxun muttered out the two words, these words seem to be stupid, cunt, bang. Zhang Mingxun clenched his fist tightly, and he pounded furiously on the table on which the map laid. The wooden table exploded with a loud sound, turning into countless splinters. The ten people kneeling below were so frightened they were trembling. They had never seen Zhang Mingxun lose his temper like that before. Even when the first elder was here earlier, his expression was not as frightening. Zhang Mingxun's aged face was bloated red like pig's liver as he said agitatedly, bunch of trash. Scram. If you accept these kind of maps again in future, you can depart from the Zhang clan. Damn it. This person claiming the rewards with fake maps was looking down on the Zhang clan. 
His appetite was really big, eating 10,000 gold tails in one go. Furthermore, he wrote the words, stupid cunt, so openly on the map. He was clearly doing this on purpose, how disgusting could he be, to do such an infuriating thing. Never mind if you used a fake map and claimed the reward, just do it quietly. Yet you still wrote the words, stupid cunt, on the map. Isn't this equivalent to slapping me on my face? Worst of all, I, Zhang Mingxun, read out the words, stupid cunt, like a fool. Enough is enough. Zhang Mingxun felt a fire burn in his heart, he was not able to calm down. The more he thought about it, the angrier he got. He shouted lividly and sent out punches and kicks at the tables and chairs around him. This continued until everything within sight was smashed until he felt better. However, when he thought about it, these things were quite valuable as well. When added together, they were worth at least 10,000 gold tails. All this was money gone, just like that. The fire in his heart lit up once again. Within a lavish room in Liusheng Pavilion. When Liusheng Pavilion turned into a pile of rubble, many people thought that it would require at least three months before Liusheng Pavilion could open for business again. It was unknown how Jin Dabao managed to do it, but Liusheng Pavilion was miraculously rebuilt within three days. Furthermore, it was even taller and even more lavish than it was before. Business was now even better than it had been. A waiter brought banknotes worth 10,000 gold tails and handed it to Fatty Jin. There was a look of worship on his face as he said, Young master, as you expected, that group of people does not know what the map looked like. To think we could actually exchange that for money. Fatty Jin laughed loudly as he received the banknotes. The fat on his face wobbled as he smiled brightly, no wonder the son is so stupid, the father is a stupid cunt, himself. The money that was used the rebuild Liusheng Pavilion has all been earned back, and some more. Fatty Jin carefully put away the banknotes and then said to the waiter, go look for people to bring the maps to the center of Whitewater City to sell. Say that it is the map that was leaked from the Zhang residence. Sell each copy for 1000 silver tails. Those cultivators who think they are strong will definitely buy it. The waiter said hesitantly, are we selling this without making any changes to it? That's not too good, maybe we should change the words. The fatty muttered to himself, indeed, it is not too right. If we sell this just like that with no change, it would not show the genius of this fatty. How about this? The eyes of the fatty brightened as he carrying on smiling, at a, big, in front of the, stupid cunt. Make sure you write it in a poetic manner. I don't have to teach you how to do that right. The waiter almost vomited blood. This kind of change is like having no change at all. The key is the words, stupid cunt. That is why I suggested making changes. To think you actually just add a, big, in front of it. Isn't this even more infuriating? Finally, the waiter could no longer handle it. He asked, young master, don't you always say when you do business, you cheat neither the old nor young. Isn't that what you are doing now? Fatty Jin smiled and scolded him. He used the gold folding fan in his hand to rap on the head of the waiter violently, cheating neither the old nor young, is referring to normal people. Or people who would buy the words, stupid cunt, normal people. Fatty Jin sighed heavily as he opened the folding fan and fanned himself. He said with regret in his voice, my intelligence is too high. It is indeed a detriment. Seems like no one in this world understands me. How lonely. Before the fatty could finish speaking, the waiter quickly ran out. He felt his insides churning. If he continued to stay here, he would vomit out the lunch that he just ate. Within the illusion formation, beside the Zhuang River's bank, Xiao Chen laid unmoving. Three days had passed and his dried up skin was somewhat healthier. However, he still looked as skinny as a stick, as though he was malnourished. The poison gathered on his skin, causing his white complexion to turn dark. Another three days went by and dark clouds gathered in the sky, turning the whole place gloomy. In a blink of the eye, water drops the size of beans fell from the sky, falling on Xiao Chen's face with a pitter-patter. The torrential rain poured heavily as lightning flashed and thunder roared. The level of the Zhuang River rose and the turbulence water surged violently, gushing at a great speed. Chi Chi. Raindrops fell on Xiao Chen's tightly shut eyes, his eyelids could not help but twitched twice. 
After a long time, his firmly shut eyes opened a crack. The rainwater seeped through the crack, entering his eyes mercilessly. There was a mist covering the sky, making it look vague and indistinct. Amidst the rain and the mist, he seemed to have seen his parents from his previous life. Because he left, his mother cried every day and his father sighed all day long, both their fine black hair turned white. Dad. Mum, Xiao Chen murmured softly. It was unsure if the water in his eyes was rainwater or tears that were flowing constantly. He had never felt this lonely in his lives before. Despite the vastness of this world, he could not actually find a place to take shelter from this torrential rain, not even a straw shack. He painstakingly stretched out his right hand towards the sky, trying to grab onto the vague yet familiar image of his parents. The bean-sized rain fell continuously on Xiao Chen's right hand, mercilessly extinguishing his delusions. The image of his parents slowly disappeared, transforming into another familiar person in Mohe City. He saw a heartbroken Xiao Yulan, watching as he left Mohe City. Ni Lan, Xiao Ling Er, and his other companions from the trial of Gloomy Forest were all kneeling in front of Xiao Shang, seeking mercy for Xiao Chen. Then he saw Feng Feishui, dressed in men's clothing. She was holding a folding fan, looking very graceful and elegant. Various scenes of the past flashed by for Xiao Chen. Mohei City, I have already been gone for so long, will you still remember me? Cousin Yulan, did you go to Heavenly Chin School with Xiao Jian? Xiao Jian, did your hatred towards me decrease as a result of my departure? Feng Feishui, first you gave me the Azure Dragon Medicine Cauldron, and then you gave me the Azure Dragon Cloud Soaring Art. Who exactly are you? Xiao Shang, why was I being chased out just because I possess the Azure Dragon Martial Spirit? Why are you so heartless? All the vague images in the sky vanished completely, leaving only the mist and the torrential rain, washing away the memories of Xiao Chen. When all these memories disappeared, Xiao Chen's heart was clear once again. The water in his eyes disappeared as he pensively watched the rain pour. Xiao Chen struggled for a little before managing to sit up. He used his right hand to support his weight as he slowly stood. He staggered as his body swayed. Because he was lying on the ground for a long time, the blood circulation in his body was not good. He felt dizzy and almost collapsed again. After a short period of time, his blood circulation improved. Xiao Chen headed to the Zhuang River's bank, braving the abounding rain as he slowly walked over. A blurred mirror image appeared in the water, showing Xiao Chen's emaciated body and black skin. Xiao Chen smiled bitterly to himself as he muttered, heaven-ranked martial technique. I am indeed not strong enough to execute it yet. If I were to execute it once again, I would probably die horribly on the spot. Suddenly, he remembered the first time he executed the return of the Azure Dragon. The time he was saved by Xiao Yulan, her meticulous care, as well as the table full of tasty dishes. Now, the two of them had gone their separate ways. It was unknown when they would meet again. He could not help but feel depressed in his heart. Recollecting his thoughts and drenched from the downpour, Xiao Chen went and found a flat rock. He hesitated for a little before sitting down cross-legged on it. He took out the seven-leaf fruit from his universe ring. The gratifying medicinal fragrance instantly wafted out. There was a layer of golden chi that appeared to be solid covering it, even the rain was not able to penetrate through. Xiao Chen did not hesitate as he swallowed this natural treasure that even the black-legged snake did not dare to swallow. His current chi and blood were very weak. Even though he had already taken a red core pomelo, it was not sufficient, he needed more. He did not have to worry about his chi and blood becoming berserk, causing himself to be oversaturated and exploding to death. The moment the seven-leaf fruit entered his mouth, it turned into a cooling medicinal liquid. It flowed along Xiao Chen's meridians and circulated through his whole body. After a cycle, a terrifying energy was emitted from the whole of Xiao Chen's body. The incredibly berserk qi and blood churned in his body unceasingly. It followed the acupoints along the meridians and rushed into the tianding acupoint in his brain. Xiao Chen's body emitted a faint golden glow. When the bean-sized rain fell on it, it immediately turned into steam. In a very short amount of time, the flat rock was covered with the white mist. Within the steam, there was a human figure emitting a golden glow. It looked extremely sacred and holy in the rain. 
Seven leaf flower grew a petal once every 10 years. For all seven petals to grow out, it would take 70 years. Only after another 20 years would there be a seven leaf fruit. A seven leaf fruit took a total of 90 years to grow. During this time, the seven leaf fruit continuously absorbed the purest spiritual energy of heaven and earth. When it finally bore fruit, the essence of heaven and earth contained within it reached an unimaginable level. This was the purest and densest essence. It could result in a martial disciple increasing his cultivation by one grade when consumed. Although Xiao Chen had anticipated the strength of the seven leaf fruit, he underestimated the essence of heaven and earth contained within. He almost lost control of it. Xiao Chen quickly circulated the purple thunder divine incantation, slowly refining this berserk medicinal strength. A purple steam rose up from his head. Xiao Chen's superficial flesh and skin could be seen being nourished slowly by the naked eye. The dried skin gradually became saturated. His black cheeks looked like it was carved using a knife, the corners were clear and distinct, giving one the impression of a sword that was being unsheathed, a pressuring sense felt when one showed off their abilities. After the purple thunder divine incantation made three small cycles, Xiao Chen managed to control the medicinal strength. He continued to circulate the purple thunder divine incantation. He was prepared to use this opportunity to advance in cultivation realm in this torrential rain. In the skies above, dark clouds covered the sun. Within the clouds, the sound of thunder continuously crackled. The merciless torrent of rain grew more intense with the wind. There was the sound of the wind, rain, thunder, gushing river, and the sound of the waterfall crashing onto the ground surrounding him. Further away, there were the chirps of bugs and the growls of spirit beasts. As these sounds entered Xiao Chen's ear, Xiao Chen reached a state of mental clarity, a state of where he lost the sense of self. He wandered between reality and illusions, sensing and feeling everything between the heaven and earth. He circulated purple thunder divine incantation for a cycle. The berserk medicinal strength contained in the seven leaf fruit merged together with the spiritual energy absorbed by the purple thunder divine incantation and flowed into the dantian. Bang! Where the martial spirit was, there were no barriers. The ten white clouds immediately exploded apart, becoming a formless mass. The clouds disappeared and a pool of clear water appeared in the space of the formless mass. The size of this pool was at least double that of when Xiao Chen advanced in cultivation realm the last time. He felt the energy contained within and felt extremely joyful. He was actually able to raise his cultivation directly to the peak of medial grade martial master. He was only a little short of progressing to superior grade martial master. Xiao Chen had been capable of breaking into the next cultivation realm for a long time already. He had been suppressing this energy, solidifying his foundations. He did not expect that under the effects of good preparation, he was able to jump to medial grade martial master using the seven leaf fruit. Boom! Suddenly, there was a very intense crackle of thunder. Under the guidance of the thunder, many explosion sounds roared within Xiao Chen's body. There was a loud crackle of thunder in every one of his 700 odd acupoints in his entire body. It seemed to be synchronized with the thunder in the sky. It was unclear whether the thunder from the heaven was the one triggering the explosions in Xiao Chen's body, or the reverse. Every time the sound of thunder roared from his acupoints, Xiao Chen could feel the strength contained in his body increase significantly. These thunderous sounds were actually tempering his body. Xiao Chen suddenly thought of a section in the Compendium of Cultivation. When the Purple Thunder Divine Incantation is cultivated to the third layer, every time he advanced a cultivation realm there would be the possibility of causing a strange phenomenon to occur, granting him great opportunities in cultivating. According to legends, after he cultivated to the seventh layer, every time he advanced, he would have to undergo a tribulation of lightning. It seems that this legend was likely true. When the thunder completely stopped, the purple thunder divine incantation suddenly started to circulate. The speed of the circulation was actually faster than before. The purple thunder divine incantation had advanced too. The torrent of rain slowly stopped and the dark clouds dispersed. The sun shined again and the forest became lively once more. There were all sorts of sounds coming from birds and beasts. Xiao Chen opened his eyes suddenly. The purple thunder true fire abruptly poured out from his pores before gathering together and transforming into a resplendent ball of purple flame. It floated in front of him. 
When the Purple Thunder Divine Incantation advanced to the third layer, there were some qualitative changes to the Purple Thunder True Fire. It finally generated an origin flame, it was no longer a flame without any source. With a thought from Xiao Chen, the manifestation of the purple thunder true fire turned into a purple light and entered his right eye. A boundless sea of flame instantly appeared within his right eye. It was as though a universe was being separated by the flames. Finally, the boundless universes converged together and the purple fire became a purple light. It slowly disappeared from Xiao Chen's eye. His eye returned to its normal peaceful look. Xiao Chen jumped down from the rock. He felt that his entire body was filled with a boundless energy. Every move of his contained a strong might. He trod on the muddy ground and walked to the riverbank. Xiao Chen waved his finger and a purple flame in the shape of a rhombus appeared in his eye. It gave off an incomparably strange light. A surging flame appeared in his hand and fell gently onto the surface of Zhuang River. Kai. 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 When the terrifying flame landed on the river surface, it burned, giving off sizzling sounds. After a long time, the purple flame disappeared. However, the water level of the Zhuang River decreased by a finger's length. When Xiao Chen saw the might of the purple thunder true fire, he revealed a shocked expression. He never expected, after condensing an origin flame of the purple thunder true fire, it would be so powerful. Xiao Chen took out a wooden pole and stood it upright on the ground. He held the lunar shadow saber and raised his concentration to its peak. He entered into a state void of thoughts, the heaven and earth serve me, and the saber. Drawing the saber. Chop. Shua. 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 Xiao Chen hacked out continuously nine times the wooden pole was chopped into ten sections. This incredibly light wooden pole did not move at all, it did not even wobble. Xiao Chen sheathed his saber and stood upright, he displayed a big smile. He was not far from achieving the great perfection of this drawing the saber. Xiao Chen took out the seven leaf flowers petals from the universe ring. Xiao Chen was deep in thought for a while. He returned to the flat rock once again and sat down cross-legged. He plucked a red flower petal and placed it in his mouth slowly. The petal melted instantly when it was placed in his mouth. Immediately after that, it permeated Xiao Chen's skin and flesh, causing him to feel an unbearable pain. There was not a place in his body that did not feel pain, it was like needles piercing him. Xiao Chen clenched his jaw and endured. This was the seven leaf flower cleansing his marrows, thus, this was a necessary pain. Xiao Chen felt as if his skin had fallen off. When a gentle breeze blew, he felt an exceptional pain. Xiao Chen did not dare to open his mouth, he was afraid that if he opened his mouth, he would bite his tongue off by accident. In a split second, his face was covered in so much sweat, as though he just took a shower. Such unbearable pain persisted and only stopped after two hours. The instant the pain vanished, Xiao Chen felt all his pores open. He felt a comfortable feeling spread throughout his body. His black skin changed drastically, becoming snow white and causing one to feel happy. Xiao Chen clearly felt the strength in his body increase significantly. He felt joy. He no longer hesitated and placed a white petal into his mouth. Finally, Xiao Chen swallowed all seven different colored petals. All of these simply caused inhumane torture for Xiao Chen. Every time he swallowed a petal, the pain would double. Xiao Chen nearly fainted from the indescribable pain by the time he swallowed the seventh petal. If it were not for the fact that his spirit was stronger than normal, Xiao Chen would have fainted long ago, never to wake again. Bang! 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 Xiao Chen stood up on the rock, the bones in his body cracked and rattled. After cleansing the marrow seven times, the bones started to remodel themselves. After the remodeling was done, Xiao Chen discovered he had grown significantly taller. He was originally 1.7 meters but now he was 1.8 meters. A growth of 10 centimeters. His face, that seemed sculpted using a knife, became even more handsome. The strong aura became reserved, like a treasured sword being sheathed. Occasionally a bright gleam flashed in Xiao Chen's eyes. His aura immediately turned sharp, like a treasured sword being unsheathed with a cold, sharp gleam flashing in all directions. His body had already undergone the tempering of the heavenly thunder and, now, his marrow was cleansed by seven leaf flowers seven petals. His body's strength had reached a very shocking level. 
Xiao Chen jumped down from the rock and sent a violent palm strike at a huge stone nearby. He did not use any essence and relied only on his physical strength. Bang! Countless small cracks appeared instantly on the huge rock. The cracks extended out unceasingly and the stone turned into countless small fragments, flying wildly into the air. Xiao Chen looked at the rock fragments that fell to the ground. He sighed in his heart. When Xiao Chen first arrived in this world, he was unable to condense his martial spirit. At that time, his biggest dream was to train until he had a very strong physical body. This was because there were some people, in this world, who were unable to condense their martial spirit but were able to make their mark by training their physical body. He did not expect to be able to achieve the small success stage of training the body, despite being on a different path now. The bright sun hung high above, shining its light all over the land. The surface of Zhuang River was shimmering, reflecting the resplendent light of the sun. Xiao Chen leaned on the rock and took out the map, which caused him to be chased, from the universe ring. He examined the map many times before but did not discover anything. The location of the ancient remnants on the map should be located somewhere in the inner reaches of Savage Forest. Unfortunately, Xiao Chen had never been in the inner reaches of Savage Forest before. He was not able to tell where exactly the location was according to the map. This map required one to be extremely familiar with the inner reaches of Savage Forest for them to understand it. The remnants of the ancient people would definitely have many treasures, spirit weapons, battle armors, ancient martial techniques, secret treasures. All this held a fatal attraction to Xiao Chen. The ancient era was 10,000 years earlier than the Tianwu dynasty. This was the most glorious moment of the human race. The streets all over the kingdom were filled with saints, they were able to split the mountains and divert the rivers. There were even legends that claimed there were martial gods born in that era. They were able to pluck the stars and the moon from the sky or spit stars from their mouths. Unfortunately, that glorious age was buried in the river of time. Virtually none of the inheritances of the ancient people were preserved. Between the Tianwu dynasty and ancient era, there was a blank spot of history. No one knew what happened during that period. The ancient people seemed to have vanished without a trace. Most people think the ancient people were exterminated by the demons of the demonic world. After all, that was how the Tianwu dynasty was destroyed. However, aside from the Three Holy Lands, no one knew the truth. The Three Holy Lands had never revealed any news about the ancient era. Xiao Chen was very interested in the ancient era. He had a faint suspicion that the Azure Dragon martial spirit in his body might have appeared then. Unfortunately, he was not familiar with the inner reaches of Savage Forest, the map in his hand was useless. I have to work with someone, Xiao Chen thought in his heart. When Xiao Chen had that thought, he immediately thought of someone. And, it shall be him, Xiao Chen said as a smile appeared on his face. After Xiao Chen said that, he sent his spiritual sense into the spirit blood jade. He saw the unconscious Xiao Bai and the smile on his face slowly faded away. A flash of killing intent appeared in his eyes as he muttered, it is time to leave. Coincidentally, I can deal with these two matters together. Xiao Chen left the illusion formation and headed to the periphery of Savage Forest. Soon, he met a group of cultivators that were training in Savage Forest. Xiao Chen's appearance was now very different from the past. The originally young and tender temperament had vanished, becoming very steady instead. That group of cultivators did not pay too much attention when Xiao Chen walked past. However, after Xiao Chen placed a certain amount of distance between them, one of the cultivators seemed to have suddenly remembered something and took out a portrait. Look, doesn't that person look like the person wanted by the Zhang clan? The cultivator asked as he held the portrait. When the people to the side took a careful look, they said, not really, the Zhang clan's people said that he is a 16 or 17 year old youth. The person that just walked by does not have the temperament of a youth. Another person said, he clearly does not look like him. The person who just walked past is a medial grade martial master. However, the Zhang clan's people said that the person in the portrait is a superior grade martial disciple. That is no way a person can raise his cultivation by so much in just these few days. However, I feel that there are some resemblances, I'm not sure how but I just feel so, another person to the side offered an opposing opinion. 
The leader of this group was a man with a horrifying saber scar on his face. When he saw Xiao Chen's back, he did not say anything. After a long time, he said in a sullen voice, it is the person in the portrait. Although he has changed his clothes, he did not change his shoes. The rest of the group took a quick look. Indeed, the shoes in the portrait were exactly the same as the one that person was wearing. After they found this clue, the more the group looked, the more they found that he was alike. They were now certain that he was that person. Boss, should we? The Zhang clan offered a reward of 1,000 gold tails. That is as much as the entire earnings of the whole group for a year. That's right, he is just a medial grade martial master. All of us here are martial masters. Furthermore, boss, you are at the peak of martial master. There is no need to be afraid. The scarred man smiled sinisterly, do you think I'm a fool? I have sent ninth brother to follow him. He should have left some signs behind, waiting for us to take action. Boss is indeed the boss, you are way more farsighted than us, the group immediately flattered him. A vicious look flashed in the scarred man's eyes as he scolded them jokingly, speak less of this rubbish and quickly follow me. Before the group moved very far, they saw the sign left behind by their ninth brother. They immediately felt joyful and they increased their pace. A look of greed flashed in their eyes when they thought of the Zhang clan's 1000 gold tails reward. Where are ninth brother's signs? Why are they gone? The group discovered that the signs that were guiding them suddenly disappeared after they traveled for a significant distance. The scarred man saw a pile of ashes in front of him. He felt a bad premonition in his heart, where is ninth brother? Where did he go? Even if he was killed, there should still be a corpse. I see him. Xiao Chen is there. Suddenly, someone in the group shouted out loudly. The group looked in the direction he was pointing in. They immediately saw Xiao Chen beside a tree. When the scarred man heard his voice, he quickly put down the doubts he had in his heart and looked in that direction as well. He only saw Xiao Chen standing beside the tree without moving, as though he had expected the arrival of the group. His face was devoid of shock and his black pupils contracted, causing the people not to be able to guess what he was thinking. Suddenly, the scarred man felt something was wrong. He wanted to call out to stop him. However, these people were already consumed by greed and brandished their swords, rushing towards Xiao Chen. Xiao Chen suddenly opened his right eye and his aura changed. His clothes and black hair fluttered around. He was not unlike a treasured sword unsheathed, revealing a cold and sharp gleam. There seemed to be a boundless flame burning in the depths of his eye. It then finally gathered and formed a rhombus shape of purple flame. This purple flame connected with Xiao Chen's spiritual sense. He had already secretly planted a seed of fire on the bodies of these people. In the instant, Xiao Chen opened his right eye and formed the purple light, the fire seed on the bodies of these people ignited. They were raised in a purple flame and turned into ashes before they could cry out in shock. The scarred man felt that something was wrong and he already retreated backward. However, his left hand was still burning. He decisively took his sword and cut off his left hand. Seeing the many piles of ashes on the ground, his jaw fell open and he was speechless. His face was filled with horror. A group of lively people was turned into piles of ash without signs or warning. Is this the devil? The scarred man finally knew what the pile of ash he saw earlier was. However, it was now too late. Xiao Chen held the lunar shadow saber in his hand and slowly walked over to him. This forest was extremely silent at this moment, only the sound of Xiao Chen's footsteps remained, as well as the loud thumping of the scarred man's heart. Pu Si. A wave of blood spurted through the air. A horrifying wound appeared on the chest of the scarred man above his heart. He had never seen a medial grade martial master who could execute a saber strike as fast as this before. He regretted caused the deaths of his brothers and himself as a result of his greed for the 1000 gold tails. However, there was no such thing as medicine for regret. When he sent his ninth brother to follow Xiao Chen, he already sealed his fate. Xiao Chen sheathed his saber and sank his consciousness into himself. He saw that only half of his essence was left. He sighed to himself in his heart, the expenditure is too great, it looks like I can only reserve this move to be used as a trump card. In his usual state, if he used it twice, he would exhaust all the essence in his body. This was Xiao Chen's first time using the flame origin of the purple thunder true fire, 
combined with his spiritual sense, to kill someone. The effects were satisfactory but the consumption of essence was too high. The scarred man was carrying a bag behind his back, this was the harvest of this group of people after spending one month in Savage Forest. Xiao Chen opened it to take a look. After keeping the rank 3 spirit cores and a few rank 4 herbs, he threw the rest away. Not long after Xiao Chen left, a team of Zhang clan cultivators discovered the situation. They hurried and reported it to Zhang Yun's. Zhang Yun's rushed over at a mad pace. After seeing the wound on the scarred man, a look of contemplation appeared in his eyes. First elder, what do you think? Was it done by that fellow? One of the Zhang clan cultivator to the side asked. After a long time, Zhang Yun spoke, the saber wound on his chest is exactly the same as the ones on our brothers from a few days back. It should have been done by the same person. The Zhang clan cultivator to the side exclaimed in joy, this fellow finally reveals himself. From the temperature of the body, he definitely has not gone far yet. Chase. Zhang Yun said in a deep voice as his expression turned grave. As Xiao Chen headed to the exit of Savage Forest, he ran into a few groups of cultivators who were consumed by greed. He had dealt with them directly without much trouble. Some of these cultivators had recognized Xiao Chen, some of them just saw that he was alone and wanted to rob him. Birds die seeking food, and humans die seeking wealth, the fittest survive. Within Savage Forest, the natural order of the weak becoming food for the strong was exhibited to the extreme. Even humans were not an exception. Unfortunately for them, just based on his rushing thunder saber technique and azure dragon cloud soaring art, Xiao Chen could be said to be unrivaled amongst martial masters. Not only did all these cultivators, who made a move, not get anything, but they also lost their lives. The entrance to Whitewater City was already very near. Xiao Chen squinted his eyes and looked ahead. After a while, he unhesitatingly walked out of Savage Forest. The instant Xiao Chen stepped out of Savage Forest, he felt a killing intent coming from behind him. He quickly evaded to the side. Kai. An arrow flew by Xiao Chen, accompanied by a starting wind. Xiao Chen was startled in his heart. This arrow was very fast. If he had not advanced his Purple Thunder Divine Incantation to the third layer, as well as noticed the killing intent of the archer in advance, he would have been shot. Xiao Chen pushed off the ground with his feet and catapulted himself high into the air. When he landed, he immediately turned around to take a look behind him. Behind Xiao Chen, Zhang Yun's led a group of Zhang clan cultivators to chase after him. When Zhang Yun saw Xiao Chen's appearance, he was mildly shocked. After not seeing him for six days, Xiao Chen's appearance had changed so drastically. What made him so astonished was Xiao Chen had raised his cultivation level by two grades, from superior grade martial disciple to medial grade martial master. Furthermore, he had only used six days to do it. Xiao Chen, hand the map over and I can give you an easy death. Or else, I'll make sure you live a life worse than death, Zhang Yun said in a sullen voice. Although he was astonished at Xiao Chen's cultivation realm, he did not pay too much attention to it with his cultivation as a martial grand master. Xiao Chen looked everyone in the eye, then he extended out his spiritual sense. His thoughts moved as fast as lightning, quickly balancing his options, to run, or to fight. There was a total of 31 people. Aside from Zhang Yun's, who was a martial grand master, the rest of them were martial masters. However, most of them were superior grade martial masters. Xiao Chen sensed through his spiritual sense that there were 200 Zhang clan cultivators led by three martial grand masters rushing over. If he could quickly finish the battle before him, before the three martial grand masters arrived, he would have an opportunity to escape. Xiao Chen made his decision in his heart. He looked at Zhang Yun's and smiled faintly, since I'm going to die regardless whether I hand the map over or not, do you think I would give it to you? Zhang Yun smiled, do you think you have a choice? For the past hundred years, anyone who dared to offend the Zhang clan in Whitewater City has not had a good ending. Zhang Yun's held his steel saber and led the people behind him as he walked towards Xiao Chen, step by step. He revealed a malevolent smile. In his eyes, Xiao Chen no longer had any means of resistance. 10 steps, 9 steps, 8 steps, Xiao Chen's expression did not change as he counted the distance between these people and himself. 
When these people were only five steps away from Xiao Chen, he made his move. Lightning Evasion There was a flash of lightning and Xiao Chen suddenly vanished from his original spot. Right in front of everybody's surprised eyes, he appeared in the middle of the Zhang clan cultivators. Flight on wings, disordered dance of a thousand years. Xiao Chen shouted softly as he leapt into the air. His body constantly changing positions in mid-air. Saber light after saber light flashed one after another, causing the group to scream out repeatedly in misery. Retreat. Zhang Yun shouted loudly. Xiao Chen, who was rapidly and constantly changing his posture, was very fast. It was impossible for anyone to catch him. The Zhang clan cultivators all rushed outside of the group. However, the saber lights were too fast. Every time there was a flash of saber light, someone would get hit. Blood and amputated limbs constantly dropped to the ground. The disordered dance of a thousand years was a martial technique with high lethality and a large area of effect. The more people there were, the more mighty it was. The saber lights kept flashing Xiao Chen launched more than a thousand saber lights in an instant. After Xiao Chen landed, the number of Zhang clan cultivators that were uninjured numbered about 10. The rest of them had been struck by the saber lights, their corpses were mutilated beyond recognition, scattered everywhere. A large amount of blood flowed from the bodies, continuously. Amputated limbs and internal organs were scattered everywhere, it was extremely gory. The remaining 10 people became pale. Although they had killed before, even to the point where the numbers were far beyond the number that died today, they had never seen a scene this cruel and ruthless before. If they had not run fast, the corpses on the ground would be theirs. Thinking of this, the heart of the Zhang clan's remnant cultivators tightened, they felt their back turn cold with sweat. Zhang Yun's had an unsightly expression. He saw the Zhang clan disciples lying on the ground, people who were alive moments ago then turned into corpses in the blink of an eye. He shouted angrily, this old man will kill you. He brandished his saber and leapt into the air, chopping downward towards Xiao Chen's head. There was a resplendent saber light gathering on the blade of the saber. This was a technique that only martial grand masters and above can grasp, gathering essence on the body of the saber. The saber light that Zhang Yun's produced was 3.3 meters long, it looked extremely powerful. Xiao Chen did not dare to clash head on with him. He pushed off the ground with his feet and executed the Azure Dragon Cloud Soaring Art, flying backward quickly. Boom! The saber light struck the ground violently. Dust flew everywhere and a fine fissure appeared on the ground. Zhang Yun's quickly withdrew his saber. As he continued to raise his momentum, a resplendent glow appeared on the body of the saber. Kill. Zhang Yun shouted loudly as he raised his saber. A surging saber chi gathered on the saber, firing towards Xiao Chen, who had not landed yet. Xiao Chen was astonished, this Zhang Yun can actually use saber chi already. Although he is not able to use it as he pleased yet, he is already at the threshold of martial saint. Thus, the might of the saber chi was not drastically reduced. Furthermore, the angle of this saber chi which was fired was extremely tricky to deal with. Without a foothold in the air, it was difficult for Xiao Chen to dodge. Flight on wings, one line chop. There was a reserved glow on the lunar shadow saber. This saber may look ordinary but it contained a huge force behind it. Bang. The lunar shadow saber chopped at the surging saber chi and gave off a loud bang. Xiao Chen was not actually blasted away and landed firmly on the ground. Who? Suddenly a whirlwind appeared on the ground. It was unknown what martial technique Zhang Yun's used. Its speed increased and it arrived before Xiao Chen instantly. A resplendent saber light appeared on the saber and chased after Xiao Chen, who had not caught his balance yet. Drawing the saber. The saber flashed and the lunar shadow saber clashed with Zhang Yun's saber light. This saber strike arrived first despite being sent later. It took the initiative and struck Zhang Yun's saber first. Bang! A huge force came from the saber, causing Xiao Chen to be knocked backward by five steps. Zhang Yun's tried to catch his balance but the force coming from the saber actually caused him to take two steps back. Is that person Xiao Chen? To think that he did not suffer a disadvantage when clashing with Zhang Yun's. He managed to kill more than 10 Zhang clan cultivators earlier with one martial technique. That could possibly be a superior grade profound ranked martial technique.
The background of this person is definitely not small. Seems like the Zhang clan will be mocked this time, regardless of how the situation unfolds. So many people died in order to capture one medial grade martial master. I hear the map that was leaked from the Zhang clan is on him. He defeated the final disciple of the Misty Sword sect master, Chu Chaoyun, the Hua clan's Hua Yunfei, and the Duanmu clan's future queen, Duanmu Qing. Given the situation, it seems like this rumor is true. Since this place was the location of Savage Forest, there were many cultivators that went by normally. The battle between these two had already attracted countless people. They were all discussing the battle in front of them. The words of the crowd reached Zhang Yunzi's ears. The anger in his heart burned even fiercer. He took a large step forward and the resplendent saber light gathered on the saber again. Boom. Xiao Chen, who had just exchanged blows with him, did not hesitate and used the same move. The results were the same as before, Xiao Chen retreated five steps. Zhang Yun's did not want to be forced back in front of everyone. He forcibly suppressed the force that was transmitted through the saber and continued to rush at Xiao Chen. Suppressing the force in his saber was an extremely dangerous thing to do in combat. If he was not able to finish off his opponent before the force rebounded, he would receive a backlash. At that time, the force that he suppressed would rebound with multiple times the strength. Boom. 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 Zhang Yun's hacked out five times. Xiao Chen retreated backward and had already reached the boundaries of Savage Forest. His right hand, which was holding the Lunar Shadow Saber, had been jolted till it became numb. He even felt some pain in his chest. Xiao Chen's eyes were calm, there was no trace of panic at all. He had been enduring, accumulating energy. He did not believe that Zhang Yun's would be able to keep this up for long. It was now a competition to see who could last longer. Boom, 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 boom. Zhang Yun's took great strides as he shouted. Four saber lights fired out from his saber. These caused Xiao Chen to be blasted backward into Savage Forest. However, the force that Zhang Yun's been suppressing and already reached its limit. Zhang Yun's wanted to stop but, when he saw Xiao Chen's pale face and blood trickling out from his mouth, he decided to abandon this thought. This brat is only a medial grade martial master, there is no way he can withstand my strength. I'm sure he is doing the same thing as me, forcibly suppressing the force in his body. Let's see who can withstand to the end, I will not give up. Thinking of this, Zhang Yun shouted loudly as he prepared to make his final move, to kill Xiao Chen. Xiao Chen's gaze was as calm as still water. He noticed that there was a small crack on Zhang Yun's saber. Furthermore, he also noticed that Zhang Yun's looked slightly abnormal. He knew it was time. Rushing thunder chop. He shouted loudly and the lunar shadow saber suddenly emitted countless arcs of electricity. The rank 6 demonic core was also fully unleashed. The energy he had been building up was all used in the most violent strike of the rushing thunder saber technique. The sound of an explosion rang out behind Xiao Chen. He gracefully flew across the air, leaving behind only a shadow. He parted the air and caused two shockwaves, clashing with Zhang Yun's saber light. Bang! The two sabers collided and something that no one expected happened. The superior grade profound rank saber in Zhang Yun's hand snapped. Inclined body strike. Taking advantage of the instant Zhang Yun's was astonished, Xiao Chen leaned to the side and focused all the strength in his body on his shoulder. Smashing forward fiercely, his body, which was tempered to a horrifying level, smashed into the chest of Zhang Yun's. Pu Si. Zhang Yun's vomited a mouthful of blood immediately and flew high into the air. Then, he landed violently on the ground. The force that he had been suppressing suddenly exploded out. After he landed, he vomited nine mouthfuls of blood continuously, his complexion was pale. He looked at Xiao Chen who walked over slowly and muttered, how could this be? How? He is just a medial grade martial master. To think he could actually beat me in terms of strength. This Zhang Yun's is too conceited. To think that he forcibly endured and suppressed the force of the saber and assumed the youth did the same. Indeed. What an unjust defeat. If he was not that anxious, his chances of victory would have been much better after exchanging 500 moves. The youth's final move was too terrifying. To think he had such persistence and endurance, saving his strength to unleash it at the end, clinching victory in one move. 
The cultivators who were spectating shook their heads and sighed as they saw Zhang Yun's defeated in an instant. They felt it was underserved, they also felt that Xiao Chen's terrifying attack was very shocking. Seeing Xiao Chen come closer, Zhang Yun's felt a shadow of death appear in his heart. He rushed off in the direction of the city gate and shouted to his subordinates to the side, hold him back for me. The remaining ten people were the death sworn of the Zhang clan. Although they despised Zhang Yun's action, they did not hesitate to stay behind. Because their families were in Zhang clan, if they disobeyed orders or even fled, not only would they be punished, they would implicate their families as well. Thus, they did not have much of a choice. Furthermore, if they were to die as a result of the battle, their families would receive a large sum in compensation. Xiao Chen had a calm expression as he continued to walk forward, as though there were no obstructions in front of him. The crowd's gaze was filled with shock when Xiao Chen directly walked past them. Kai. Kai. Xiao Chen did not appear to have made a move, but the bodies of ten of the Zhang clan cultivators suddenly burst into purple flames. They were instantly burned till they became piles of ash. Zhang Yun's turned his head around to check what Xiao Chen was doing. When he did that, he was frightened and he immediately increased his speed, rushing towards the city gate. Dang! Amidst the piles of ash, a bow that flashed with a cold gleam and a quiver of arrows fell. This was the spirit weapon that Zhang Yun's had used previously to shoot Xiao Chen. Xiao Chen picked up the bow and knocked an arrow. He then circulated essence to his right hand. When he tried to draw back the bowstring, he discovered that it would not move at all. There was more to the bow than meets the eye, this bow was actually about to dissipate essence automatically, Xiao Chen thought to himself. He then dissipated his essence and relied on the strength of his physical body to draw the bow to the shape of a full moon. He used his spiritual sense to lock onto Zhang Yun's chest. He was able to clearly sense his position, regardless of how he moved, there would be no way to shake Xiao Chen off. Hu Kai. The arrow buzzed through the air, looking like a bolt of lightning, looking like the martial technique, chasing stars catching moon. In one instant the arrow was knocked on the bow, and in the next instant, it had pierced through Zhang Yun's chest. The strength of the arrow did not weaken and it actually carried Zhang Yun's as it headed towards the city gates. The arrow violently struck the city wall with a loud bang, pinning Zhang Yun's to the wall. The first elder of the Zhang clan, the number one power of Whitewater City, was actually pinned to the wall of Whitewater City by a youth. The surroundings were silent, everyone's jaw was open wide in disbelief. That youth actually managed to draw the Soul Slayer bow to the shape of a full moon, how incredulous. Indeed, the Zhang clan had to spend a large amount of spirit stones before they were able to purchase it from Heavenly Craft Manor. One cannot use essence to draw the bow, they could only rely on their physical strength. In the Zhang clan, only Zhang Yun's is able to draw it slightly. Even so, countless people have died to this bow. Haha, ha, Zhang Yun's would never imagine that he would be killed by this bow. He had used this bow to slay countless people who had gone against the Zhang clan. Now, he is pinned to the wall by it, it could be said that he has received his karma. After a short moment, those cultivators recovered their wits. They looked at Zhang Yun's dissatisfied face and they took pleasure in his misfortune. It was evident these cultivators were frequently oppressed by the Zhang clan. Xiao Chen looked at the Soul Slayer bow in his hand, he felt surprised, he did not expect this ordinary looking bow to have such extraordinary origins. Xiao Chen put the Soul Slayer bow into the universe ring and raised his head to look at the pinned Zhang Yun's. He did not hesitate and walked directly into Whitewater City. After a long time, three martial grand masters of the Zhang clan led 200 martial masters out of Savage Forest in a majestic manner. When they saw the pinned Zhang Yun's, they turned pale with fright and shock filled their faces. It was now late at night, the skies were clouded, but there were no stars. Only a waning moon hung high in the sky, shining its gentle moonlight over the ground. Within the Zhang clan in Whitewater City, all the elder-leveled people were all summoned to the Great Hall. Zhang Mingxun sat in the middle of the hall with an expressionless look. By his two sides sat six consecrates of the Zhang clan, they were all martial saints. Behind them, there were tens of martial grand masters. The Great Hall seemed to be somewhat crowded. This was the true elite force of the Zhang clan, these were who the Zhang clan relied on for the past hundred years. 
They were the thing that allowed the Zhang clan to strut around unrivaled in Whitewater City. At this moment, these people, who were powerful men in Whitewater City and were normally well respected, had incredibly solemn looks on their faces. The atmosphere in the Great Hall was very dull and lonely. Zhang Mingxun started to speak slowly, I believe everyone knows about what happened during the day. The first elder Zhang Yuns was pinned on the city wall and died. A martial saint consecrate to his right side said, Brother Zhang, there is no need to pay too much heed to it, it is just a medial grade martial master. I am able to casually pinch him to death with just one hand. I feel it is better to let this matter go. We should focus on the ancient remnants, that would be where the Zhang clan would be able to obtain a foundation for expansion. Right after he said that a middle-aged man at the back spoke up, he had an extremely agitated expression on his face as he said, Elder Bai. What do you mean by this? My eldest brother was pinned to death at the city gates. Could it be that we are going to just let him die for nothing? That consecrate with the surname Bai frowned and said unhappily, what do you count for? How dare you speak with me in such a tone? Did I say we are not going to bother about it? I am willing to personally go and take revenge for your eldest brother, but there are matters that are more urgent. Even the clan head did not say anything, who are you to speak? That middle-aged man's face was bloated red, with his status, he was indeed not supposed to speak to the consecrate elder like this. However, his brother had died, and he did not feel satisfied. Zhang Mingxun said, Yunfeng, you don't have to be too worried. In all these years, have you seen anyone who offended the Zhang clan have a good ending? This time, the reason I have called everybody over is not for everyone to focus on this matter. I have similar opinions as Elder Bai. We have to prioritize what is important. There is no need to concern ourselves with a medial grade martial master. My only concern now is that this person might leak the map out. Thus, I called everyone over to prepare to enter into the ancient remnants. Zhang Mingxun said that in an uncritical manner, after he finished, everyone's expression changed. Were they able to enter the mighty ancient remnants just relying on themselves? Boom. Boom. Just as the crowd was pondering on Zhang Mingxuan's words, there were screaming sounds coming from outside. Bang. Bang. A few Zhang clan disciples were thrown in from outside by someone. The Zhang clan's disciples were thrown with a great force and the few martial grand masters in the outer circle were not able to withstand the force and were knocked flying back. A passageway was instantly created in the crowded Great Hall. Zhang Mingxun and the few consecrates made a move and caught the Zhang clan disciples who were thrown in. After these people caught them, a surging shockwave came from the bodies of these people, swelling out in all directions. It caused all the wooden tables and chairs to be knocked over. The cups and vases on them all fell to the floor, shattering. It was clear the person who attacked had an unfathomable strength. Zhang Mingxun put down the person he caught and looked at Hua Yunfei and Duan Muqing standing outside the Great Hall. Behind them, there was a group of servants of unknown strength. He said sullenly, what is the meaning of this? Why did you injure the disciples of our Zhang clan? He then looked at the not far away and lonely Chu Chaoyun. He said in a pleading tone, nephew Chaoyun, your father and I can be considered to be best friends. Are you going to oppose us? Chu Chaoyun smiled faintly and said somewhat gently, Uncle Zhang, when I came, my father already told me. Don't worry, I did not injure any of the Zhang clan's people earlier. Hua Yunfei smiled coldly, Zhang Mingxun, you don't have to ask further. I was the one who injured your man. All I have is one question for you, for how long are you going to delay us? Don't treat us like fools. Hua Yunfei's attitude was extremely arrogant. He completely belittled him, calling him by his name in front of everyone, there was not a trace of the propriety that should exist between a senior and a junior. Zhang Mingxun burned with anger in his heart, but he did not dare to express it on his face. After all, his Zhang clan was just a wealthy clan of a place. Whereas, the Hua clan is a noble clan that existed for a thousand years. When comparing to a clan with an innate bloodline, his clan was not even worth mentioning. Furthermore, the seniors of the Hua clan behind Hua Yunfei did not say anything, it was clear they permitted Hua Yunfei's current attitude. With them backing him, Zhang Mingxun could not do anything about Hua Yunfei. 
Zhang Mingxun muttered, I have already promised you all that once I ascertained the location of the ancient remnants, I will proceed with each and every one of you. As of now, the location is not confirmed yet, so how would I be able to bring you there? Hua Yunfei revealed a sinister smile and coldly snorted, You truly think we are fools? Did you think we did not hear what you said earlier? Don't think that if you have the Ji clan to back you up, you would be able to leave us behind. He paused for a moment, then his tone turned grave as he pointed at Zhang Mingxun and enunciated every word, one by one, for you information, this is Dongming province, not Nanling province. Even if the Ji clan came, it would not be up to them to call the shots. After Zhang Mingxun was pointed at by Hua Yunfei and lectured, his complexion became ashen. The anger in his heart grew fierier as he clenched his fist so tight, there were cracking sounds, he felt incredibly sullen. What big words you speak, suddenly a faintly discernible voice could be heard coming from within the great hall. It echoed throughout the surroundings, causing one to be unable to distinguish where the sound came from. A black figure came in from the outside and appeared in front of Hua Yunfei. He suddenly sent out a palm strike at Hua Yunfei, his actions were all done in one breath, and his speed was as fast as lightning. Most of the people in the Great Hall did not know how this black figure entered the Zhang clan. Bang! Hua Yunfei quickly made his move and exchanged a palm strike with the black figure. There was an explosive sound when the palms met, the black figure immediately exploded. That is the Ji clan's secret technique, astral incarnation. Young Master Ji is here, the Zhang clan crowd exclaimed joyfully when they saw what happened. Zhang Mingxuan's expression became significantly more relaxed. Hua Yunfei, who was nearest, was immediately forced back by the shockwave of the explosion. A strange energy flowed into his body via his palm, circulating in his meridians and sweeping away everything in its path. Hua Yunfei became sullen and anxiously used the energy of his martial spirit, the blood river instantly poured in. He only managed to dissipate this strange energy after a long moment. The Hua clan's mutated martial spirit is only just so. No wonder he was severely injured by a superior grade martial disciple not too long ago. A male dressed in black walked in slowly from outside the great hall. He had elegant long hair and had outstanding charms. His eyes were as bright as stars. Although he was dressed in black, he still seemed to give off a strange radiance in the night. When he walked into the great hall, the entire great hall seemed to have brightened. He immediately became the focal point of everyone. The world existed for him, he was the main character. Chu Chaoyun's calm face reveal a trace of a ripple in his heart. Ji Changkong, is that him? There were many rumors about Nanling Province's Ji Clan's Ji Changkong. They said that he had practiced the Ji Clan's secret technique, astral incarnation to the medial success realm at 7, then he practiced another Ji Clan's secret technique, astral swordplay to the medial success realm at 10. Since then, he had never met anyone who was a match for him. He is the current top expert of the Nanling province's youth. At the age of 16, he was already a superior grade martial grand master. The prideful Ji Changkong then prepared to go to the imperial capital immediately to challenge the legendary princess Ying Yu, who was said be the reincarnation of the great emperor. He defeated all the youths in the imperial capital and finally he was summoned by princess Ying Yu. Those involved did not know the results of that battle, they only knew that after the battle, Ji Chengkong immediately left the imperial capital. Even since then, he became much more low-key. After half a year, he managed to improve his cultivation to the peak of martial grand master. He was just a little short of becoming a martial saint, potentially becoming the youngest martial saint in the past thousand years. Ji Chengkong walked to the front of Zhang Mingxun and bowed before respectfully saying, Uncle, this nephew has arrived late and caused you to be startled. When the crowd heard Ji Chengkong's words, they were startled, they never expected that Zhang Mingxun was actually Ji Chengkong's uncle. According to rumors, Ji Chengkong's mother was a concubine and came from a local clan. Because of his mother, Ji Chengkong was often treated coldly. That was why he spent all his efforts cultivating, struggling very hard. No one expected that his mother was Zhang Mingxuan's younger sister. Zhang Mingxun smiled faintly, Chang Kong, there is no need to be so courteous. It is good that you arrived, your uncle no longer has to be pointed at and lectured. 
The people from three great powers of Dongming province finally understood why Zhang Mingxun dared to delay them, seemingly exuding a feeling that he was confident in his backing. So, he actually had such deep ties with the Ji clan. Huan Yunfei was disheartened, but he did not show it. Earlier, when he attacked, he had suffered a small disadvantage from Ji Changkong. It was evident that he held some fear of Ji Changkong. He exchanged looks with Duan Muqing and Chu Chaoyun before saying, Ji Changkong, I don't feel that there is anything wrong with what I said. The matters of Dongming province are not for the people of Nanling province to deal with, don't you feel that you are overstepping your bounds? Ji Changkong smiled indifferently, such a large Dongming province, since when have you, Hua Yunfei, become its representative? Have you even asked Brother Chu and Miss Duanmu? Furthermore, I, Ji Changkong, do not represent the Nanling province. Please do not randomly assign such roles to me, I am just here to visit my relatives. The two of them argued with each other, no one was willing to take a step back. The people on both sides brought all released their auras. In a short period of time, the atmosphere became very tense, as though a huge battle was about to break out. See, see. Just at this moment, the sound of a stringed instrument came from the distant skies. It was skillful in moving, it was very pure like an ethereal celestial music. Everyone quickly raised their head to take a look. They only saw a huge, completely golden battleship flying slowly over in the sky. A flag, with a large, gui, character, was raised high on the bow of the ship. Below the flag, there was a group of people dressed in purple robes, standing proudly. That is the Gai Marquis's secret treasure, the golden battleship. The people from the royal courts have arrived, the people below said in shock as they saw the words on the flag clearly. Zhang Mingxun looked at the golden battleship above his head and he felt his back go cold with sweat. He did not expect the royal court to send someone over. This was the first time he felt things were out of his control. The waning moon hung high in the sky, there were no stars shining in the backdrop of night. This night seemed darker than usual but the streets of Whitewater City were packed with people. The huge golden battleship flew slowly in the sky, giving off a brilliant luster. Even though it hung high in the sky, the people on the ground could still feel a boundless might coming from it. The Gai Marquis, Ying Xiao, actually came. The mighty ancient remnant is truly attractive. How unfortunate, it is impossible for us low-ranked cultivators to check out the excitement. Why not? Wasn't there someone selling the Zhang clan's leaked map on the streets recently? I bought a copy and have yet to check it out carefully. After I checked it out, I will definitely go take a look. Stupid cunt, that map is fake. Check it out carefully and you will realize it. If I find who did it, I will pound him to death. Someone besides smiled coldly, save your money, the Zhang clan head had bought 10 of those maps, spending 10,000 gold tails in the process. He is the true, stupid cunt. We were just duped of a thousand silver tails, that is considered nothing. Is that true, this person actually dares to dupe the Zhang clan? Why did I not think of doing that? Ten thousand gold tails. That is ten years of my income. With your guts. If this person did not have great backing behind him, he would definitely not dare to fool the Zhang clan. For us, after being fooled, all we can do is endure it. If we really went to look for something to settle accounts with, who knows who would end up being beaten up. The crowd chatted for a while more before turning the topic back to the Gai Marquis's golden battleship. When facing the powerful and mighty battleship, everyone was shocked. Amidst the crowd, Xiao Chen raised his head to look at the golden battleship in the sky. He pondered pensively, this golden battleship must be a high-grade secret treasure, it must have come from the ancient era. Most of the secret treasures in this world were passed down from the ancient era. After the end of the ancient era, the secret treasure craftsmen declined. After the destruction of the Tianwu dynasty, the inheritance of secret treasure craftsmen completely disappeared. Now, in the Tianwu continent, there was no one who could make secret treasures. In order to obtain secret treasures, one could only obtain them from an ancient remnant, or perhaps from the remnants of the Tianwu dynasty. Thus, the value and rarity of secret treasures could be seen. However, Xiao Chen felt the legendary secret treasure was very similar to the magic treasures recorded in the Compendium of Cultivation. In the past, there were people who mistook his life bestowal spell as a secret weapon. 
Unfortunately, he had not obtained a true secret treasure yet. Thus, he was not able to confirm his guess. Recollecting his thoughts, Xiao Chen headed towards Liusheng Pavilion. Along the way, he asked around for news on it and he discovered that it had not changed its location. Xiao Chen directly headed to the second floor and discovered business was as booming as ever. Even though it was night already, there were still no empty tables. Furthermore, there were many people in the queue. On the second floor, all the cultivators were discussing the ancient remnants and the golden battleship in the sky, as well as the recent extremely popular news of the stupid cunt map. The Gai Marquis's golden battleship is here, I wonder if the Ji clan's black royal warship or the Duanmu clan's profound ice palace will come as well. If they came, it would be very lively, they are all royal grade secret treasures. If they ended up fighting, even martial saints would not be able to withstand the shockwaves. Xiao Chen went directly past the second floor and headed for the third floor. The third floor required one to have a Liusheng Pavilion BIP card before one could enter. There were still many empty tables on the third floor. When Xiao Chen made the transaction with the fatty the last time, Jin Dabao handed a VIP card to him. After showing his BIP card, he was able to enter without any obstructions. The people who sat on the third floor had a minimum cultivation realm of superior grade martial master, most of them were martial grand masters. It was obvious that the statuses of the cultivators on the third floor were higher, and some of them were leaders of cultivator organizations. The topic of discussion on the third floor was completely different from the second floor. Most of them were engaged in trades of spirit cores or herbs. Occasionally, there were people who would go to the counter to have some goods appraised. Xiao Chen understood why the business of Liusheng Pavilion was so good. Aside from dining and gossip, they also provided a perfect location for conducting transactions. Bang! 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 Not long after Xiao Chen sat down, the unique sound of Fatty Jin's footsteps came stomping heavily over. His face will filled with a smile as he sank his plump butt into the chair across Xiao Chen. It's been half a month since we last met. Brother Xiao, you have become a celebrity. Almost everyone in Whitewater City knows of your name, how unexpected. Fatty Jin took a seat and sighed immediately. Xiao Chen smiled faintly but did not say anything. He took the spirit cores and herbs obtained from those who attempted to kill him out from the universe ring, piling them up in layers. At first, Fatty Jin did not pay it any mind, but when the herbs and spirit cores filled the table, his face had a shocked expression, what the hell? Did you empty out the entire savage forest? There are so many spirit cores and herbs. I just killed a few hundred people, Xiao Chen said indifferently. A terrifying killing intent spread throughout his surroundings. He said these words for the benefit of the people around. After the pile of spirit cores and herbs appeared on the table, Xiao Chen immediately felt countless gazes staring at him. There were traces of greed and undisguised killing intents in these gazes. In the instant Xiao Chen's killing intent spread out, everyone in the floor felt a faint pressure. This was a pure killing intent, it was only obtainable by killing countless people. How many people has this brat killed in order to obtain such a terrifying killing intent? The crowd muttered to themselves as they withdrew their gazes. Fatty Jin laughed loudly, you want to sell all these to this fat lord? No problem. This fat lord accepts them. You, you, and you come and inspect the goods. At the fatty's summons, two people came over from the counter and bowed to him. They then counted the things on the table and gave Xiao Chen a receipt before bringing the goods back. Fatty Jin smiled, they should be able to finish appraising it within half an hour. There is no need to worry about being cheated. When this fat lord does business, I seek a win-win situation, I will cheat neither the old nor young. Xiao Chen took a sip of tea and inquired, do you have a quieter place here? I have something important to talk to you about. Fatty Jin's eyes opened wide, he guessed what was the business Xiao Chen wanted to talk about. He said, come with me. The two of them entered a quiet booth and, after Fatty Jin sat down, he said, any matters that are discussed here will be kept secret, a third person will not be able to listen in. Xiao Chen scanned the place with his spiritual sense and as he expected, there were indeed no other people around. He took out the ancient remnant map from the universe ring and said, I want you to help me find the location of the ancient remnant depicted on this map within three days. 
Fatty Jin looked at the map and laughed loudly, Brother Xiao, I shall not hide the truth from you, I have a map as well. I wonder if it is real, why don't you take a look? Xiao Chen only took a glance and figured out the trick in it. He could not help but smile, I knew it, this was done by you. I really don't understand why would people buy this even though it has the words, stupid cunt, on it. Fatty Jin chuckled and said gloatingly, who knows. Let's not speak about this. I wish to buy your map, give me a price. Xiao Chen was a little shocked as he said, why do you want to buy this? Do you want to go to the ancient remnant as well? Since I want to buy it, I definitely can sell it too. Are you selling it? Fatty Jin put on a very learned appearance as he spoke. Xiao Chen thought for a while, he was able to guess what the fatty wanted to do with it. He said, sure, but you have to help me find the location on the map first. Fatty Jin patted his chest and said, just a small matter. Leave it to me. Knock, knock. There was knocking coming from outside the door, and after that, an old man came walking in, holding a stack of banknotes, young master Xiao, your goods have been appraised already, they are worth a total of 5,000 gold tails. Fatty Jin received the banknotes and casually handed them to Xiao Chen, and then he passed the map to that person, find the location on the map by tomorrow morning. That old man took the map and left without saying anything. The fatty saw that Xiao Chen did not feel assured and he explained, don't worry, believe in me. I will definitely have the results by tomorrow morning. Come, let me bring you to meet someone. This person is very interested in you. Someone was interested in him. Xiao Chen felt suspicious. He was not familiar with anyone in this white water city, who would be interested in him. Xiao Chen followed the fatty up to the fifth floor. According to the rumors, only people of similar status to the city lord would be qualified to enter the fifth floor. When compared to the fourth floor, the decorations of the fifth floor were as different as night and day. It was much more luxurious, everything there was made from gold, jadeite, white jade, and other precious materials. There were gentle voices carrying out a conversation in the adjoining room. Fatty Jin squinted and looked through the crack in the folding screen. Seeing the two people in there, he revealed a strange expression. He muttered, when did Yan Chenian arrive? Why do I not know about it? To think he actually came directly to the fifth floor. Are the guards all dead? No one even came and informed me. Yan Chenian was the successor of the Zaihe province's innate bloodline Yan clan. This white water city is truly becoming more lively, Xiao Chen indifferently thought in his heart. The fatty was about to walk over when Yan Chenian suddenly walked out. He was not surprised at Jin Dabao's appearance. However, he was surprised when he saw Xiao Chen. A faint killing intent appeared in his eyes as he slowly walked over to Xiao Chen. He said, I recognize you. Xiao Chen, the ancient remnant map is with you right? Hand it over. Yan Chenian spoke in a bold and confident manner, he did not feel there was anything wrong with that. In his eyes, Xiao Chen was just a medial grade martial master without any status. There was no need for him to be so courteous. Xiao Chen frowned slightly, then he smiled coldly to himself. Are all the disciples of the noble clan so shameless and arrogant? Drawing the saber. Chop. The lunar shadow saber suddenly appeared in Xiao Chen's hand, it released a resplendent electrical light and sent out a saber light at Yan Chenian. What a fast saber. Yan Chenian was startled greatly in his heart. He did not expect that Xiao Chen would be so decisive. Furthermore, he did not expect that this medial grade martial master's saber would be so fast. Fu Kai. Xiao Chen had practiced this drawing the saber countless times. He was just a step shy from the great perfection stage. Furthermore, at such a close range, there was practically no one who would be able to evade it. At the moment Xiao Chen drew the saber, Yan Chenian already started to retreat backward. However, his chest was still struck by the saber light, there was the sound of metal colliding with metal. His shirt was torn apart, revealing a golden battle armor. Xiao Chen was mildly astonished in his heart, it was actually an earth-ranked battle armor, the foundation of a noble clan is indeed deep. The saber did not manage to break the battle armor but the huge force behind it had stuck it firmly. Yan Chenian's internal organs were all instantly shaken. Arc light chop. A sword appeared in Yan Chenian's hand, he intended to retaliate but discovered the arc light chop seemed to resemble nature itself, there were no weak points. 
This had sealed off all his paths of attack. Retreat. He pushed off with his feet and stabilized the fluctuations of his essence in his body. His body flew backward and before he managed to stabilize himself after he landed, discovered Xiao Chen was rushing over. Xiao Chen held the lunar shadow saber as he rushed over unhesitatingly. His speed was as fast as lightning, like a rushing thunderbolt. Yan Chenian quickly thought about his situation and finally, he discovered, aside from rolling backward, he had no other means of resisting. Before he stood securely, he had no way to block this move, if he jumped backward too high, his head would be immediately chopped off. Making a quick decision, he instantly rolled backward. Rushing thunder chop. Out of nowhere, a crack of thunder sounded out loudly on the fifth floor of Liusheng Pavilion. The folding screens and chairs were all knocked flying by the fluctuations of the thunder. Xiao Chen carried along the boundless might of rushing thunder and dashed over. Moving as fast as lightning and containing a great power, he chopped down at Yan Chenian's head. Seeing the powerful momentum, Yan Chenian felt fear in his heart. The essence in his body circulated quickly. He held his sword above his head, hoping to block the saber. Boom. When the weapons clashed, there was a loud sound. Yan Chenian felt his hands tremble, a huge force traveled from the sword to his feet. There was a loud sound, and a hole immediately appeared in the wooden boards below his feet. Half of Yan Chenian's body immediately sank and got stuck there. He was unable to advance or retreat. Xiao Chen landed and raised his leg to kick him, flinging him out. Rushing Thunder Second Chain Chop After accumulating the energy from five sabers, the Rushing Thunder Second Chain Chop surged forward. The blade landed on Yan Chenian's battle armor, like before, it did not pierce through. Fu Kai. However, the huge force passed through the battle armor, gushing frantically into Yan Chenian's body. He vomited out a mouthful of blood and was smashed violently into the wooden wall. A large hole immediately appeared on the wooden wall of Liusheng Pavilion. Yan Chenian fell down, just like that. At a critical moment, he stretched out of his right hand and grabbed the wooden floor, his body dangled in midair. Dang. Just as Xiao Chen was about to kick him again, a sound wave was sent towards him. He quickly took two steps back. A table beside him was hacked into two halves by the sound wave with a loud bang. Su Xiao Xiao walked out leisurely and advised gently, Young Master Xiao, how about you show some mercy? Xiao Chen turned around and looked at the girl, praising her in his heart. Regardless of looks or temperament, only Yu Ying was comparable to her amongst all the girls he knew. However, I don't seem to know you, right? Do we know each other? Xiao Chen asked seriously as he looked at Su Xiao Xiao. Su Xiao Xiao was surprised at his words and did not know how to reply. The fatty hurriedly replied for her, This is Miss Xiao Xiao, I brought you here to meet her. The number one beauty of the South, Su Xiao Xiao, Xiao Chen thought. He did not expect her to be the one rumored to be the only person in the great Qin nation comparable to Yu Ying in appearance. Based on today, it seems the rumors were not false. However, this girl seemed to have a mysterious origin. Because she was good at playing music, she often appeared all sorts of grand places, interacting with the young masters of the great Qin nation's noble clans. However, there were no rumors of her having an affair with any of the noble clan successors. Furthermore, she did not belong to any one of the powers. There was once a marquis who wanted to force himself on her after seeing her beauty. However, before the men he sent out could take any action, there was the sound of wind and the marquis died in his own office. Furthermore, the royal court did not pursue the matter after that. Bang! Yan Chenian shouted lightly and climbed back to the fifth floor. His face was extremely pale, there were bloodstains on the corners of his lips. His clothes were tattered and he looked like he was in an incredibly sorry state. Ever since he made his debut, he had never been in such a sorry state. Now, because he underestimated his enemy, he nearly became the joke of Liusheng Pavilion. Young Master Yan, on the account of Xiao Xiao, will you withdraw? I have something to talk about with young Master Xiao. Su Xiao Xiao asked gently and looked at Yan Chenian. When Yan Chenian heard this, he quickly considered the situation. I have just suffered a significant injury due to my carelessness. This Xiao Chen clearly has some backers. It will not be to my benefit to continue fighting with him. 
I might as well go back and recover first before dealing with this brat. Yan Chenian snorted coldly and said in a grim tone, On the account of Miss Xiaoxiao, I will let you live your wretched life for a few more days. I will be back in a few days for your head. Fatty Jin sighed in his heart, what a pretentious prick, even this fat lord admits I am not comparable to him. He was clearly beaten like a dog and he still acts like he was the one dishing out the punishment, not wanting to lose face in front of Miss Xiao Xiao. Xiao Chen smiled coldly, did I say I'm letting you go? Lightning evasion. Inclined body strike. There was a flash of lightning and Xiao Chen suddenly appeared in front of Yan Chenian. His body inclined at an angle and all the energy of his body was focused on his right shoulder. He then violently smashed into Yan Chenian's chest. Yan Chenian, who was preparing to leave in a casual manner, looked at Xiao Chen in shock. He did not dare believe Xiao Chen would actually continue to attack him in front of Su Xiao Xiao. Bang! A terrifying physical body, combined with all his essence, caused Yan Chenian to vomit out a mouthful of blood. He flew backward and fell through the hole in the wall. This time, Yan Chenian did not have the opportunity to grab onto anything. With a loud boom, he fell from the hundred meters tall Liusheng Pavilion, landing violently. Because the Gai Marquis came, Whitewater City was particularly lively tonight. The crowd on the streets had not dispersed yet. Suddenly, a figure fell from Liusheng Pavilion, creating a loud boom and startling them. They only saw a person with disheveled hair lying on the ground. Blood was flowing out from his mouth and he looked extremely pale. That person slowly sat up and then tried to stand. Just as he got up, he fell back to the ground with a bang. The bones in his legs seemed to be broken, he had no way to stand up. Yan Chenian's eyes became bloodshot as he lay prone on the ground, crawling away step by step. He had come to Liusheng Pavilion alone. Because he wanted to meet Su Xiaoxiao, he left all the guards and servants outside the city. There was now only one thought in his head, which was to quickly get out, then get the clan protectors to tear Xiao Chen into tiny pieces. Is this not Zaihe province's Yan Chenian? Why is he here as Whitewater City? To think he was thrown down from Liusheng Pavilion. I wonder who is so daring. Some people recognized Yan Chenian's appearance and spoke with incomparable shock. The Yan clan was a distinguished noble clan in the Zaihe province. They had an innate bloodline and an inherited martial spirit, how could there be someone who could beat him to this state? Those with sharp eyesight looked up and saw Xiao Chen standing at the hole. They exclaimed in shock, it's Xiao Chen. Xiao Chen actually threw Yan Chenian out off Liusheng Pavilion. This fellow is too awesome, he just pinned the Zhang clan's first elder to the city wall to death during the day. Then, he threw the successor of the Yan clan out of the fifth floor of Liusheng Pavilion during the night. Regardless of whether they are the noble clans or the rich and powerful clans, he does not care about them. He will do whatever he wished. This person is very heaven-defying. The words of the crowd reached Yan Chenian's ears, causing the anger in his heart to burn even brighter. He wished he could get up and kill Xiao Chen with one blow of his sword. His eyes were bloodshot and filled with hate. A few people saw the pitiful manner in which Yan Chenian was crawling and wanted to help him. Scram. Just a bunch of commoners of the Dongming province. I don't need you to help me. I like to crawl, scram away. Yan Chenian was currently very angry with nothing to vent his anger on. When he saw people coming over, he immediately cursed at them. Those people saw their kind intentions were greeted with hate. After they were cursed at, they immediately left and disappeared, like they were playing hide and seek. They had never seen such a malicious person before. Haha, you are truly humiliating yourself. The successor of a noble clan with an innate bloodline and inherited martial spirit, is that someone you can help up. Did you hear that? He enjoys crawling like a dog. However, young master Yan, your crawling posture is very cool, your four limbs are all on the ground. Holding your ground and not submitting to force, a noble clan successor is indeed a noble clan successor. He is different from everyone else. There were people in the crowd who mocked Yan Chenian when they saw him. Allowing the people of Dongming province to vent their feelings. Just you wait, just keep on scolding. Once I crawl out, all of you will. Boom. Before Yan Chenian could finish his words, a bolt of lightning struck down from the heavens. It struck his back ruthlessly, causing him to fall face first. Boom. 
Boom! Another two bolts of lightning struck down and struck Yan Chenian's body. His body became charred and he fainted. In Liusheng Pavilion, Xiao Chen executed lightning descend three times before his anger was relieved. Against such a condescending, conceited, arrogant noble clan disciple, Xiao Chen had never ever bothered with speaking logic. If a dog bites you, you can't imitate the dog and bite it back. You have to use a wooden stick to beat it to death. When Su Xiaoxiao saw Xiao Chen not taking her words to heart as he continued to attack Yang Chenian, her expression changed, Xiao Chen, why are you so despicable? He already said he would withdraw. Xiao Chen turned around and smiled indifferently, I wonder which you are, blind, pretending to not hear, or having too low an intelligence and not able to understand the meaning in human speech. He already said he would let me live my wretched life for another few days and would come back to kill me later. Since it is so, why should I bother to show compassion to him? I'm not a fool. Su Xiaoxiao was so angry her face turned pale and could not say anything in response. Xiao Chen turned around and told Jian Dabao, Brother Dabao, please don't just casually bring me to meet people, I'm afraid that their intelligence is too low. I shall take my leave first. After Xiao Chen spoke, he immediately jumped out of the fifth floor. He circulated the azure dragon cloud soaring art and leapt higher in the air, disappearing into the dark night. How cool, he has about 10% of the demeanor this fat lord had in the past, Jin Dabao sighed as he watched Xiao Chen leave. Su Xiaoxiao's complexion was very pale. She had been everywhere in the great Qin nation, there were many noble clan disciples or royals who queued up just to see her. Even so, there had never been anyone who acted so rude to her before. As she watched Xiao Chen's figure disappear, she stamped her feet violently in anger. She picked up her zither and headed downstairs. Only after Su Xiaoxiao left, Jin Dabao recovered his wits. He looked at the numerous damaged decorations on the fifth floor and the huge hole in the floor in the wall. He immediately felt his heart ache and cursed, damn it. How much silver do I have to waste this time to repair all these damages? Jin Dabao stood in front of the hole and looked downwards. He discovered the unconscious Yan Chenian. His eyes widened in joy as he immediately thought of an idea. He quickly called a manservant on the fifth floor over, has that bastard, Yan Chenian, paid his bill yet? I believe he has not. I saw that Miss Xiaoxiao has not left yet and thought she would pay it. Earlier, Miss Xiaoxiao just walked out directly, she seemed to have forgotten about the bill, the manservant said in a somewhat awkward manner. Jin Dabao responded angrily, what a bastard, to think he can't even bear to spend the money to pay for the girl. Send a few people down and see if there is anything valuable on him. Take them all. When the manservant heard this, he asked somewhat excitedly, should we leave his undergarments? Fatty Jin thought for a while before responding, if it is not worth anything then forget it, anything we take has to be worth some money. As long as it is worth some money, just take it. The cost of the fifth floor repairs will all be billed to him. Below Liusheng Pavilion, the crowd all felt their resentments was vented when they saw the unconscious Yan Chenian. Such an egomaniac deserved to be struck by lightning. Make way, make way. We are the Liusheng Pavilion debt collectors, please make way. Three Liusheng Pavilion menservants parted the crowd and arrived in front of Yan Chenian. Before crowd's astonished gazes, they directly striped Yan Chenian's clothes off of him. Luxurious clothes from the soaring phoenix satin manor, but they are tattered already and not worth anything. Throw them away. One of the menservants casually tossed Yan Chenian's clothes aside when he saw that they were tattered already. Gold thread belt, this is not bad, it should be worth some money. These shoes seem to be made from the soft skin of a spirit beast. They should be able to fetch a good price. Oh, there are even some gold tails banknotes hidden in them. What brand are the shorts? Can you help me take a look? Damn. Superior grade earth ranked battle armor. We struck it rich. Hee <laughs> hee. I wonder how much is this worth? In the blink of an eye, they stripped Yan Chenian's clothes until he was only left with his underwear. Many of the spectators were stunned. They muttered to themselves, in the future, there will be no one who will dare to eat and run from the Liusheng pavilion. Even Yan Chenian was stripped to his underwear. Amongst them, no one could claim they had a bigger backer or background than Yan Chenian. Thinking of this, everyone could not help but tremble. Hey, 
This underwear seems to be inlaid with gold. Should we take it? One of the menservants hesitated as he asked. Damn. Originally the spectators were just venting their resentment. Now they started to pity Yan Chenian. This fellow was too pathetic. The first time he came to Dongming province, he was beaten up like a dog and thrown out of Liushang Pavilion by someone. What was even more pitiful was the people of Liushang Pavilion even wanted to strip off his underwear. Strip it, young master said remove anything that is worth money. He can only blame his own fashion sense. Of all the things he chose to use to inlay in his underwear, he chose gold, the manservant said after he removed Yan Chenian's belt. Wow, that's too formidable, to think they actually removed them. Damn, I would rather offend the Zhang clan than offend Liushang Pavilion. This is too horrifying, someone in the crowd commented in shock. After they removed his underwear, a manservant took a look at Yan Chenian's lower body. He said in shock, Hey, the hairs seem to be golden as well, should we pull them out? After the manservant said that, the spectators all felt a cold sweat on their foreheads. They all felt as though a cold wind blew through the crotch of their pants, as though something was broken. Who? All the spectating cultivators circulated their essence to its extreme and disappeared in one second. They all instantly vanished without a trace. Although the street was packed full of people earlier, there were now no traces of anyone. Damn it, that was too stimulating. I'm about to go blind, the manservant complained after a long time. Early the next day, the sun shined brightly. There were many people entering Liusheng Pavilion. Xiao Chen donned a black cloak and walked in slowly. The first floor was packed with people. Xiao Chen found it difficult to even take a step forward. What is going on? Why is Liusheng Pavilion's business ridiculously good today? Xiao Chen caught a cultivator running out and asked. When the cultivator was caught by Xiao Chen, he revealed an unhappy expression. He was about to lose his temper when he suddenly felt a boundless killing intent coming from Xiao Chen. His expression immediately turned warm and he pointed to the wooden wall. He put on a smiling face and said, Take a look, there is a notice on the wall. You will understand after you see it. There were too many people, Xiao Chen had no choice but to use his essence to force his way in. After he saw the contents of the notice, he could not help but laugh hoarsely. Notice. Recently, within Whitewater City, there have been many copies of the fake ancient remnant map appearing. There are even some immoral people who wrote the words, stupid cunt, on it, cheating every one of their money. I could not bear what I saw. Such a blatant act of scamming is abominable. In light of this, I guarantee, on the hundred-year-old reputation of Liusheng Pavilion, that we will give out a copy of the true ancient remnant map. As long as one spends a minimum of a thousand silver tails, Liusheng Pavilion will give away the first half of the ancient remnant map for free. Upon a second expenditure of a thousand silver tails, we will immediately give the remaining half of the ancient remnant map. Our house offers sincere treatment to all and fair trade to old and young alike. Regards, Jin Dabao. Xiao Chen executed the Azure Dragon Cloud Soaring Art, he was like a fish in water as he rushed upstairs. Along the way, the voices of the crowd reached Xiao Chen's ears. This fatty is truly a good person. Knowing that we got cheated, he will give the map away to us as long as we came here to eat. Indeed, in order to purchase that, stupid cunt, map, I spent 1000 silver tails. All I have to do here is eat 1000 silver tails worth of food and I get the map for free. I am normally in a bad mood whenever I see that fatty. Now, he has finally done something good. Stop talking and eat quickly. How much have you eaten? I ate a hundred buns already, there are nine hundred more to go. That should be one thousand silver tails. When Xiao Chen heard this, his flow of essence was suddenly interrupted, nearly causing the Azure Dragon Cloud Soaring Art to fail. He cursed in his heart, this fatty is not human. After cheating every one of their money, he still got them to come here and give him more, praising him in the process. When he arrived on the third floor, Xiao Chen flashed his VIP card. After he entered, he no longer felt as cramped. After all, there was a certain threshold to be met before one could enter the third floor. It was not so easy to enter. Waiter, bring me a pot of good tea and some side dishes, Xiao Chen immediately shouted out after he took a seat. The efficiency of Liu Shang Pavilion's waiters was very high, shortly after he ordered, Xiao Chen's food and tea were served. 
Did you see Yan Chenian's expression when his guards took him away this morning? I saw it, it was very unsightly. He seemed like he was about to cry. His body was all smooth and shiny, everything was plucked cleanly away. When Xiao Chen heard this, he could not help but be interested. He remembered Yan Chenian fainting at the roadside. Why did someone pluck everything off? Ha ha, if I were him, I would cry too. I heard that the fatty was collecting debts and plucked all of Yan Chenian's hair away. Even a true man would cry. This fatty is too terrifying. No one will dare offend Liu Shang Pavilion in future. He really plucked off all the hair on his body, leaving him with nothing. Fu Si. Xiao Chen could not help but spit out all the tea he just drank. After a long time, Xiao Chen finished all the food on the table. A manservant came over and led him to a booth. Within the booth, Fatty Jin was giggling as he did his accounts. When he saw Xiao Chen, he quickly stood and welcomed him. Xiao Chen immediately cut to the chase and asked, you found the place already right? Or else you wouldn't brazenly sell the map. Fatty Jin smiled, I found it. It is in the Beast King Valley of Savage Forest's inner reaches. This is the information of Savage Forest's Beast King Valley. I am giving it to you for free, am I not generous? Xiao Chen felt happy, he received the information on Beast King Valley from Jin Dabao and looked at it carefully. After a while, Xiao Chen frowned. The inner reaches of Savage Forest were relatively dangerous, there were many high-ranked spirit beasts in there. Even a martial grand master could only move around near the boundaries of the inner reaches. In order to enter the core zone, one must be at least a martial saint. Furthermore, even a martial saint would not find the trip to be easy. Every year, in Whitewater City, there would be news of martial saint experts dying in the inner reaches of Savage Forest. According to the rumors, there were ancient beasts in there, their strength was even greater than martial kings. Beast King Valley lay at the very core of Savage Forest. It was a burial ground. When high-ranked spirit beast neared the end of their life, they would automatically go there and die in a seated position. This was the result of their beliefs. With Xiao Chen's strength, it would be foolhardy to think he could enter alone. Against the spirit beasts that were stronger than martial saints, Xiao Chen would not even make it to Beast King Valley and was likely to die alone on the way there. Jin Dabao saw Xiao Chen immersed in thought and smiled, Brother Xiao, stop thinking about it. There is no way you can go in there with your strength. A thought suddenly flashed in Xiao Chen's head, there is no way I can go in there with my strength. Could it be that you have other methods? The fatty chuckled and opened the golden fan in his hand. He smiled and said, did you see the notice posted on the first floor of Liu Shang Pavilion? Xiao Chen nodded, yes, I saw it, that was the most shameless notice I have ever seen. The fatty smiled somewhat awkwardly, how can you say it is shameless? It is just the difference in intelligence between people. Let's not talk about that, this is this fat lord's method. After today, almost all the cultivators will know the location of the ancient remnant. A strange look appeared in Xiao Chen's eyes. He asked, you want to stir up the waters? TL notes, stir up the waters means to cause chaos. Fatty Jin smiled complacently, the fat of his face wobbled unceasingly, indeed, the appearance of this ancient remnant map has attracted countless cultivators. Amongst them, the noble families will not be concerned about the Zhang clan and will go directly to them to obtain the map. As for the other strong cultivators, although they are strong and are martial saints, they do not dare to offend the Zhang clan. Thus, if they wish to obtain the map, they will have to think of other ways. This fat lord is giving them a chance to do so. A conservative estimate of martial saints not belonging to any great powers arriving at Whitewater City is at least 50. More than 50 martial saints, in addition to the huge numbers of martial grand masters. Such a lineup would not be any weaker than any of the great powers. Xiao Chen continued to ponder on this, such an alluring place, it would not just attract some independent martial saints, it might also attract some martial kings. They just might be hiding somewhere. Thinking of this, the trip to the ancient remnants was much more dangerous than he thought. To imagine, he actually thought of going in there alone, rushing in first was tantamount to suicide. Fatty Jin continued to analyze the situation, think about it, if the ancient remnants exists, the ones to have the last laugh will be the noble clans. Whoever is stronger will obtain the most benefits. 
For weak people like me, we can only stir up some chaos in order to compete with them, fishing in troubled waters. TL notes, fishing in troubled waters means to take advantage of a crisis for personal gain. Xiao Chen thought about it carefully, it was indeed as the fatty said. It was not very realistic for independent cultivators like them to rely on their own strength to compete for benefits with the great powers and noble clans. Are there any empty rooms in your Liusheng pavilion? I wish to rest here for two days. Xiao Chen made up his mind, he was no longer in a rush, and he might as well use this time to rest properly. When he was leaving the previous night, there was a group of Zhang clan cultivators watching him. Although there were no martial grand masters, he had wasted some effort in dealing with them. He was in urgent need of a place to rest and recover, a place where no one would disturb him. Jin Dabao seems to be very mysterious. Xiao Chen thought the backers of Liusheng Pavilion were definitely not afraid of the Zhang clan. Fatty Jin smiled, are you asking for the service of us providing refuge? No problem. There is no business that this fat lord is unable to do. 10,000 silver tails for each day. 10,000 silver tails for each day, that would be 30,000 silver tails for three days. 100 silver tails were equivalent to one gold tail. This fatty was truly black-hearted, he had to spend 300 gold tails to stay for three days. Then forget it, I can casually find a place to stay for three days. This was a typical action of a spendthrift. Naturally, Xiao Chen would not be willing. So he walked away and did not bother to look back. The fatty quickly held on to Xiao Chen, saying, Brother Xiao, why are you always so hasty? I have not even finished speaking. Actually, the room can be lent to you for free. Jin Dabao whispered a few words into Xiao Chen's ear. Then, he began to smile vulgarly, Brother Xiao, what do you think? Xiao Chen thought for a while, I'll give it to you in three days. Three days went by in the blink of an eye. All the cultivators within Whitewater City now knew about the location of the ancient remnant. However, no one dared to go. Although Beast King Valley was said to be a burial ground, there might still be a strong spirit beast that was near the end of its lifespan that had not died yet. Spirit beasts that could enter Beast King Valley would be able to easily kill a martial grand master as long as they had a single breath left. Furthermore, not many people dared to enter the inner reaches of Savage Forest. These people looked to the few noble clans, hoping they would carve a path in. It is nice to hope, but reality was cruel. On this day, a black dot flew towards Savage Forest from the south sky of Whitewater City. When the black dot got nearer, a huge black warship appeared in their vision. There was a black flag with the G character hoisted on the ship. The G clan's secret treasure, Black Royal Warship, really flew over. It is going to fight with the Gai Marquise's golden battleship. Furthermore, a small white dot flew from the direction of Sishui Prefecture's capital city. As it came closer, they saw that it was a huge ice bird. On the back of the ice bird, there was an ice palace, glittering with a cold light. The Duanmu clan's profound ice palace flew over, too. It's the end, it looks like they are prepared to land in Beast King Valley directly from the sky. Damn it, I was waiting for them to carve out a path for us. To think they all took to the skies. If you can think of such a plan with your intellect, do you think these noble clans would not think of it, too? How naive. When the cultivators of Whitewater City saw the situation, they could no longer hold themselves back. They all started to prepare to enter the inner reaches of Savage Forest. At this moment, a few strong martial saints revealed themselves and gathered everyone to enter Beast King Valley together. Xiao Chen stood at the window and watched the sky calmly. He looked at the three secret treasures flying to the inner reaches of Savage Forest. However, he did not feel agitated or excited about it. Bang! 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 The fatty opened Xiao Chen's door and came in directly, Brother Xiao, the three days are up, are the things ready? Xiao Chen stayed silent, he took out a wooden sculpture and handed it over to Jin Dabao. The fatty received it joyfully and carefully placed it into a spatial ring on his finger. Xiao Chen thought, although the ten rings this fatty is wearing are incomparably gaudy, they are all spatial rings. In order to possess so many spatial rings, he clearly does not have a simple background or strength. Do you have any equipment you can sell to me? Xiao Chen inquired, trying his luck. 
The inner reaches of Savage Forest were very dangerous, he had been thinking of purchasing some equipment, but he did not find any channels to do so. Jin Dabao took out ten arrows and chuckled, I knew you would ask this, this fat lord has already made preparations. Ten essence light arrow for ten thousand gold tails, no bargaining. Xiao Chen felt happy. These essence light arrows were truly made for him. The soul slayer bow was already very powerful, and he was just missing arrows. With the essence light arrow, its might would be increased significantly. However, the price was extremely high, it was almost worth everything he had. Still, Xiao Chen did not hesitate and purchased them all. After all, while it was possible to bargain on other things, for these kinds of rare arrows, there was no ground for bargaining. Heavenly Craft Manor would only sell 1000 essence light arrows per year. It was something that could not be purchased, even if one had money. For the fatty to obtain 10, it went to show that he had great means. After he paid up, he kept the essence light arrows properly. Then Xiao Chen suddenly thought of something, the earth ranked battle armor Yan Chenian was wearing is still with you, right? Jin Dabao, what are you thinking? That is not for sale, it is worth at least 1 million gold tails. Furthermore, you are broke now. Xiao Chen smiled faintly, if I did not knock him unconscious, how could you have pulled out all his hair till there was nothing left? Thus, I should have a share in this earth-ranked battle armor. The fatty said angrily, stop speaking nonsense. Although this fat lord loves money, I do not love it to such a perverse level. All those are just rumors. The two of them bickered for a long time before Xiao Chen finally wrote out a promissory note for 500,000 gold tails and took the earth-ranked battle armor away. After Xiao Chen walked far away, Jin Dabao held the promissory note and chuckled, you have fallen into my trap completely. That battle armor was an underserved fortune anyway. After a short moment, there was the sound of footsteps. Su Xiao Xiao walked over gracefully as she carried her zither. She asked in a soft voice, did you give him my essence light arrows? The fatty hurriedly put away the promissory note and said in a righteous manner, I have followed Miss Xiao Xiao's intentions and given the essence light arrows to Xiao Chen in the capacity as a friend. That is good, we should make a move, too. In the outer periphery of Savage Forest, Xiao Chen widened his footsteps and headed quickly towards the inner reaches of Savage Forest. There were the corpses of spirit beasts everywhere he passed. Normally, there would be people fighting over the spirit beast's corpses. Now, no one was interested in them. Xiao Chen even saw a few corpses of rank 3 spirit beasts lying at the side. No one bothered to move or take it. Xiao Chen stopped and took out a small knife. He started to use it, cutting up the body of the rank 3 spirit beast. Even the most ordinary spirit core of a rank 3 spirit beast was worth at least a thousand silver tails. Xiao Chen was now extremely broke. Furthermore, he owed the fatty a big debt. There was no need to ignore money that was lying on the side of the road. This person is a stupid cunt. In this situation, where everyone is making full use of their time, he actually took out time to a dig out spirit core that other people left behind. Stop talking, and let's go quickly, we are already very late. Even if we only find some scrap metal, we will still be able to sell it for hundreds of thousands of silver tails. Two cultivators, who were not even superior grade martial masters, walked past Xiao Chen. They saw what Xiao Chen was doing and despised him. Xiao Chen smiled indifferently and ignored them. It was not even certain they would be able to survive the trip to Beast King Valley. To think they were fantasizing about obtaining treasures from the ancient remnant. Even if you obtain them, will you be able to come out alive? Xiao Chen kept the three rank three spirit core and continued on his journey. There were even more spirit beast corpses scattered before him. Xiao Chen even discovered a few rank four spirit beast corpses, resulting in Xiao Chen earning a small fortune. Usually, rank five spirit beasts would not appear in the outer periphery of Savage Forest. While this was normally dangerous, there were many cultivators here today. When they all worked together, there was no spirit beast which could hinder them. Boom. Boom. The sound of a battle reached Xiao Chen's ears. Xiao Chen expanded his spiritual sense and looked toward the direction of the sound. A group of cultivators were currently surrounding and fighting a spirit beast which was completely golden. Golden holy beast. Xiao Chen thought in shock. 
The spirit beast that was surrounded was a completely golden lion its head was even adorned by a golden horn. To think that this kind of holy beast exists. Xiao Chen exclaimed in shock, and there were great waves in his heart. However, it seems that its bloodline is not pure. In the ancient times, there was a type of spirit beast, its body was completely golden, even its blood was golden. It was the golden holy beast. The spirit core it produced was of the best quality amongst those of the same rank. It was rumored there were ancient savage beasts in savage forest. Although they did not see a savage beast, they discovered a golden holy beast. It must be because there was a large number of cultivators who came in and accidentally ran into it. Otherwise, with the spirituality of this kind of spirit beast, it would have fled before anyone got near. However, the bloodline of this golden holy beast was very thin, its value was no longer shocking. Xiao Chen was only interested in its golden horn. He had not been able to find a suitable material for his life bestowal spell. The gold horn was the most important part of the golden holy beast. It went without saying that it had a high amount of spirituality. He leapt up onto a tree branch and continued leaping from tree to tree. When he arrived closer to the battle, he observed them carefully. There were two groups of people surrounding this golden lion. At the moment, the golden lion was at the end of its tether. The atmosphere instantly became very strange. The leaders of these two groups of cultivators were martial saints. They each led ten odd cultivators dressed in different attire. It was obvious that these were groups which were formed at the last minute. Fu Si. The golden lion spat out a golden flame. The flame gave off a golden bright and dazzling glow as it sped toward the heads of the group to the right. This flame was very mighty, but the golden lion was currently very injured. The flames it spat out was a little lacking. The martial saint wearing grey robes slapped the flame and something strange happened. The golden flame suddenly rebounded back and headed towards the other group of people. A significant number of unprepared cultivators were immediately injured. Zhang He. What are you doing? The martial saint who lead the other group shouted angrily. TL Note. This Zhang He is a different one from the promise of 10 years arc. They are written with different Chinese characters but sound the same. The martial saint known as Zhang He smiled coldly, what am I doing? Isn't that what you were thinking of doing? Don't think I don't know what you did. If you did not make a mistake on purpose earlier, would this beast have been able to injure me? While the two of them spoke, they did not stop attacking. The already severely injured golden lion did not have long to live. Both sides purposely sent the flames flying over to the other side occasionally. The two martial saints were not bothered much, but the group of martial grand masters was very unfortunate. Occasionally there would be someone getting burnt. Seniors, although this golden holy beast is precious, its bloodline has already been severely diluted. There is no need to fight to the death here over this. Indeed, let's rush over quickly to Beast King Valley. Even the scrap metal from there will be much more valuable than this. The cultivators behind them advised. If these two people carried on like this, someone could potentially die. Bang. After one final attack, the golden lion finally fell to the ground. Both sides looked cautiously at each other. No one went forward to collect the corpse. Zhang He looked at his opponent, Zhou Hongyu, our strengths are very similar, there would be no way to determine a winner in a short period of time. It would be impossible for you to monopolize this golden lion. The battle between you and I has already delayed us for a long time. If we still wished to go to Beast King Valley, we need to settle this fast. Zhou Hongyu considered for a while. Very well, I only want the horn, I am not interested in the rest of it. Zhang He smiled, you should have said that earlier, I only want the spirit core. How about we leave the remaining skin, meat, and blood for the brothers behind us? Zhou Hongyu nodded his head, the both of us will take a step back and send one person forward to collect the spirit core and horn. How is that? Exactly what I was thinking. The two of them agreed on the distribution of the golden lion and took a step back. Two cultivators holding small knives walked out from the group. Hu Kai. A ball of purple flame suddenly appeared on the ground, then it turned into a two meter high firewall. When the firewall appeared, the two cultivators holding the knives were startled. In the instant the firewall rose up, a figure descended and with a, shua, sound, the corpse of the golden lion disappeared. 
There was a crack of thunder and the figure disappeared in the distance with the golden lion. What's going on? What happened? The thick flames had obstructed their vision. They were not able to see what happened. The two martial saints looked at each other then they quickly chased in the direction Xiao Chen retreated. By the time the two of them began the chase, they only saw a figure flying through the sky. Zhang He said in disbelief, could it be a martial king expert? Zhou Hongyu's face turned ashen and he shook his head, he definitely is not, I can feel his aura is even weaker than that of a martial grand master. It must be a flying martial technique. Damn it, after spending all that effort, tiring ourselves out, we ended up letting someone else benefit. The two of them felt extremely regretful. If they had not been so suspicious of each other, the golden holy beast would not have been snatched away. Xiao Chen only stopped after he used the gravity spell to fly far away. He extended out his spiritual sense to ensure there was no one around before revealing an expression of maniacal joy. To think I managed to obtain such a big advantage. The two martial saints can only blame themselves. There was a happy smile on Xiao Chen's face as he took the golden lion out from the universe ring. After carefully observing it, he discovered the fur on the belly of the golden lion had turned completely white. Looking at the size of its body, it would be a juvenile spirit beast like Xiao Bai, or else, it would not have been easily killed by them. Legend has it that the golden holy beasts were able to become rank 8 spirit beasts at the minimum. It was equivalent to a human martial sage. Xiao Chen did not hesitate and directly cut off the horn of the golden lion. Then he collected its blood. Legend says that this golden blood could be consumed directly and would greatly boost a person's cultivation. Xiao Chen managed to collect a total of eight bottles of golden blood. Then he began to dissect it, extracting a golden spirit core. The golden spirit core gave off a faint radiance. A golden gas which could be seen with the naked eye was being emitted. A denser spiritual energy actually leaked out from it, like an unending stream of spring water. What a terrifying energy, even the amount that leaked out was already so much, Xiao Chen thought in astonishment. If he were to absorb it all, it would be a huge amount. Xiao Chen immediately did as he thought. He placed the spirit core in his hand and sat down cross-legged. He then entered into a state of cultivation. Hu Kai. That golden spiritual energy was like a mist as it was directly sucked into Xiao Chen's mouth and nose. A pure and mighty spiritual energy gushed in like a rushing river. Xiao Chen circulated the purple thunder divine incantation and slowly digested the pure spiritual energy. The dense mist-like golden spiritual energy flowed out for two hours before it stopped. Crack. There was a crunch and the golden spirit core cracked and turned into dust. When the wind blew, it completely disappeared. Xiao Chen opened his eyes and there was a piercing purple glow coming from them. After the purple glow flickered for some time, it slowly disappeared. Every time Xiao Chen advanced in his cultivation, this purple glow would appear. Xiao Chen was not able to understand what it was, even the compendium of cultivation did not talk about it. Recollecting his thoughts, Xiao Chen could not afford to think about this now. He carefully inspected his body and checked the energy contained in his martial spirit. He had advanced to superior grade martial master. The golden holy beast spirit core was an unexpected treasure. No wonder this rare bloodline would be able to cause two martial saints to fight till they were almost unable to continue to Beast King Valley. Xiao Chen composed himself and stretched his arms and legs. Then he rushed rapidly towards the inner reaches of Savage Forest. He executed the Azure Dragon Cloud Soaring Art to its extreme and a dragon shadow appeared behind him. He was rapidly advancing on the ground. After half an hour, Xiao Chen arrived at a large river. Once he crossed this river, he would enter the inner reaches of Savage Forest. However, at this moment, there was a large group of people gathered at the riverbank, cursing loudly and unceasingly. Xiao Chen was curious, and when he went past the crowd, he understood why this group of people was cursing. The only wooden bridge connecting the outer periphery and inner reaches of Savage Forest had been destroyed by someone. The river was a couple of hundred meters wide and there were aquatic monsters in the water. The group of people on this side of the river were all obstructed from crossing over. Ah! A miserable cry came from the river water. Two cultivators who tried to swim across were swallowed by a strange black fish. After a short moment, 
Large patches of blood pervaded the surface of the river. Xiao Chen felt it was unfortunate. He had seen what happened, these two cultivators were the ones who mocked him earlier. The scrap metal in Beast King Valley could be sold for hundreds of thousands silver tails. Unfortunately, they did not even manage to make it to the inner reaches of Savage Forest and died in the river. Tom. A martial grand master suddenly leapt up above the river, high into the air. Then he fell to the water surface. He pushed off gently with his feet and his body rose up again. He was now only 30 meters away from the opposite shore. All he had to do was leap off the river surface once more, and he would land safely on the other side of the river. Thinking of this, the martial grand master revealed a joyful smile. Hu Kai. Just as he landed on the water the second time, a black-colored tentacle shot out from the water and wrapped around his feet. The martial grand master did not panic, he reacted quickly and chopped at it with his saber. The black tentacle immediately tore apart. Poo, poo, poo. The martial grand master regained his freedom and soared into the air once again. However, before he managed to rise very high, countless black tentacles suddenly shot out from the water and pulled him in. A cry of fear came from his mouth. He did his best to struggle, but the tentacle still dragged him down into the water. Anyone nearby would have heard a chewing sound. Ji Yu Nong. Ji Yu Nong. Bubbles continuously broke the surface of the water, and pools of blood appeared. Many could vaguely see a black aquatic monster swimming under the water's surface, its back covered in tentacles of all sizes. I wonder which bastard broke the bridge. We are finished, there are so many terrifying fishes. No one could make their way across. Those who wish to cross over have to be at least a martial saint. Otherwise, they will not be able to leap across the river in one go and will be captured by the tentacles of that terrifying creature. Seeing another martial grand master perish, the crowd on the riverbank no longer dared to attempt crossing the river. They all cursed the person who broke the bridge. There was the sound of rushing footsteps as Zhang He and Zhou Hongyu led a large group of cultivators over. Xiao Chen quickly hid amongst the crowd. When the two of them saw that the bridge was broken, they did not hesitate and shouted out loudly, leaping across the river. They leapt high into the air, and when they landed on the water, they caused the water to splash up high into the air. Poo, poo, poo. Numerous tentacles flew into the air towards the two of them. The two each released many sword lights and turned the tentacles into fragments. After a short moment, under the gaze of the crowd, the two of them landed firmly on the other side. Then they quickly rushed towards the direction of Beast King Valley. Damn it. Those two bastards. They said they would bring us to Beast King Valley. To think that they betrayed us as, the cultivators that followed them cursed out loudly when they saw the situation. The people beside them said in a bad mood, what are you cursing for? You are not a person of good character anyway. You were just using each other earlier, there is nothing much to say about that. Who are you scolding? Repeat that if you dare. Because they were not able to cross the river, the cultivators on the riverbank were all in a bad mood. After some disagreeable words were exchanged, it would turn into a fight. Xiao Chen could not be bothered about this group of people. When he was about to cross the river, a black dot suddenly headed over rapidly from upstream. It was strangely fast and appeared in front of everyone very quickly. The black dot was actually a black ship. The people on the riverbank were astonished and stopped quarreling. They felt that it was incredibly strange. There were many aquatic monsters in there. Why did a boat appear from upstream? Where did this boat came from? Dear customers of Liu Shang Pavilion, new and old, the fat lord is here to rescue everyone once again, a familiar figure appeared on the bow of the boat. Jin Dabao was standing there holding a golden folding fan, as he smiled so wide that his eyes turned to slits. Bang! The black boat docked at the river side. The group of cultivators were wild with joy as they rushed to the boat, as though they had seen their savior. Kai! Kai. Suddenly, arrows were fired from the bow of the boat. The crowd below were startled and retreated backward to avoid them. The fatty smiled and said, those who wish to cross the river have to pay 10,000 silver tails, or else forget about it. After all, this fat lord is a businessman. 10,000 silver tails. This is daylight robbery. It is just a ride across the river. That's right, even robbers are not that ruthless. 
Although the people below were vicious with their words, they still paid up in the end and boarded the boat. Xiao Chen counted the number of people, there were about three or four hundred people here. The fatty had earned another four million on this trip. Xiao Chen had long expected that the fatty would rush over to Savage Forest as well, but he did not expect to meet him here. Although it was unexpected, it was within reason. Xiao Chen even suspected that the bridge was purposely broken by the fatty. In the blink of an eye, the people on the riverbank all boarded the boat. The fatty stood at the bow and looked at Xiao Chen. He said as he smiled, Brother Xiao, come up. I know you are broke already, but Brother Fatty will give you a free ride. Xiao Chen did not say anything and leapt up into the air, landing on the bow of the boat. The boat immediately weighed in the anchor and turned around. The boat headed across the river rapidly, creating huge splashes as its huge body sliced across the water. The terrifying creatures in the water all avoided the boat. Jin Dabao made his way through the crowd then lead Xiao Chen to the ship's hold. He said in a cocky manner, What do you think, Brother Xiao? My boat is pretty good right? Xiao Chen smiled faintly, although it is not a king-grade secret treasure like the Black Royal Warship, it is at least a spirit-grade secret treasure. The fatty was startled, but he smiled and said, Brother Xiao has sharp eyes. How about I bring you directly to Beast King Valley? Given our friendship, I will not charge you anything. Xiao Chen thought, I have indeed guessed correctly. When he saw the boat floating down from upstream, he had already guessed it. Aside from flying in from the sky and landing upstream, there were no other ways to enter the water. Can you give me a look at the control room? Xiao Chen asked. He really wanted to know if this legendary secret treasure was the same thing as the magic treasure recorded in the Compendium of Cultivation. After Xiao Chen said that, he took out a bottle of the Golden Holy Beast blood from the universe ring and placed it in front of the fatty. Jin Dabao opened it up and sniffed it before smiling brightly, sure, no problem at all. However, time is limited, don't waste too much time. The fatty sent out some energy from his hands and, after it struck some unknown place, there was a boom and a hole appeared in the hold of the boat. Xiao Chen and the fatty immediately fell into it. Xiao Chen turned his body gracefully in midair and landed firmly. He immediately felt a familiar aura. He quickly closed his eyes and extended out his spiritual sense. A huge formation appeared in Xiao Chen's mind. He could see every bit of the formations that were hidden throughout the boat, they were giving off a green radiance. Xiao Chen opened his eyes and followed the fatty to the center of the formation. Then, he finally saw the secret of the secret treasure's core. There were many spirit stones scattered around the formation center, and there were several old people continuously directing the flow of the spiritual energy. This secret treasure is indeed a magic treasure, Xiao Chen thought in shock. Just that the people now have forgotten how to operate the secret treasure and actually have to use spirit stones to do so. Brother Xiao, let's go. We have already arrived. Xiao Chen was very engrossed in it when he was interrupted by the fatty. He had discovered not even 10% of the true capabilities of how this secret treasure was utilized. It had turned into a simple transportation tool, he felt that it was a pity. The two of them returned to the hold of the boat. The group of cultivators saw the shore, and they quickly jumped down. After everyone jumped off, the fatty waved his hand and the boat immediately soared into the air, heading towards Beast King Valley. Damn, that is actually a secret treasure. This fatty is too horrible. After taking 10,000 silver tails from us, why doesn't he send us all the way to Beast King Valley? All the people below cursed out when they saw the situation. High in the sky, the fatty stood at the bow. He felt extremely pleased with himself. He stretched his two hands apart and enjoyed the gentle breeze, the feeling of soaring through the sky is great. Who? Just at that moment, a huge golden ship flew past its side rapidly. It brushed by the fatty's boat, causing a violent wind to kick up, the fatty nearly fell off the boat. Dong. Just as the fatty was about to curse out, a dark shadow suddenly flew by above them. A wine glass fell from above and landed on the fatty's head. TL notes, a Chinese wine glass looks different from a western one. It looks similar to the Chinese teacup, but smaller. Xiao Chen looked towards the warship that flew over them and saw Wa Yunfei. The Hua clan's king-grade secret treasure had shown up. 
Damn it. One day when this fat lord gets his hands on an emperor grade secret weapon, I will crush you to death. Damn it. The fatty cursed as he massaged his head. Just at that moment, Xiao Chen noticed a figure standing on a huge tree. He felt that the person looked familiar. He extended out his spiritual sense and discovered that he was Chu Chaoyun. He had a sword behind him, and his long hair fluttered about. He stood on a tree branch and looked into the distance. Xiao Chen felt that it was strange. The noble clans all brought a number of people, and they even brought out king-grade secret treasures. The Misty Sword sect was the strongest power in Dongming province, but they only sent one Chu Chaoyun. Furthermore, he was alone. This did not make sense. Suddenly Chu Chaoyun turned his head and smiled at Xiao Chen, as though he was greeting him. Xiao Chen was startled, could he have seen me? I only sent my spiritual sense down, even a martial saint would not be able to sense that. A sword of light suddenly appeared below Chu Chaoyun's feet, carrying him into the sky. He rapidly headed toward the fatty's boat. Wang. The sword of light disappeared, and Chu Chaoyun landed firmly on the bow of the boat. Xiao Chen felt a dangerous aura, and he took three steps back. Chu Chaoyun smiled faintly and jumped down from the bow. He said to Xiao Chen, Brother Xiao, there is no need to be anxious. I am just here to hitch a ride. The fatty stood at the side and smiled coldly, whose boat do you think this is? You think you can do anything you want. The fatty had just suffered twice in a row earlier and was currently in a bad mood. When he saw Chu Chaoyun boarding uninvited, he started to take it out on him. Chu Chaoyun just smiled faintly and walked over to the fatty's side. He handed over a pile of gold tails banknotes and said, the people of your Jin clan are all businessmen. I'm sure you will accept this business deal that occurred without any effort. Jin Dabao, who normally behaved like he had seen his father when he saw money, still did not change his expression. He simply kept the banknotes with a snort. Xiao Chen was astonished and thought to himself, Fatty Jin must have suffered some disadvantage from Chu Chaoyun before. Or else he would not have made such an expression. They flew toward Beast King Valley in silence. Chu Chaoyun appeared to be very peaceful during the journey. Occasionally, he would engage Xiao Chen in conversation, making people feel relaxed. However, the more relaxed he felt, the more Xiao Chen felt something was wrong. He did not know why, but the feeling Chu Chaoyun gave him was much more dangerous than Wa Yunfei. Boom. Boom. Suddenly, there were explosive sounds coming from the sky in front of them. The three people at the bow looked to the front and saw the Gai Marquise's golden battleship fighting with a group of huge birds. The huge birds each had three heads, and when they extended out their wings, they had a wingspan of tens of meters. Of its three heads, one spat out fire, one poison gas, and one cold air. It was an extremely fierce beast. Flying rank 5 spirit beast spirit beast, three-headed bird, it is going to be problematic, are we able to avoid them? Chu Chaoyun asked indifferently as he took a clear look. The fatty's expression turned grave. After a long time, he said, let's descend, there are too many. I did not expect us to meet this kind of pack mentality spirit beast while we were still quite a few kilometers away from our destination. Chu Chaoyun frowned slightly, it's too late. Just as he spoke, four three-headed birds headed over to them rapidly. When the three huge birds flew next to each other, they were like a dark cloud, covering the sky. Bang! 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 Fire, ice, and poison rained down on the boat. A faint jade green halo appeared around the boat, deflecting all these attacks. The fat on Fatty Jin's face wobbled as he cursed, I'm going to suffer a loss this time, spending so many spirit stones before I have even arrived at Beast King Valley. Xiao Chen thought for a while before saying, Dabao, it is best we part from each other. I will help you lure one away. Xiao Chen kept feeling some pressure when he was with Chu Chaoyun. Now that he had the opportunity to leave, he did not hesitate. Executing the gravity spell, Xiao Chen soared up and left the ground. He went past the jade green halo and flew directly out. Immediately, the three-headed birds focused their attacks on him, flames, ice, and poison. Xiao Chen executed the heavenly lightning shield and blocked all these attacked. He flew rapidly forward and all four three-headed birds chased after him. Damn, I only wanted to lure one away, not all of them, Xiao Chen said, depressed. 
The attacks of the four three-headed birds struck the heavenly lightning shield unceasingly. Soon, countless cracks extended throughout the heavenly lightning shield. Xiao Chen's body swayed in mid-air, like a leaf being blown around in a violent storm. The fatty stood on the bow and saw Xiao Chen had lured away the four three-headed birds. His expression finally became happy and he shouted loudly, Brother Xiao Chen, you are too kind. Ding. An indistinct zither sound came from the hold. Three sound waves, which could be seen with the naked eye, flew into the sky towards the three-headed birds like sharp swords. Fu Si. Three of the three-headed birds cried out miserably. A severe injury appeared on each of their bodies. Blood sprayed and fell from the sky. When the fatty saw the three-headed birds turn around and return, the smile on his face froze. A strange look flashed in Chu Chaoyun's eyes as he looked at the hold in shock, I did not expect Miss Xiao Xiao to be here as well. After three of the three-headed birds left, the pressure on Xiao Chen was significantly reduced. He executed the lightning evasion and completely evaded the attacks of the final three-headed bird. After checking the direction, Xiao Chen continued to fly towards Beast King Valley. He took a quick glance at the distant golden battleship and saw a sight which would cause one to shudder. There was a person in gold armor. A blinding resplendent golden light radiated from his body, he held a 3 meter long gold long spear in his right hand and a 1 meter long red short spear in his left. He was leaping from one three-headed bird to another. When he made a sweep with his long spear, it was like a god of war doing so. Fighting everything nearby, blood sprayed everywhere. One by one, he took down the three-headed birds. Is this the Gaiyi Marquis, Ying Xiao? The number one youth after Ying Yu. Xiao Chen pondered as he watched with a gaze filled with shock. The strength of a three-headed bird was equivalent to that of a peak martial grand master. However, they were slaughtered by Ying Xiao without a chance to resist. It could be seen how terrifying his strength was. The Gaiyi Marquis seemed to have sensed Xiao Chen's gaze. He turned his head and settled a lightning-like gaze on Xiao Chen. Xiao Chen did not want to get involved in any trouble so he quickly flew off. After half an hour of flying, Xiao Chen could already see the silhouette of Beast King Valley from the sky. As he did not wish to attract too much attention, he slowly descended. He saw the Duanmu clan's profound ice palace, the Ji clan's black royal warship, and the Hua clan's battleship all stopped in the sky. They were being held up by some flying spirit beasts. After Xiao Chen landed, he immediately heard a miserable cry from his surrounding. He turned his head around and saw a cultivator being torn apart by a spirit beast and swallowed into its stomach. The further he walked in, the more terrifying the spirit beasts of the inner reaches of Savage Forest were. Xiao Chen carefully leapt up onto a big tree. He completely hid his aura and waited for that spirit beast to pass before jumping down slowly. Now that he was here, every step he took was dangerous. If he was not attentive, he would be killed by spirit beasts. Xiao Chen did not dare be careless. He released his spiritual sense as he slowly headed to Beast King Valley. Because the Beast King Valley was the final resting place for Beast Kings, there would not be any spirit beasts going near the entrance to Beast King Valley. Xiao Chen saw a large group of cultivators gathering at the valley entrance, they were not anxious to enter. I finally arrived. This trip was very disastrous. I've seen many martial saints die miserably. How terrifying. Indeed, the Zhonghi that led us earlier was actually swallowed by an ancient savage beast. Why are the people of the noble clans not coming down yet? The people who went in earlier discovered a few beast kings that had not died yet. Before they could flee, they were destroyed. Fortunately, I was quick-witted. I only took a look from a distance or I would not have been able to escape as well. There was a golden lion king that was as big as a small hill. When swords or sabers struck it, its skin did not even break. Xiao Chen blended into the crowd, he finally understood why this group of cultivators was stuck at the valley entrance. So it was because there were beast kings that were not dead yet in the beast king valley. Furthermore, there was more than one. Bang! The Gaii Marquis's golden battleship was the first to arrive. A group of warriors wearing gold armor jumped off the battleship and landed on the ground. The Gaii Marquis rode a dragon-scaled horse and leapt off the battleship, leading his warriors into the valley. The Gaii Marquis is here, and those following behind him are the Golden Guards. 
each of one of them is a peak martial grand master. Furthermore, they all have experience on the battlefield. There is no need to fear this time. Xiao Chen extended his spiritual sense to check out this group of people. He could see a black aura lingering above their heads. This was the baleful aura that formed when a person has killed too much. Bang! The Ji Clan's Black Royal Warship finally arrived. Ji Chengkong led a group of Ji Clan cultivators and left off the bow of the warship. After a while, the martial saints of the Zhang Clan also jumped down. The Ji Clan's people have arrived, too. Damn, that is a lot of martial saints. Even the six martial saints of the Zhang Clan all came, too. They could possibly be the strongest power amongst the noble clans. Bang! Bang! The Hua Clan and Duanmu Clan had also finally dealt with the spirit beasts holding them up. All of them led their men over and entered. Now, all the people of the noble clans had arrived. The cultivators at the entrance could no longer wait and they followed them in, hoping to be able to pick up some scraps. Xiao Chen had noticed there were strong cultivators hiding, not rushing to enter. Xiao Chen was not in a rush either and did not follow them in. He locked his spiritual sense on the Ji clan's people. He had actually seen Zhang Muang amongst them and could not help but pay special attention to him. After four hours, almost all the cultivators had gone in. Xiao Chen no longer wished to wait anymore. He sensed the Ji clan killing off a beast king past its prime via his spiritual sense. Brother Xiao Chen, wait for me. Let's gather together, suddenly, the fatty's voice came from behind him. Xiao Chen turned around to take a look and saw Jin Dabao beaming as he shouted out. Su Xiao Xiao was carrying her zither beside him. Her pure face also revealed a faint smile. When Xiao Chen saw Su Xiao Xiao, he was mildly surprised. He thought back to earlier when he was being attacked by four three-headed bird, he seemed to have heard the sound of a zither. Seems like Su Xiao Xiao had taken action. Many thanks to Miss Xiao Xiao for assisting earlier, Xiao Chen thanked Su Xiao Xiao when they walked over. Su Xiao Xiao smiled tactfully, a mischievous expression appeared on her pretty face, isn't young Master Xiao afraid of my low intelligence? Xiao Chen felt ashamed in his heart, this girl indeed holds a grudge. I had already forgotten what I said back then. Thinking about it carefully, Su Xiao Xiao actually was thinking of him. Yan Chenian was not weak, it was just that he had suffered from a huge disadvantage from the start because of his carelessness and was attacked continuously by Xiao Chen. The most important thing was Su Xiao Xiao did not expect Xiao Chen to attack him in front of her. Fatty Jin held a golden folding fan and smiled, let's go in quickly. This fat lord has to recoup all of his loses. Xiao Chen did not see Chu Chaoyun and felt that it was strange. Feeling curious, he asked, where is Chu Chaoyun? The fatty replied, let's go quickly, don't mention that fellow anymore. He left the moment we arrived. The three of them entered the valley entrance and after walking for a short distance, the huge Beast King Valley appeared before their eyes. Though Beast King Valley was a valley, it was the size of a small city. Even if Xiao Chen extended his spiritual sense to its maximum, he would not reach the end of it. The group headed further in. There were many huge bones to the side. When the fatty saw these, his eyes lit up. These were the bones of the high-ranked beast kings. After thousands of years, there was no sign of damage to them. Unfortunately, these skeletons were complete. They were not able to break them with swords or sabers. They were not able to move the entire thing either. Despite seeing these treasures, they were not able to obtain them. A faint pressure from the towering skeletons was felt from a distant. Even though a thousand years passed, these were once beast kings. The aura they had left still existed. The fatty beat his chest in sorrow and said, what a pity. There are so many skeletons here. If I could just move one of them back, even if I do not obtain anything from the remnants, this trip would be worth it. Xiao Chen did not understand and asked, are these bones very valuable? Why do I not feel so? Even if these bones are very hard and can be used as weapons, there are no tools which can shape them. The fatty glanced at Su Xiao Xiao and smiled faintly, do not look down on the heavenly craft manner's methods. Out of the ten great spirit weapons they made, three of them were made using thousand years old beast king bones. Furthermore, weapons made from pure bones are extremely helpful to people who practice certain martial techniques. Aside from forging weapons, they are very useful for refining pills. 
If I find a smaller skeleton, this fat lord will move it back personally. Spirit weapons made from bones, this was completely out of Xiao Chen's expectations. The three of them walked walk forward and saw a cultivator groping around a skeleton. I'm rich. I have picked up a piece of Beast King bone, that cultivator exclaimed out in joy. The surrounding people immediately rushed to take a look. After the people beside him took a look, he said, it is genuine, it is the beast bone of a beast king that is at least rank 8. What a terrifying spiritual pressure. I could feel it even quite a few meters away. Furthermore, it is just a fragment. Who see? Before the smile could fade from the cultivator who obtained the beast bone, he was hacked into two halves. The person who attacked took the beast bone and ran off frantically. How could the people who saw the situation let it go? They all chased after the person in succession. It instantly became a bitter battle. Finally, an independent martial saint who was passing by snatched the beast bone and killed ten odd people. After that, no one dared to continue to buy for it. The fatty shook his head and sighed, how dumb does a person have to be to shout it out so loudly to everyone? The treasure is on me. Come snatch it from me. Xiao Chen felt regret before he even found the entrance to the remnant, the killing in the valley was already so horrifying. Once they entered the remnant, how much worse would it be? Before the three of them walked much further, they saw the Ji clan. They were dismantling the beast king they had just killed. The fatty said in astonishment, they actually killed a beast king that was still alive. The Ji clan struck it rich this time. Just the blood alone can be sold for millions. The value of the spirit core is even higher. Xiao Chen was not overly surprised, before he entered the valley, he has locked his spiritual sense on the Ji clan. He had seen for himself how they killed the Beast King. Of which, Ji Chengkong's final resplendent sword which tore through the sky left a very deep impression on Xiao Chen. That martial technique should have already reached the level of Earth ranked. Let's change our direction, the Zhang clan is in front. It is not convenient for me to get near, Xiao Chen told the fatty when he saw Zhang Muang in the crowd in front. The fatty felt it was unfortunate, I wonder if it is possible to go and exchange some things with them. Never mind, let's go. The three of them changed their direction and continued heading further in. Suddenly a spot of brilliant light exploded in the sky, an incredibly resplendent meteor descended. It landed with a loud boom in front of the three of them. Countless dust particles were kicked up. After the dust cloud faded, Ji Chengkong appeared in front of the three of them. His long black hair fluttered in the wind, and an abstruse starry sky seemed to be reflected in his eyes. He used his strong aura to pressure the three of them as he slowly walked to their front. The group of three all felt a pressure and could not help but take a step back. They looked cautiously and saw Ji Chengkong suddenly appear. Ji Chengkong's face was as smooth as jade, he looked extremely handsome. He stretched out his finger and pointed at Xiao Chen, saying indifferently, you, stay. The both of you may leave. His voice was not loud and he spoke at a moderate speed. There was no trace of killing intent. However, there was a quality in his tone that would cause one to obey, one that would not allow orders to be questioned. Pu, Pu, Pu. Behind, Zhang Muang led a group of Zhang clan martial grandmasters over. He stood beside Ji Chengkong and said, Cousin, hold the damn fatty back as well. Who? Jin Dabao laughed coldly. The crowd only heard the sound of wind. Suddenly, the fatty was holding Zhang Muang in his hands. All this happened in an instant. The crowd even thought that Zhang Muang had run over himself. Pa! Jin Dabao held onto Zhang Muang's collar with his left hand and raised him up. Then he used his right hand to slap him on the face with his golden folding fan. Although this lord is fat, that is not something anyone can say, especially people like you. Pa, pa. After the fatty said that, he slapped Zhang Muang ruthlessly another two times. Zhang Muang's right cheek immediately swelled up, blood leaked out the corner of his mouth. Damn fatty. Let me go quickly, or I will make you live a life worse than death. I will. Ah. Before Zhang Muang could finish speaking, the fatty flung him onto the ground violently. A fat and thick leg stomped on his face ruthlessly a few times. Seeing Ji Chengkong had stopped a few people, the cultivators from the side came rushing over. When they saw the fatty flipping out, they all felt shocked in their heart. 
The fatty is flipping out, how tyrannical. He does not even care about Ji Chang Kong and trampled his cousin underneath his feet. Haha, ha, who is Zhang Muang? Even Zaihe province's Yan Chenian's hair was completely plucked out by him. There is nothing he would not do. Looks like the rumors are true. I wonder if Zhang Muang will have his hair plucked out as well. If that happens, it would be very funny. The words of the crowd reached the fatty's ears. The fatty felt very depressed, he could not even muster up the mood to commit suicide for having such a bad reputation. He really wanted to dispel this rumor. However, it was obvious now was not the time to do so. Did you see the fatty's expression? Seems like he admitted to it. Damn, how cruel. You still dare to call him fatty. Did you not hear him? He will pluck all the hair off anyone who dares to call him a fatty. You are done for, he must have heard you since you said it is such a loud voice. You better think of a solution to save yourself quickly. Damn it, I shall speak of it no longer. If I keep talking, I will really be done for. When Xiao Chen and Su Xiao Xiao heard the fatty, they both unconsciously took three steps back, putting a certain distance between them and the fatty. Jin Dabao had a wronged expression on him, he no longer had the tyrannical air he had earlier. He said bitterly, can't you guys show some loyalty? Jin Dabao, let my son go quickly. There are no grudges between you and I I will not ask for that street on the east side of the city back, and I will not make things difficult for you either, the Zhang clan head quickly rushed over and said in a loud voice when he saw Jin Dabao trampling on Zhang Muang. When Zhang Muang heard Zhang Mingxuan's voice, he was extremely agitated. He struggled while his head was being stomped on by the fatty before finally managing open his mouth and take a deep breath. He shouted out, Father, save me. This fatty is a pervert. Yan Chenian was. The fatty felt extremely infuriated when he heard Zhang Muang's words. He kicked him into the air and used his palm as a knife, striking him unconscious. Zhang Mingxun felt very anxious and rushed forward. The fatty grabbed Zhang Muang's neck and glared at Zhang Mingxun ruthlessly. Zhang Mingxun felt a killing intent in his gaze and hurriedly stopped. Boom. Ji Chengkong, who had been silent all while, suddenly made his move. A black human figure suddenly appeared in front of the fatty. That figure used his fingers as a sword and stabbed it towards Jin Dabao's eyes. Who? Jin Dabao opened up the golden folding fan in his hand and a golden figure appeared behind him. That figure was dressed like a scholar and was holding a golden folding fan in his hand as well. The instant the scholar appeared, the might of an ancient sage spread throughout the area. All the surrounding cultivators felt a righteous aura. Boom. The scholar waved his hand gently and the folding fan opened up. It gave off an energy wave and the black figure in front of the fatty immediately flew backward and exploded, becoming a blood shadow. That's the weapon of an ancient sage. To think that a shadow of the ancient sage remained in it. How terrifying. Ji Chengfeng's astral incarnation was actually blown apart by a gentle wave of the folding fan. Ji Cheng Kong's expression did not change, he just felt some shock in his heart. He did not expect this tackily dressed vulgar fatty to be covered in strange treasures. From the looks of his attire, it was very possible the gorgeous ornaments on him could be strange treasures as well. The fatty heaved Zhang Muang onto his body and said to Ji Cheng Kong, I don't care about your grudge with Xiao Chen. After we leave Beast King Valley, I don't care what you do. However, in Beast King Valley, he is my companion. I will hang on to Zhang Muang for a period of time, first. After we leave Beast King Valley, I will return him to you. After Jin Dabao spoke, he led Xiao Chen and Su Xiao Xiao off in another direction. When Zhang Mingxun and the others saw Xiao Chen leaving, they felt very angry. However, there was nothing they could do. If they wanted to forcibly attack him, Zhang Muang would be immediately killed. This fatty is really tyrannical. He is not even afraid of Ji Chang Kong. It is unfortunate for the Zhang clan. Their only child is going to suffer at the hands of this fatty. Of all the people they chose to antagonize, they chose this fatty. Be quiet. That fatty is still nearby, lower your voice. When they arrived at a desolate area of Beast King Valley, Jin Dabao threw Zhang Muang onto the ground and started to pat him all over the body. Xiao Chen and Su Xiao Xiao remembered the rumor they heard and quietly stepped away to a side. 
After a long time, the fatty cursed, poor bastard, he has nothing at all. Seeing Xiao Chen and Su Xiao Xiao move to the side, the fatty quickly picked up Zhang Muang and chased after them. He explained, can you guys not give me that look? That is just a rumor. Xiao Chen smiled faintly, I know, it is just the difference in intelligence. They are just not able to understand you. That's the spirit, the fatty said joyfully, but after a while, he felt something was not right, why do I feel that you are actually mocking me? Xiao Chen cupped his ears and listened for a while before saying, stop messing around, I hear the sound of fighting. It must be one of the noble clans killing a beast king. Let's see if we can take advantage of the situation. The fatty looked in the direction Xiao Chen pointed and listened as well, why do I not hear it? Never mind, I believe you. However, how are we going to deal with this person I'm carrying? Xiao Chen thought for a while before placing the universe ring on Zhang Muang's body. With a thought from Xiao Chen, Zhang Muang was stored in the universe ring. Jin Dabao and Su Xiaoxiao were astonished to see that happen. The fatty asked in surprise, what kind of spatial ring is this? How come it can even store a live human? Xiao Chen did not explain and just said, just treat it as a secret treasure. Xiao Chen led the way forward, there were many battles going on along the way. As long as a fragment of Beast King Bone was found, there would be a great fight over it. The fatty said in a depressed manner, how come everyone is picking up Beast King Bones but I am not able to obtain any? Xiao Chen smiled but did not say anything. He had extended out his spiritual sense all the while and noticed that the fatty had stepped on at least three pieces already but did not notice. Bang! Bang! The three of them finally saw the origins of the battling sounds. The Gai Marquis, Ying Xiao, was leading his 200 golden guards and fighting against a golden lion king about the size of a small mountain. Xiao Chen remembered the young of the golden lion he met in the outer periphery of Savage Forest. Just the spirit core of its young already contained enough spiritual energy for Xiao Chen to raise his cultivation by one grade. The spiritual energy contained in the mountain-sized golden lion king would be at a very horrifying level. The fatty's eyes lit up as he said excitedly, it's a golden holy beast. It's really a golden holy beast. Su Xiao Xiao interrupted, stop dreaming so much, the 200 golden guards of the Gai Marquis are all martial grand masters. Furthermore, they are all baptized in the blood of the battlefield. The most important thing is their equipment, they all have earth-ranked battle armor and superior grade profound ranked spirit weapons forged in heavenly craft manner. Even though they did not bring any martial saints, it could be said that they are likely to be the strongest force here. Xiao Chen was incredibly astonished, there are 200 people using elite battle armors and spirit weapons, that is a terrifying number. The battle armor Yan Chenian was wearing was only an earth-ranked battle armor. Furthermore, the only reason why he possessed one was because he was the successor of a noble clan. To think that these 200 golden guards are actually all equipped with earth-ranked battle armor. The thought of this would cause one to shiver even though it was not cold. Could it be that the Gai Marquis is unrivaled in Beast King Valley with just these 200 golden guards? Ha! Just as the three of them were speaking, the Gai Marquis, Ying Xiao, suddenly shouted out. He rode on his dragon-scaled horse and rushed towards the Golden Lion King. Dust was kicked up from the ground, and he moved with the horse as one, moving as fast as lightning as he arrived at his destination in an instant. In the next moment, he arrived before the Golden Lion King. The three-meter-long golden long spear carried a huge force behind it as he struck the chest of the Golden Lion King violently. Boom! The three of them got to see an extremely magnificent scene. The Gai Marquis was only about slightly more than two meters tall when he rode on the dragon-scaled horse. In front of the mountain-sized Golden Lion King, he looked pathetically tiny. However, he was able to knock the Golden Lion King flying back. The force behind the spear was very terrifying. How great the force must have been in order to knock a mountain-sized Golden Lion King backward. Bang! The Golden Lion King landed heavily on the ground, resulting in a loud crash, the ground trembled. Before it stood up, the 200 Golden Guards immediately surrounded it. Xiao Chen felt that it was unfortunate. He knew that in front of such absolute power, there would be no opportunities for him. He quickly led the group away and continued to head further in. Before he left, 
he felt the lightning-like gaze of the Gai Marquis on him once again. After they walked for a long time, the fatty complained, this Beast King Valley is too big. If we keep going like this, how many months would it take us to find the ancient remnant entrance? Rumble. Just as the fatty said that a continuous rumbling sound came from the side of a mountain in the distance. Suddenly, a cold wind swept through the valley, causing everyone to feel a chill in their hearts. It must be the ancient remnant opening. It's the Duanmu clan. I saw them heading in that direction. Everyone immediately stopped what they were doing and looked towards that mountainside in the distance. Ta, ta, ta. The Gai Marquis, riding on his dragon-scaled horse, led his 200 golden guards and dashed by the group of three. They actually gave up on the golden lion king they almost subdued and made a beeline for the mountainside. Everyone's expression seemed to have become excited as they all made a mad dash for the mountainside. They were all afraid that if they were one step too late, all the treasures of the ancient remnant would be taken away by others. Xiao Chen thought for a bit before turning back, let's go check out the Golden Lion King, there is no need to rush for the ancient remnant. The fatty chuckled, exactly what I was thinking. The three of them returned to the place where the Golden Lion King was. They saw tens of cultivators who had the same thought as them. They were currently surrounding the soon-to-die Golden Lion King. Many cultivators struck their weapons on the Golden Lion King's body, metallic clangs kept ringing out. The skin of the Golden Lion King was like metal, not a single mark was even left. Hu Kai. A stream of golden flame suddenly descended from the sky. The cultivators on the ground were all roasted into piles of ash. They did not even have the ability to resist. When the remaining cultivators saw this, they all gave up and left. Xiao Chen now sort of understood why the Gai Marquis gave up. Although this Golden Lion King was about to die and its movements were sluggish, its skin was like metal. Ordinary weapons had no way of causing damage to it. When Jin Dabao saw the situation, he frowned, why is this fellow's skin so thick, how is one going to make a move? Xiao Chen analyzed the situation carefully, this Golden Lion King is about 50 meters tall. Looking at where the Gai Marquis pierced it with his spear, there is a shallow wound there. A small trickle of golden blood is slowly flowing out. Su Xiaoxiao, who had been silent all the while, suddenly said something, there is still a chance. Its life force is rapidly diminishing. Furthermore, it is severely injured. Although the Gai Marquis's group did not manage to pierce its skin, the force behind their spirit weapons had infiltrated its body. Xiao Chen took out the Soul Slayer bow from the Universe Ring and knocked an Essence Light arrow on it. He then drew the bow till it resembled a full moon. The arrow was aimed at the tiny wound on the chest of the Golden Lion King. The arrow gave off a faint radiance, Xiao Chen could feel the horrifying force contained within it. Before, an Essence Light arrow had caused damage to his superior grade profound ranked battle armor. It should not disappoint him today. Wang. The essence light arrow buzzed in the air as it was fired. After an instant, it pierced through the golden lion king's body, causing golden blood to spurt out. Ding, 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 song of nine deaths in yellow springs. Su Xiaoxiao stroked her zither lightly, playing a melody depicting a very powerful and majestic army. The trees and grass in the valley trembled, the sound of wind roared loudly, as though a magnificent army with thousands of men and horses were marching in the valley. Countless spirits of ancient heroes actually appeared behind Su Xiaoxiao. As she played her zither, an army of ancient heroes riding on magnificent horses marched out from the underworld, rushing towards the Golden Lion King. Xiao Chen executed the lightning evasion. He disappeared and reappeared in the sky, catching the essence light arrow he fired in his hand. The lunar shadow saber suddenly appeared in his hand, countless electrical arcs was dancing upon it. Fu Si. Xiao Chen ruthlessly stabbed the Lunar Shadow Saber into the wound the Essence Light Arrow pierced through. A stream of golden blood immediately spurted out and landed on Xiao Chen's face. The electricity in the Lunar Shadow Saber immediately rushed into the Golden Lion King's body. The Golden Lion King cried out painfully as its whole body trembled. A huge force came from its back and Xiao Chen was immediately thrown off. Who? It spat a huge ball of golden flame at Su Xiaoxiao before making a mad dash. 
It was like it was a final burst of life, the final radiance of the setting sun, its speed was incredibly fast. The fatty suddenly opened the golden folding fan and the golden figure appeared once again. He waved the fan vigorously and blew the flames away. The huge army composed of the spirits of ancient heroes brandished their weapon and pierced the body of the Golden Lion King. Everything from the ancient hero spirits went through it, the Golden Lion King was slowed down by a little, as though it lost some of its life force. After all the ancient heroes pierced through the Golden Lion King's body, it stopped completely about two meters away from Su Xiaoxiao. Su Xiaoxiao suddenly stopped playing her zither. The faint music echoing in the valley suddenly turned quiet, even the wind seemed to stop blowing. Dang! A high-pitched musical note suddenly resounded and there was a huge gust of wind. Su Xiaoxiao's clothes and fine black hair fluttered in the wind. A formless force knocked the Golden Lion King flying back. Descending Divine Dragon Chop. Xiao Chen had the image of a dragon behind him as he fell from the sky, breaking through the air like a meteor. He struck the back of the Golden Lion King. There was a loud sound and the Golden Lion King's mountain-sized body crumbled. It cried out painfully. The three of them could feel its life force rapidly depleting. This Golden Lion King that had reached the end of its lifespan was finally going to die. Just as the three of them was about to relax, a figure came flying in from the distance as though he was a sword. The image of a sword pierced through the sky as it pierced into the body of the Golden Lion King where the essence light arrow pierced it earlier with a loud explosive sound. Boom. There was another explosive sound as he pierced out of the other side of the Golden Lion King's body. He held a golden spirit core the size of a basketball in his hand. The Golden Lion King was now dead as a doorknob. Golden blood spurted out from the huge wound like a fountain. It gave off a pitter-patter sound as it fell on the ground of the valley. Chu Chaoyun. Xiao Chen exclaimed in shock when he saw who it was. Chu Chaoyun smiled faintly. The golden spiritual energy that leaked from the golden spirit core in his hand poured out, forming a golden ribbon. When the countless spirit beasts saw the spiritual energy, they rushed over frantically. Chu Chaoyun smiled in satisfaction as he put the golden spirit core away, into his spatial ring. He looked at Xiao Chen and said, I'll borrow this first and return it another day. A sword of light appeared below his feet and he flew off into the distant. Xiao Chen was very pissed in his heart, this Chu Chaoyun is too despicable. After we labored for a long time, he took the most valuable part of the Golden Lion King. After saying he is borrowing it, he just ran away. Xiao Chen did not feel satisfied in his heart. He was very clear on the amount of spiritual energy contained in this spirit core, more so than anyone else. He executed the gravity spell to chase after him. Brother Xiao, don't chase after him. Fatty Jin shouted out from the ground. Damn it. Xiao Chen is not Chu Chaoyun's match, chasing after him is not beneficial. Su Xiaoxiao was slightly pale at the moment. She had exhausted a large amount of essence and vitality by using the Song of Nine Deaths in Yellow Springs. She looked in the direction Xiao Chen left and said, you can stop shouting. Chu Chaoyun will never harm him. The fatty said hatefully, that bastard. This is not the first time he has done this. One day, when he falls into my hands, Chu Chaoyun suddenly stopped when he arrived at a plane in the valley. He slowly landed on the ground and looked at Xiao Chen, who chased after him, Brother Xiao, it is wrong of me to take your spirit core. I will pay this favor back in future. After Xiao Chen landed, he said indifferently, doing as you pleased. Have you even asked me for permission first? Xiao Chen brandished the lunar shadow saber as he stared at Chu Chaoyun. He gave Xiao Chen a dangerous feeling. If Xiao Chen was not feeling extremely angry, he would not have gone against Chu Chaoyun. Chu Chaoyun smiled lightly, in this world, the weak are eaten by the strong. The strong will emerge victorious. Xiao Chen, since I have already, borrowed, it, I don't really need your permission. Lightning evasion. Lightning flashed, and Xiao Chen appeared beside Chu Chaoyun. Executing drawing the saber, the saber flickered with light as it struck towards Chu Chaoyun's chest. Bang! Chu Chaoyun turned his body away slightly and used his finger as a sword. A glow appeared on his finger as it blocked Xiao Chen's saber, creating a resounding sound. After the first move of the rushing thunder saber technique was blocked, there was no way to execute the remaining moves. 
Xiao Chen quickly changed his moves. He shouted lightly, flight on wings, disorder dance of a thousand years. Bang, 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 bang. Xiao Chen rapidly changed positions in mid-air, sending out countless saber lights at Chu Chaoyun. Chu Chaoyun stood on the ground without moving and used his finger as a sword, creating countless sword lights instantly. The flight on wings was originally a martial technique of the Misty Sword sect. Chu Chaoyun was incredibly familiar with it. Although he was astonished when he saw Xiao Chen execute this move, he did not panic. Even though the sword Qi was fired later, it arrived first. It danced on the wind and actually forced Xiao Chen to go on the defensive from the original offensive. The sword lights danced around and fired at the saber lights, dissipating them. The two of them exchanged thousands of moves. The consumption of essence was high. After the execution of Disordered Dance of a Thousand Years was completed, Xiao Chen retreated backward. He executed the Azure Dragon Cloud Soaring Art and leapt up into the sky. Flight on wings, moonbright like fire. A mysterious phenomenon appeared in the sky. A boundless night sky suddenly covered the intense sun. A full moon slowly rose up from the horizon, giving off a gentle glow. Chu Chaoyun frowned slightly, he was astonished as he thought, it is already very surprising he can use our sect's disordered dance of a thousand years. Why is he able to execute it moon bright like fire as well? Chu Chaoyun revealed a cautious expression. He was very clear on the might of moon bright like fire. Before, that sword saint relied on this move to mow down an emperor with his own hands. Even so, he still had a relaxed expression on his face. Xiao Chen had not truly comprehended the true essence of this move, there was a clear flaw with the mysterious phenomena. Displaying one's slight skill before an expert, Chu Chaoyun smiled faintly. Ka Si A. In the pitch dark night, a golden light suddenly blossomed. The sword behind Chu Chaoyun was drawn out by an inch. In a split second, the golden light erupted out. A boundless gold radiated intensely from the inch of the sword that was drawn. Holy weapon. The weapon behind his back was actually a holy weapon. Xiao Chen felt incredibly astonished when he looked at that piercing glow. However, now that the mysterious phenomenon was unleashed, he no longer was able to withdraw, he could only clash head on. Chu Chaoyun stood with his hand behind his back and looked indifferently at Xiao Chen. He snorted coldly and the sword returned to his scabbard. The surging golden light fired into the surroundings, turning into endless sword images. The night scene that covered the sky was now like glass with numerous cracks. After a short moment, there were countless melodious sounds, the night scene completely disappeared. The full moon that had not risen yet turned illusionary and disappeared. Sunlight shined down once again. After the mysterious phenomenon was broken, Xiao Chen vomited a mouthful of blood. His face was incredibly pale. He staggered over and almost fell onto the ground. Mysterious phenomenon being countered or sword moves being countered, these events resulted in the most severe internal injuries for a cultivator. When Zhang He's mysterious phenomenon was broken, he was crippled by Xiao Chen. Chu Chaoyun leapt over lightly and slowly walked to Xiao Chen. He said, I know that you still have some trump cards you have not revealed yet. However, I do not have any intention of killing you, at least not yet. I hope you will not do anything silly. Do not force me to use the move I used on Hua Yunfei. This world is very big, very wonderful. However, you can only enjoy that by living. The person who can laugh last is the true hero. After Chu Chaoyun spoke, a sword of light appeared at his feet. He rode the sword and flew off into the sky, disappearing very quickly. Xiao Chen consumed a blood replenishing pill and Qi returning pill first, and then looked at Chu Chaoyun's retreating figure. Xiao Chen smiled bitterly, this was the first time he was defeated so miserably. His opponent had not even completed his move, he used only half his move to defeat him. Xiao Chen sat down cross-legged and slowly circulated the Purple Thunder Divine Incantation, digesting the medicinal strength in his body. After a long time, when the medicinal strength pervaded his entire body, his injuries were almost completely recovered. Xiao Chen did not hesitate and rushed back. Although the most precious part of the Golden Lion King was taken away, the other parts were valuable as well. Especially the lion horn on its head that had existed for hundreds of years. Hua Yunfei, 
who was in the distance heading to the ancient remnant entrance, suddenly saw Xiao Chen sprinting rapidly. He frowned and said in shock, despite not seeing him for just a short time, he actually advanced to peak martial master. It is too dangerous to leave him alive. Two of you, go bring that person's head back. I will wait for you in the ancient remnant, while Yun Fei told the two peak martial grand masters behind him. He feel that it was unfortunate, he had to explore the ancient remnant and could not do it personally. I obey. The two of them received their orders and dashed in Xiao Chen's direction. Xiao Chen had always kept his spiritual sense extended in Beast King Valley. The moment he noticed Hua Yunfei, he made plans to go around him. However, he did not expect to be noticed before he could do so. Seeing the two martial grand masters behind him, the corner of Xiao Chen's lips curled up in a cold smile. The Azure Dragon Cloud Soaring Art was executed to its extremes and his speed instantly doubled. He threw the two people off in an instant. Where is he? Where did he go? I'm pretty sure I saw him going in this direction. He must be hiding, let's split up and look for him. Xiao Chen had escaped from their perception instantly, they could not help but be incredibly shocked. Pu Si. An arrow flashed by like a gust of strong wind. Before one of the martial grand masters could react, an essence light arrow pierced through his heart from the back, killing him. When the other martial grand master saw Xiao Chen appear from behind him, he was startled. When he saw the Soul Slayer bow and Essence Light Arrow in his hands, he immediately fled without looking back. Xiao Chen looked in the direction in which the person fled, but he did not give chase. He picked up the Essence Light Arrow that landed on the ground before patting down the body of the dead Martial Grand Master. The status of this Martial Grand Master did not seem to be low. Xiao Chen managed to obtain a banknote for 2000 gold tails, a rank 4 pill, body tempering pill, and a profound ranked martial technique manual, clear wind chop. Xiao Chen smiled in satisfaction, his depressed mood was lifted. This martial grand master died an undeserved death. He was sneak attacked from behind by Xiao Chen using the soul slayer bow and essence light arrow. If they were to fight properly, Xiao Chen would have required at least 500 moves before he could defeat this person. Xiao Chen took a look at the martial technique manual, Clear Wind Chop, a martial technique for the saber. As a profound ranked martial technique, it was of pretty high quality already. In some clans, it could even be considered the family treasure. Only in a noble clan, like the Wa clan, would there be a servant carrying a profound ranked martial technique manual around. This was something a small clan would not be able to imagine. After an hour, Xiao Chen returned to the place where the Golden Lion King had died. However, he discovered that Fatty was very fast with his actions. He had already stripped off everything from the Golden Lion King, leaving only a complete golden skeleton. When Jin Dabao saw Xiao Chen return, he handed a golden lion horn to him. He said, I have taken the skin and blood of the golden holy beast. Miss Xiao Xiao wants the skeleton. This lion horn is for you. I forgot to tell you, Chu Chaoyun has a holy weapon. Within the same cultivation realm, he is unrivaled. Even an early martial saint would be defeated by him. I told you not to chase after him earlier, did you not hear? Xiao Chen smiled faintly as he received the golden lion horn. He looked at the humongous golden skeleton and said, how are you going to transport this back? Even if you are going to use the boat, you still need to think of the way to carry it on board. The fatty smiled, you don't have to worry about that, Miss Xiao Xiao has her own methods. Su Xiao Xiao smiled to acknowledge that. Although Xiao Chen was curious about what Su Xiao Xiao wants with the skeleton, he did not ask her. After the distribution was completed, Jin Dabao was in a good mood. He said boldly, Come, this fat lord will bring you to go obtain treasures from the ancient remnant. At the entrance of the ancient remnant, Hua Yunfei saw the martial grand master fleeing back. He flew into a great rage, I have never seen such a trash like you. A peak martial grand master was actually frightened off by a superior grade martial master. That martial grand master lowered his head and knelt on the ground in silence. Although this matter was indeed shameful, he would not have run if he had not seen the soul slayer bow and essence light arrow in Xiao Chen's hands. Hua Yunfei thought for a long time before saying in a grave tone, the five martial grand masters will stay here. If you are not able to deal with that brat then you can forget about returning to the Hua clan. 
This time, he had brought six martial saints and six martial grand masters with him. Martial saints made up the most of his fighting force. Such a force could be considered the weakest amongst the noble clans. In order to ensure nothing would happen in the ancient remnant, Hua Yunfei did not dare to leave the martial saints behind. Leaving the five martial grand masters behind was already the most he could do. Using five peak martial grand masters to deal with one Xiao Chen, a superior grade martial master, it could be said that Hua Yunfei thought really highly of Xiao Chen. Under the fatty's lead, they three of them headed towards the direction of the ancient remnant's entrance. Along the way, Xiao Chen was carving the golden lion horn that the fatty gave him. Su Xiaoxiao and Jin Dabao were very curious about Xiao Chen's actions. Jin Dabao could almost not resist asking. To use this golden horn for carving was simply a waste. Xiao Chen smiled and did not explain. There were too many unknown dangers in the ancient remnant. The battle with Chu Chaoyun earlier caused Xiao Chen to feel stressed. He needed something to use as his trump card. Unfortunately, Xiao Chen had forcibly used the heaven-ranked martial technique, Return of the Azure Dragon twice already. If he did it once more, he would definitely explode and die. Otherwise, he could have used it as a powerful trump card. The only thing he could rely on now was the life bestowal spell. Xiao Chen completely focused on making the sculpture. He carefully thought back to every single move of the Golden Lion King. We have arrived, the fatty stopped and looked at a 10 meter tall hole in the mountain side. Below the hole, there was plenty of rubble. No one was able to see within the dark hole. A cold air blew out of the hole, causing everyone to feel their hair to stand on its end. This was a cold that penetrated to the heart. Xiao Chen extended his spiritual sense into the hole but he discovered a formless barrier blocking his spiritual sense. This was the same situation as what Xiao Chen encountered in the gloomy forest. However, this time the barrier Xiao Chen ran into was even stronger than the one at Gloomy Forest. Even after he shaped his spiritual sense into a golden spear, he was not able to pierce through it. The fatty said in a somewhat terrified manner, why do I feel that this cave leads to a tomb? It is so strange. Xiao Chen smiled indifferently, who knows? Maybe it really does lead to a tomb. The land where the ancient people died, isn't that very similar to a tomb. Actually, there is no difference at all. Su Xiaoxiao suddenly spoke, there are people staring at us. They are experts. Xiao Chen frowned slightly and checked using his spiritual sense, sending it out in all directions. After a short moment, he said, it is the Hua clan's people. There are a total of five peak martial grand masters. Just as he said that, five martial grand masters jumped out from behind. They formed a semicircle and surrounded them. When the leader saw Xiao Chen together with Jin Dabao, he was surprised. The two of you, please take a step back. Our Hua clan. Lightning evasion. Xiao Chen shouted lightly and appeared beside the martial grand master who spoke. Electrical arcs were jumping on the lunar shadow saber. He executed drawing the saber, causing that man's words to be interrupted. The fatty cursed, I realized if we hung out with this fellow, Sooner or later, we would have offended all the noble clans. Let's just kill them, Su Xiaoxiao said indifferently. Her slender jade-like hands lightly strummed the zither strings. The person who spoke did not expect Xiao Chen to be so emphatic. He did not even give him the opportunity to finish his words and came attacking directly. Fu Si. He retreated backward but Xiao Chen still managed to wound him on the chest. The surging electricity on the lunar shadow saber instantly penetrated his body, causing his movements to slow. Arc light chop. The saber created an arc light. Everything three meters in front of Xiao Chen was caught in the arc light. As that martial grand master was struck by the electricity, his speed became extremely slow. He was not able to react to it and was sliced in half by the arc light. Because of his carelessness, a peak martial grand master was killed by Xiao Chen in two moves. This was the might of the rushing thunder saber technique. As long as he was able to successfully execute the first move, even a person of higher cultivation realm could be killed. Inclined body strike. Xiao Chen turned around and inclined his body before charging forward. The cultivator that rushed at him was struck by Xiao Chen's right shoulder immediately. That person initially attempted to flank Xiao Chen, attacking him from the front and back. 
However, he did not expect Xiao Chen to kill a peak martial grand master in two moves before turning around to attack him. He was caught off guard and was knocked back by Xiao Chen. He took two steps back and did his best to resolve the horrifying force. He felt fear in his heart, what a horrifying physical body. Xiao Che took two steps forward and sent his right fist smashing over. The wind whistled and the thunder roared, before that man could stably stand and calm the surging blood and chi in his body, he was forced to defend. There was a crackling sound. After being tempered by the heavenly thunders and seven petals of the seven-leaf flower, Xiao Chen was able to smash his hand into mush. Ah! That man cried out painfully. When he saw his crippled hand, his face was filled with shock. The saber flashed, and in the time he was distracted, Xiao Chen used drawing the saber to split him into two halves. Xiao Chen did not reveal any expression on his face. He took out the Soul Slayer bow and knocked an essence light arrow onto it. He gathered a large force on his right hand and drew the bow back till it resembles a full moon. He took aim at a martial grand master currently fighting with Jin Dabao. That martial grand master felt a killing intent and quickly evaded Jin Dabao, leaping towards the side. Xiao Chen closed his eyes and locked onto his heart using his spiritual sense. Fu Si. The essence light arrow was released and became a beam of light, it pierced through his intended target. That martial grand master vomited a mouthful of blood and fell on the ground. Shua Shua. Xiao Chen's hands moved continuously and fired out another two essence light arrows. The remaining two martial grand master were pierced by the arrow and died without any means to resist. The fatty sighed, this soul slayer bow is ridiculously powerful. Anyone it shoots dies. This fellow is also ridiculously powerful too. Rumors say drawing the Soul Slayer bow would require 500 kilograms of force. To think he could actually fire out three arrows continuously. Su Xiaoxiao carried her zither once again and a look of shock flashed in her beautiful eyes, the potential of the Soul Slayer bow does not stop there. As long as the user's physical body is strong enough, it is not impossible to go beyond 5000 kilograms of force. Back then, the former Manor Lord of Heavenly Craft Manor invested all his efforts into making the Soul Slayer bow. However, he discovered no one could draw it back because essence could not be used and only physical strength could be relied on. It was abandoned in the storage of the manor. When the former Manor Lord passed away, the new Manor Lord immediately sold it. I wonder what kind of expression they would have if they saw the situation today. The fatty asked out of curiosity, that old Manor Lord. Why did he forge a spirit bow that no one could draw back? Did he have nothing to do after eating? TL note. Nothing to do after eating is a Chinese saying for too much free time. Su Xiaoxiao let out an indistinct sigh. She said in a melancholic manner, it was so he could return a debt of gratitude, thus he invested all his energy into it. Xiao Chen put away the bow and picked up the essence light arrows on the ground. The might of the Soul Slayer bow combined with the Essence Light Arrows far exceed his imagination. Furthermore, he felt the Soul Slayer bow's full potential was not realized yet. After he picked up the Essence Light Arrows, he started collecting his spoils of war, patting down the bodies of these martial Grand Masters. When the fatty saw this, he quickly started competing with Xiao Chen. These fellows were really rich. Just searching two of them yielded 3,000 gold tails and a few bottles of quality pills, the fatty smiled happily as he held the gold banknotes. Xiao Chen could not be bothered with him. He shot out a few streams of purple thunder true fire at the corpses, burning them to ashes. He took a deep look at the pitch black hole in front of them and walked in without hesitation. Jin Dabao and Su Xiaoxiao quickly followed after him. The closer they got to the hole, the denser the penetrating cold air got. It caused people to feel fear as they shivered with cold. After the three of them circulated some essence, they felt slightly better. In the dark hole was a long paved pathway. It was eerily silent as they transversed down the path. The three of them did not say anything, even the talkative fatty kept his mouth shut. The three of them walked for an unknown period of time before a spot of light appeared before them. Xiao Chen felt joy in his heart and he increased his speed. After a while, a vast underground palace appeared in front of everyone. TL note, an underground palace is usually part of an imperial tomb. Quick, run, the dead in the coffins are coming out. 
many of the Duanmu clan's cultivators died already. There are actually demonic beasts here. Is this actually the ancient remnant? It's so horrifying. Earlier, there was someone who got infected by demonic chi, he was demonized in an instant. Before the three of them had the opportunity to rejoice, a large group of cultivator ran over from the front. They were clearly intending to flee. The group immediately became apprehensive. Fatty Jin was slightly speechless before he said, what's going on? Why is everyone running back? Xiao Chen held a cultivator back to ask what was going on. That cultivator replied, saying the Duanmu clan opened a black ancient coffin in the underground palace. The corpse in there actually came to life and start killing everyone it saw. Furthermore, in a quiet river in the underground palace, many bat-like demonic beasts suddenly appeared. They were as strong as rank 5 demonic beasts, and they came in large numbers. Xiao Chen hesitated, should I return or continue going forward? Suddenly he noticed a group of people inspecting something on the wall in front. This is definitely an ancient martial technique. The predecessors carved it on the wall but we do not understand it. Without a certain level of comprehension, there is no way to understand it. Earlier, I saw Ji Chengkong came to this spot. After he took a look at it, he immediately destroyed the last three carvings. He must have comprehended something, otherwise he would not have destroyed the last three carvings. Xiao Chen's group quickly made their way over. They saw many carvings on the wall, carvings of people. Some were sword dancing, some were seated, and some were standing quietly. Everyone's expression was different, but their actions all had a certain Tao. Each and every one of their movements seemed to contain the aura of heaven and earth. Xiao Chen looked from carving to carving, using his spiritual sense to sweep through them. Just as his spiritual sense entered it, he felt as though he was immersed in a very realistic version. He felt that he gained something with every carving. The purple thunder divine incantation actually circulated automatically. He felt a strange sensation. When he reached the end, he discovered the final three carvings were destroyed by someone. Seems like Ji Chengkong had gained some comprehension here, and that's why he destroyed them, Xiao Chen felt some regret as he said. The most crucial three cravings were destroyed. The circulation of the purple thunder divine incantation also stopped. The mysterious feeling he had vanished as well. Even so, Xiao Chen felt the essence in his body to be more abundant. His cultivation realm as a superior grade martial master became even more sturdy. Su Xiao Xiao suddenly opened her eyes. She said in astonishment, these are sage Tao comprehension pictures. The people in them are sages that actually existed in the ancient era. The final three sage Tao comprehension pictures were destroyed by Ji Changkong. Otherwise, it would be easier to view them. The fatty stared at it for a long time and he could not see any Tao in them. He said in a bad mood, what's so nice about these Tao comprehension pictures? It is not a martial technique. The person who carved this is immoral. He could have just carved a Tao bestowal picture. Wouldn't that be better? Right after the fatty spoke, a seated sage in the carving seemed to have heard the fatty's insult. His eyelids seemed to have twitched. What's going on? I just saw that person's eyelid twitch. Am I seeing ghosts? I saw it too. Bang. An energy which seemed to transcend space and time was sent out. Everyone felt dazzled. By the time they reacted, they saw the fatty falling over hundreds of meters away. He was even rolling over continuously, screaming in pain. The sage's spirit manifested. A gaze from tens of thousand years ago is actually so mighty. It is so horrifying. Although the sage is dead already, his holy might still exists. Even after 10,000 years, it has not faded away. Indeed, look at that perverted fatty. In front of the sage, he must be a scum-like existence. Xiao Chen rushed over and helped the fatty up, how are you feeling? Are you alright? The fatty patted the dust on his clothes off and there was a lingering fear in his voice as he said, I saw a pair of eyes. The eyes were full of chaos. Before I could react to it, I was knocked flying. Damn it. I don't believe it that a group of dead ghost is still so powerful. All of you, scram aside. The fatty's temper suddenly flared up. He parted the crowd and headed to the stone wall. Celestial Pierce. Jin Dabao opened up the golden folding fan in his hand. A golden scholar appeared behind him. A righteous chi was instantly spread throughout the surroundings. 
This is also the aura of a sage. Ancient holy weapon. This fatty actually has a holy weapon. However, the Tao it contained seemed to not be complete. This holy weapon is badly damaged. Even so, it is still very powerful. It should be sufficient to fight with the ancient sage. Boom. Boom. In the instant the righteous chi extended out, the sage on the wall seemed to come to life. A small world seemed to come out of it. When everyone discovered the change in the surrounding scenery, it seems to become the world depicted in the carvings. The sages in the carving all appeared into the surrounds of everyone. The overflowing aura created a pressure that made everyone kneel. Everyone found it difficult to even speak. Someone asked in horror, did the sage come back to life? The Azure Dragon Martial Spirit rushed forth, a powerful and mighty aura erupted out from Xiao Chen's body. Xiao Chen stood straight with his hand behind his back. He closed his eyes feeling the Tao contained in this world. Everyone vanished from Xiao Chen's vision and a vast land that was overgrown appeared. There were countless black figures standing tall. These people emitted a black gas from their bodies. There were also countless human-shaped figures standing in the sky. They covered the sky and blocked the sun. It was very shocking, as though it was the Armageddon. In the even more distant skies, there were 18 azure dragons swimming in the sky. Their dragon roars resounded everywhere. In the middle of the spiral of the azure dragons stood a man holding a saber. The instant he appeared, the boundless aura vanished. Even the 18 azure dragons trembled. This scene flashed by in an instant, before Xiao Chen could see the man's appearance clearly, the scene vanished. The scene of the small world reappeared. A sage sat on the ground in the small world. He suddenly opened his eyes, they seemed to be filled with chaos. The world seemed to have opened up and a boundless power was emitted. The fatty stood proudly and a golden light appeared in the eyes of the image of the sage. He looked on without any fear. Suddenly there was an explosive sound in the small world. Everyone felt dazzled, the scene in their eyes returned back to reality. However, they were shocked to discover the Tao bestowal pictures on the wall had all disappeared. What was even more strange was a figure of a fatty holding a folding fan with a sinister smile appearing. Behind him was a golden figure it seemed like he was his protector. Did I see wrong? The person on the wall. Why is he exactly like the fatty? Damn it, this is illogical. Even the sage was beaten till he was nowhere to be found, not even a single hair. Ridiculous, this is very ridiculous, to think the sage was unable to deal with him. The fatty stared blankly not knowing what to do. He saw his figure on the wall and did not know what was going on. Is that really me, the fat lord? Xiao Chen slowly walked over and smiled, stop doubting it. Aside from you, is there another person as coquettish as you? Just looking at the smile, you know it's definitely you. Su Xiao Xiao walked over slowly and smiled faintly, there is no need to worry. The ancient holy weapon in your hand is likely to be a king's weapon. When a stronger sage appears, it is normal for it to blot out the other auras. Furthermore, the Daos of these people were all absorbed by the holy weapon in your hand. There is a chance this severely damaged king's weapon could be fully restored one day. The fatty felt the golden folding fan in his hand. After a long time, he looked at the wall and laughed loudly, this picture is not too bad. It managed to bring out the magnificence of this fat lord. Sorry, brother Xiao. Afterwards, he muttered, if Miss Xiao Xiao and Princess Yingyu were drawn beside me, that would be perfect. Bang. There was a black line on Su Xiao Xiao's face, the heavy zither smashed on Fatty Jin's head. Fatty Jin quickly explained, Miss Xiao Xiao, please don't be angry. This is just brother Fatty's noble dream. I do not have any intention of profaning you. The more he explained, the worse it got, Su Xiao Xiao got even angrier. The fatty quickly evaded to the side. When the people around the fatty heard that the folding fan was actually a king's weapon, a greedy gleam appeared in all their eyes. When the fatty noticed the situation, he shouted angrily, what are you looking at? Do you believe this fat lord will slice your flesh off while you are alive? Quick, run. The fatty is going to pull hairs out again. Damn pervert. The crowd thought of the fatty's reputation and also heard the threat in his words. They immediately forewent their greed for the king's weapon and fled. When the fatty heard that, he was so angry, he trembled. He shouted loudly, who said that? Stand still. If you dare, then don't run. Damn it. 
This fat lord is not that kind of person. Xiao Chen resisted the urge to laugh and patted the fatty's shoulder, stop shouting, everyone has been frightened off by you already. Let's go. I'm really not that kind of person. Xiao Chen, you must believe me. The fatty explained loudly. It's fine, brother understands you. These people are not intelligent enough, they can't understand you. I. The three of them continued to head forward. Although a significant number of cultivators left, they discovered there were plenty of cultivators who chose to stay. Before long, they met the Duanmu clan's people. The Duanmu clan was a very special noble clan. The inherited martial spirit only appeared in women. Thus, in their clan, the women reigned over the men. Every clan head was female. In the Great Qin Nation, even within the Tianwu continent, they stood out. Just like the earlier cultivator said, the Duanmu clan's martial saints were fighting a figure that stank like a corpse. The area where they fought was covered in cold wind, the temperature was lowered to an extreme. The surround cultivators all stood afar. They could feel the cold wind affecting them, entering into their bodies. They all circulated their essence to defend against the cold. This fight was already near its end. Just as Xiao Chen arrived, the black figure fell. The surrounding Duanmu clan's female martial saints sent streams of ice and struck the corpse. After a long time, the ice shattered. A purple skeleton was revealed, as well as a golden battle armor flicking with radiance. This is the corpse of an ancient martial monarch. Its skeleton had already turned purple, it was just a step shy of becoming a sage. That battle armor is also an ancient object. Its defense must be very shocking. Although the Duanmu clan lost two martial saints, it was worth it. Duanmu Qing walked over and placed the purple skeleton and golden battle armor into her spatial ring. Then she expressionlessly led the Duanmu clan over to a coffin at the side. Duanmu Qing picked up a golden book from the black coffin. She patted the dust off and gently flipped it open. When the book was open, it gave off a faint glow. Countless golden words floated out from the book, they were densely packed, like scriptures. Unfortunately, no one here understood the ancient text. However, the Tao that fluctuated on it informed people that this was not an ordinary object. The Duanmu clan has earned big this time. They actually obtained an ancient martial technique. We just do not know what kind of martial technique it is. Regardless of the type, the martial technique that is buried within ancient martial monarch is not ordinary. These are ancient words. I actually can't understand any of them. Damn. Xiao Chen thought, these ancient words floating in the air were actually the traditional Chinese characters of Earth. He quickly took a careful look and remembered all the words floating in the air. TL Note. China now uses the simplified Chinese characters. There are some countries that still use the traditional characters, like Hong Kong or Taiwan. If one can understand the simple characters, the traditional ones are not too difficult, they look similar, albeit more complicated. Duanmu Qing looked at the ancient words floating in the air. She frowned slightly, muttering to herself, they are all ancient words. I wonder if the elders in the clan are able to translate it completely. Who? Just as Duanmu Qing was about to place the ancient martial technique into her spatial ring, a blue-clothed martial saint hidden in the crowd suddenly leapt out and launched himself at Duanmu Qing. The blue-clothed martial saint had chosen his timing well. He did not target the moment she first obtained the ancient martial technique, nor any time after that. He chose the time she was about to place in into her spatial ring. That was the time the Duanmu clan was the most relaxed. Aside from taking a look, Duanmu Qing opened up the ancient martial technique for a long time in order to lure out people with bad intentions. Originally, they thought no one would dare snatch it. Who knew, a peak martial saint would suddenly appear at the end. The blue-clothed martial saint was extremely fast. He appeared before Duanmu Qing in an instant and snatched the ancient martial technique manual from her hand. Then he dashed forward frantically. The cultivators around were shocked. They never expected someone to target the Duanmu clan. Although two Duanmu clan martial saints died, there were still six martial saints and ten martial grand masters. That was not a force which one person could deal with alone. Duanmu Qing was stunned for a while, and then her pretty face turned cold. The surrounding temperature seemed to drop by a hundred degrees. A boundless cold chi extended out in the air. 
That martial saint's speed instantly slowed. The six Marcia saints behind her also reacted. With a, kai, sound, six pillars of ice extended from the ground and turned into a cage, locking that blue-clothed martial saint in. Break. The blue-clothed martial saint shouted loudly. An energy wave fired out from his body and the six ice pillars shattered into countless pieces. The blue-clothed man escaped his prison. However, he could not relax yet. Just as he took a step out, another six pillar rose up again, trapping him once more. Break. The blue-clothed martial saint shouted once more, firing another energy wave. The cage broke again and he escaped once more. Boom. 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 Every step the martial saint took, he would be trapped once more. He would fire an energy wave to break out every time. However, he used a lot of essence in the process. Finally, the time he took to escape each time increased. From just requiring an instant at the beginning, he now took several breaths of time to barely break the ice pillars. His forehead was filled with sweat. It was evident his essence was already exhausted. Xiao Chen extended out his spiritual sense. He saw the six Duanmu clan's martial saints had an invisible ice thread under their feet. There was a crystalline radiance flowing on the thread, forming into a strange formation. Xiao Chen was astonished, no wonder the six ice pillars reformed themselves so quickly. These six people worked together as one. They had the same martial spirit attribute, and even the same martial spirit. When they worked together, their might was sufficient to cause trouble for a martial king. Ice. Duan Mu Ching suddenly shouted lightly. A huge ice pillar suddenly appeared. The blue-clothed martial saint was instantly frozen inside the ice pillar, the ice pillar did not explode and break after. Who? A yellow ancient book was thrown into the crowd. The instant before the blue-clothed martial saint was sealed in ice, he threw out the ancient martial technique manual. The crowd immediately became disorderly, and many of the cultivators started fighting for the manual. The scene turned chaotic. Duan Mu Ching frowned and said in a cold voice, kill them all. After she spoke, her fine black hair turned white. A slender sword appeared in her hand, and there was not a shred of human emotion in her eyes. It was as though she were the grim reaper about to harvest the souls of people. Fu Si. Miserable cries resounded in the crowd. Duan Mu Ching led the six martial saints and ten martial grand masters to charge into the crowd. They killed anyone they saw, showing no mercy. Run. This group of bitches has turned crazy. Blood and broken limbs flew everywhere. Cries of fear echoed everywhere. Duan Mu Ching's face was completely stained with blood. The crimson blood was reminiscent of beautiful flowers, adding a strange beauty to her. Who? When the slender sword slashed down, there was no sound. A martial grand master was sliced in half. Duan Mu Ching remained expressionless as she withdrew her sword and stabbed the heart of the martial master before her. The martial technique was not in the least gaudy, it was very straightforward. Every move was a killing move. Duan Mu Ching was like a killing machine. Her movements were very precise, yet gave of a sense of beauty reminiscent of resplendent fireworks. Lives withered in a blink, revealing their brilliance at the moment of death, this was the art of death. Cold air filled the place as a chill light flickered. The surroundings now resembled an ice cave. The speed of the cultivators was slowed significantly. However, the Duanmu clan's speed did not seem to be affected. This bitter fight was simply a one-sided battle. The fatty paled, and he said with lingering fears in his heart, this woman is really terrifying. She showed no mercy when killing her expressions did not even change. Her human lives worth even less than ants in her eyes. Su Xiaoxiao was not too surprised, she sighed, the queen of the Duanmu clan has to cultivate the profound ice incantation. The cultivator has to be able to cut off all her emotions, or else, she will never cultivate to the great perfection. When I saw Duan Mu Ching in the past, it was still possible to see her smile. Xiao Chen was mildly astonished in his heart, to think there is such an extreme technique in this world that the cultivator has to cut off all emotions. That is very cruel. Xiao Chen now looked at Duan Mu Ching with sympathy. Fu Si. Duan Mu Ching waved her sword casually and killed the final cultivator. She slowly picked up the yellow, ancient manual on the ground. Her gaze suddenly shifted to the group of three. She moved leisurely towards them. The three of them could feel a gust of cold wind, a cold that was able to penetrate to their hearts. 
This martial technique is for you, give me the spirit fox, Duan Mu Ching said in a frigid voice as she held out the yellow, ancient martial technique manual to Xiao Chen. Xiao Chen smiled bitterly to himself. To think that I thought she was pitiful. Is there anything hateful about his pitiful person? Xiao Chen did not hesitate to reject. I'm sorry, Xiao Bai is not a commodity. I will not treat it as an object and engage in a trade with it. Is it not sufficient? Duan Mu Ching's expression turned cold. The surrounding temperature dropped significantly once again. Jin Dabao could no longer stand to keep watching, he said, don't think you are so awesome after you dyed your hair white. Use your brains a little. The spirit fox already signed a blood contract. It cannot be traded. Duan Mu Ching kept her gaze on Xiao Chen, she did not bother about the fatty at all. However, after she heard what he said, she seemed to have understood something. She revealed killing intent in her eyes, the slender sword in her hand started to hum. Jin Dabao, return my son to me. Zhang Mingxuan's voice could be heard from afar. Ji Chengkong led the cultivators of the two clans over. It was obvious that the sound of fighting from earlier had attracted them over. Ji Chengkong stood proudly amidst the crowd, and his eyes were like a boundless starry sky. When looked at faintly, it caused one to be unable to measure his strength. It seemed like the Three Sage Dao comprehension picture must have been of great help to him. The fatty said in an angry tone, if you want a son, then go look for his mother. Why are you looking for this fat lord? This fat lord is not able to give birth. Jin Dabao, don't go overboard. Xiao Chen said indifferently, Zhang Muang is on my hands. You are asking the wrong person. Ji Chengkong's hair and clothes started to flutter around despite the absence of wind. He said in a casual manner, release my cousin and leave an arm behind. Then, I will not kill you. Fu, Fu, Fu. There were urgent footsteps coming for the distance again. Hua Yunfei led the six martial saints of the Hua clan over. Hua Yunfei said coldly, Xiao Chen, were the martial grand masters of my clan killed by you? After killing the people of my Hua clan, you can forget about leaving this underground palace alive. Xiao Chen looked at the people of the three noble clans coldly. Duan Mu Qing, Ji Changkong, Hua Yunfei, and the many cultivators behind them were all staring at him. Their gazes all contained a thick killing intent. Xiao Chen helded the lunar shadow saber tightly. Arcs of electricity danced around on the blade as the might of the rank 6 demonic core was completely unleashed. He smiled coldly, isn't your purpose to kill me? Why are you seeking so many excuses? Who is coming first? My head is right here, let's see who is able to obtain it. The crowd was silent. They all knew about the might of Xiao Chen. In a dire situation, he would definitely use a suicidal move to kill them. Due to the fear in their heart, no one dared to make the first move. The Gai Marquis will come for your head. A golden long spear appeared without a warning. It struck Xiao Chen's chest with a loud bang. The shirt in front of his chest immediately burst apart. A golden battle armor was revealed. The long spear was not able to pass further into the battle armor. With a thought of the Gai Marquis, a stream of golden essence flowed into the long spear. The huge force actually only caused Xiao Chen to be knocked back. Bang! 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 The Gai Marquis shouted out lightly. His long spear pressed on Xiao Chen, causing him to retreat back continuously. About ten stone pillars in the underground palace were instantly smashed. Finally, Xiao Chen was pressed against a wall with the Sage Dao comprehension picture before he stopped. Blood trickled out from the corner of Xiao Chen's mouth. He looked at the Gai Marquis with curiosity and asked, I have no grudge with you, why do you want to kill me? It did not make sense to him. Duan Mu Ching, Hua Yunfei, and Ji Chengkong had plenty of reasons to kill me. However, the Gai Marquis did not even speak to me before, so why would he attack me for no reason? The Gai Marquis wore a golden battle armor, and there was a scarlet short spear behind him. His face was as smooth as jade, and he looked very handsome, as though a battle sage had descended. He was expressionless as he said indifferently, orders from the ancestor. Those not of the Ying clan who have seen the imperial dragon's chi must die. After he spoke, the golden spear in his hand trembled. The spear tip pressed on Xiao Chen's armor and the golden spear light created a small indent in the battle armor. The sage Dao comprehension picture behind Xiao Chen cracked, 
cancelling out the huge force. Xiao Chen grabbed the spear handle. The purple thunder divine incantation circulated rapidly in his body, essence flowed into his hands. A resplendent electrical energy immediately flowed from the three-meter-long golden spear onto the hands of the Gai Marquis. The Gai Marquis's hands turned slightly numb. As the electricity flowed into him, the essence in his body instantly turned chaotic. The force on the spear instantly decreased significantly. Chang. Xiao Chen took advantage of this opportunity to deflect the long spear. He fell rapidly from the air. He placed a blood replenishing pill in his mouth, then held the lunar shadow saber and rushed at the Gai Marquis. Boom. The Gai Marquis suppressed the electricity in his body. The long spear in his hand pushed downwards. The wind roared and a brilliant spear light appeared, seeming like it had a boundless might. Bang! Xiao Chen evaded to the side, the long spear landed on the ground and created a crater. Countless stone shards and dust were kicked up. The long spear swept horizontally across, and a layer of the dust was separated out, as though it was sliced into two halves. The Gai Marquis's long spear was three meters long, in addition to the spear light, he managed to clear a radius of ten meters around him. With such a large area of attack, Xiao Chen had no way to evade to the left or right. He could only leap into the air to evade. The Gai Marquis revealed a sold smile, as he took a step back with his right foot and quickly withdrew his long spear. Boom! 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 The Gai Marquis grasped the spear handle and applied force on it. The long spear that was withdrawn rushed out like a flood dragon. It roared out at Xiao Chen in the air. In an instant, hundreds of spears blossomed out. When faced with the numerous, dazzling, golden spear images, Xiao Chen's thoughts were in a whirl. He knew that every one of the spear images was real. They all carried a boundless killing intent. Once he was struck, a hole would appear in his body. Since he could not see through the move, Xiao Chen might as well just close his eyes as he focused on drawing his saber. Just like how he practiced normally, the lunar shadow saber flashed out continuously. The sound of metals clashing against each other sounded out unceasingly. In an instant, the two of them exchanged hundreds of moves in the air. After Xiao Chen landed, he suddenly opened his eyes and shouted out, drawing the saber. The lunar shadow saber revealed a reserved light, and hacked at the body of the spear with a strangely fast speed. There was a loud melodious sound, and the long spear vibrated in the air. The body of the spear bent till it resembled a crescent moon before snapping back. The huge force caused the Gai Marquis's right hand to go numb. The long spear bounced out of his right hand. He recovered from his shock and held the spear firmly once again. A grave look appeared in the Gai Marquis's eyes. He took a heavy step forward and swept horizontally again. Having experienced this once before, Xiao Chen would not leap up to evade again. He arced his body backwards, and it fell towards the ground, rapidly. TL Notes Think Matrix when Neo evaded bullets, but without the hand movements. Who? The long spear swept by right in front of Xiao Chen's face. After the long spear passed, a few strands of hair were immediately severed. Just as Xiao Chen was about to make a counter-attack, Hua Yunfei, who was standing behind him, suddenly made a move. He turned into a surging blood river and gushed towards Xiao Chen. The Gai Marquis's eyes lit up. He looked coldly at Hua Yunfei, who had turned into a blood river. He swept the long spear towards the blood river. It contained at least a thousand kilograms of force as it swept across like a dragon's tail, it was unblockable. The blood river instantly stopped. Hua Yunfei suddenly reappeared and blocked the spear with his two hands. However, the force contained in the spear was too great. Hua Yunfei was immediately knocked back. He skidded on the ground for several steps before he managed to stand stably again. The Gai Marquis said coldly, I, the Gai Marquis, want to kill him. It is not your turn to take action. Hua Yunfei was humiliated under everyone's gaze. He blushed and the image of a red human figure appeared behind him. Hua Yunfei replied in a cold voice, Gai Marquis, what do you mean by this? Are you trying to start a fight? The Gai Marquis smiled coldly and ignored him. He fixed his gaze back on Xiao Chen. The 200 golden guards behind him all instantly drew their swords in an orderly fashion. Along with the sound of swords being drawn, a horrifying killing intent was extended out instantly. 
The 200 Golden Guards who had experienced countless wars merged their killing intent and directed it at the Hua clan. Hua Yunfei and his group all felt their hearts go cold. It was as though they were transported to a bloody battlefield. There were countless of cries of pain as well as the mourning of soldiers before their deaths. These sounds resounded in their ears, and it was extremely terrifying. Hua Yunfei was very angry but he knew the strength of the group he brought was insufficient. Before the killing intent of these 200 martial grand masters, he would suffer a huge disadvantage. He only snorted coldly and keep silent. He fixed a cold gaze on Xiao Chen, he would settle all these grievances with him. His hatred for him deepened in his heart. Xiao Chen got up and took two steps back. He was astonished at how the Gai Marquis handled this. He did not expect him to be so conceited. He was exactly how the rumors depicted him. Ji Cheng Kong suddenly laughed coldly. What big words, I want to see how are you going to stop me from killing this person. Ji Cheng Kong had challenged every youth in the imperial capital in the past. According to the rumors, he had a secret battle with the Gai Marquis and they fought to a draw. Because the Gai Marquis had a higher cultivation realm than Ji Cheng Kong at that time, Ji Cheng Kong did not feel convinced in his heart. From the look of the situation now, it seemed that the rumor duel did occur. A black sword appeared in Ji Cheng Kong's hands. A resplendent starry sky appeared in his eye. It looked vast and mighty, its depths were unfathomable. His body turned into a beam of light and he flew straight at Xiao Chen. The sword in his hand danced around and starlight permeated the surroundings, it was very dazzling. Duan Mu Qing's slender sword trembled and countless glittering snowflakes appeared, they flew at Xiao Chen with a cold wind. Hua Yunfei snorted coldly and took advantage of the opportunity. He turned into a blood river again and gushed towards Xiao Chen. The three of them executed their own killing moves and rushed at Xiao Chen from different directions. The Gai Marquis's heart trembled. He was not confident in blocking all three of them at the same time. Even if he could block them, he would not do so. He had not intended to let Xiao Chen off in the first place. With his character, he did not wish to be assisted by anyone else. The Gai Marquis picked up the scarlet short spear behind him in his left hand. He said indifferently, the people that I, the Gai Marquis, want to kill will not be snatched away from under my nose. He shouted lightly and stomped on the ground violently. Numerous cracks appeared on the ground before it crumbled loudly. He leapt forward explosively. He actually managed to overtake the three of them in an instant. Xiao Chen was currently in desperate straits. He was not confident of receiving the killing move of either of them. Now that all of them were attacking together, his odds were looking bad. Xiao Chen leaned on the wall with the Sage Dao comprehension picture. When he saw the four of them suddenly rushing at him, he smiled coldly in his heart. He did not show any fear. Life bestowal spell. He shouted lightly and quickly took out a sculpture from his universe ring. A mountain-sized golden lion king suddenly appeared before Xiao Chen. Bang! The Gai Marquis, who arrived first, smashed into the golden lion king's body. He was rapidly knocked back. Xiao Chen leapt up and stood on the back of the golden lion king. He commanded the Golden Lion King to give a violent stomp. An intense shockwave extended through the surroundings, kicking all the dust up. The huge force behind the shockwave instantly knocked Duan Mu Qing, Hua Yunfei, and Ji Chengkong flying. When the Gai Marquis saw the Golden Lion King, his brain felt as though it had short-circuited. He did not understand what was happening. How was the Golden Lion King subdued by Xiao Chen? Boom! The huge feet of the Golden Lion King were like humongous stone pillars. A foot stomped down towards the Gai Marquis. The Gai Marquis immediately performed a somersault backward and evaded. Bang! Countless stone shards were sent flying. A large pit appeared before him. The paw of the Golden Lion King was like a celestial object descending from the sky. It continued to stomp at the Gai Marquis with a strangely fast speed. The Gai Marquis was astonished. How is the Golden Lion King's speed so fast? When I was fighting with it, it was clearly past its prime. Its movements were very slow. What is going on? The Gai Marquis continued to evade in a sorry state. This continued until he finally stepped in a crack. Xiao Chen remained expressionless as he controlled the Golden Lion King to continue to stomp on the ground. Bang! 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 A deep pit appeared on the ground. 
It was unknown if the Gai Marquis was alive or dead at the bottom of the pit. His 200 Golden Guards immediately surrounded Xiao Chen to attack. Xiao Chen controlled the Golden Lion King to advance suddenly, trampling everything in its way. There was no one could block it. The speed and strength of the late Golden Lion King could not be compared to this Golden Lion King that Xiao Chen had made from the Life Bestowal spell. The Golden Lion King charged angrily, killing everything in its path. Its mountain-sized body continued to trample the ground. The ground slowly started to shake. There were cries of misery, the Golden Guards were trampled into mush. When the Duanmu clan's six martial saints saw the situation, they worked together to fire a stream of extremely cold wind at Xiao Chen. When the cold wind passed, even the air froze. Tiny beads of ice fell out of the air unceasingly like hail. Pu Si. The Golden Lion King spat a dazzling golden flame from its mouth. This cold wind immediately became steam and disappeared. However, the flames continued to fly towards the six martial saints. Like the autumn wind blowing the leaves around, the six Duanmu clan martial saints were blown away. They vomited mouthfuls of blood as they stared at Xiao Chen in horror. Boom! The six Hua clan martial saints all moved on their own, each transforming into a gushing sacred river. Dragon turtles and all sorts of immortal beasts could be seen indistinctly in the sacred river. It had a boundlessly vast holy might, as though it was able to wash away the sins of people. Xiao Chen looked coldly at the gushing sacred river. The golden lion king pushed its feet off the ground and dashed over like lightning. The ground trembled constantly. The stone walls and stone pillars in its way all crumbled when it smashed into them. Roar. When it was in front of the sacred river, the golden lion king suddenly and loudly roared. Sound waves shook the surroundings, countless stone walls turned into powder. The vast and mightily gushing sacred river was sent up to the sky before it started flowing backward. That's impossible, the six Huan clan martial saint exclaimed. Their faces were filled with fear. The sacred river gushed over the bodies of the six of them, giving off a continuous, zizi, sound. When the sacred river vanished, the six martial saints were extremely pale. All the clothes on their body vanished. They seemed to have slimmed down. A clean pure white space appeared on the ground, there was not even a speck of dust remaining. I'll kill you. Hua Yunfei's eyes turned bloodshot. A scarlet sword appeared in his hand. A male wearing scarlet clothes stood behind him. A boundless evil aura was emitted from the scarlet clothed man. Occasionally, faintly discernible corpses of all sorts of strong beasts would appear before him, it was very horrifying. Boom. A sword light which was 33 meters long appeared on the sword. It reached all the way to the roof of the underground palace and pierced a hole through it, countless pieces of stone fell heavily from the sky. Bloody death below heaven, die! Hua Yunfei shouted loudly. The sword light hacked down towards Xiao Chen. Xiao Chen had a calm expression as he shouted lightly. The golden horn of the golden lion king let out a resplendent light. The golden light clashed with the scarlet light, resulting in a resounding sound. In the end, the scarlet light vanished and the golden light shot into the sky. It created a small hole in the ceiling and a beam of sunlight shined through. This golden light could actually pierce through the entire mountain above the underground palace. Everyone took a deep breath. How powerful does it have to be for it to do that? A huge ice bird appeared and cried out in the sky. It flew towards Xiao Chen carrying a boundless cold wind. A limitless flame started burning in Xiao Chen's right eye. Finally, the limitless flame turned into a purple glow and fired out a purple light. The ice bird was struck by the purple light and immediately started to burn. A painful moan came from the ice bird, and the ice bird flew at Xiao Chen while burning. The ice that made up its body melted continuously. By the time it reached Xiao Chen, it had completely disappeared. Astral Swordplay, Third Style, Eternal Light. Ji Chengkong felt the terrifying aura of the Golden Lion King and did not dare be careless. He immediately executed his strongest offensive technique. A resplendent starry sky appeared behind him. Amidst the starry sky, there was a star that represented him. It suddenly rose up and turned into a dazzling light pillar. It rushed towards the heavens and pierced through a thousand meters of the mountain above the underground palace. It flew towards the boundless universe and arrived on the other side. The dark underground palace was brightly lighted up by the eternal light of the resplendent starry sky. Pu Si. 
The light suddenly disappeared and the underground palace returned to darkness. In the next moment, a boundless brilliant light appeared on his black sword. Countless people lost their vision temporarily. The eternal light which came from the starry sky rushed at Xiao Chen. A bright light sliced through the darkness, it seemed as though it sliced the night into two halves. The Golden Lion King opened its huge mouth and there was a strong attractive force coming from it. It swallowed the starry sky behind Ji Chang Kong. Ji Chang Kong vomited a mouthful of blood and the eternal light was extinguished. That is Xiao Chen, why is he fighting with the people from the four big clans? Furthermore, he is not losing. He actually blocked Hua Yunfei's bloody death below heaven, Duan Mu Qing's ice phoenix spreading wings, and Ji Chang Kong's eternal light, it's unconceivable. What's going on? I clearly saw them killing the Golden Lion King. How did it come back to life? Furthermore, its strength recovered back to its peak state. No wonder he dares to challenge the people of the four clans. A golden holy beast at its peak is equivalent to a martial king. If the four clans sent their martial kings here, this situation would not occur. Don't you know what a martial king is? If the ten martial monarchs don't show themselves, a martial king is the strongest existence. He would not casually show himself. Furthermore, when martial kings fight, the shockwaves caused by the battle would cover a large area. Even martial saints could not withstand them. Such a world-shaking fight created an unceasing flow of choking sounds. It attracted all the cultivators in the underground palace over. However, they did not expect to see such a scene. Xiao Chen commanded the Golden Lion King to rush to Jin Dabao and Su Xiao Xiao. He shouted loudly, get on. The fatty and Su Xiao Xiao quickly leapt on. Xiao Chen ingested another Qi returning pill. This was already his third Qi returning pill, but his essence still drained very quickly, as though it was a gushing river. Controlling the Golden Lion King exhausted a large amount of Xiao Chen's essence, much more than he had expected. If he did not have a pill for essence recovery, like the Qi returning pill, he would have been unable to control the Golden Lion King for so long. Su Xiao Xiao saw that Xiao Chen's face was slightly pale. She asked out of worry, young master Xiao, are you alright? Xiao Chen smiled faintly, I'm fine, I can still hold on. Stand firm, I am going to rush out. Xiao Chen blew a long whistle, and the Golden Lion King started a mad dash. Its body, which was the size of a small mountain, charged forward, smashing everything in its path away. Fu Si. The Gai Marquis jumped out of the deep pit, his gaze was as sharp as a spear. A golden dragon rose up from behind him and roared out. A vast and mighty dragon might infused into the long spear as he thrust it at Xiao Chen, roaring angrily as it attacked. The azure dragon martial spirit roared out in Xiao Chen's Dantian area. The might of the ancient holy beast burst out. Xiao Chen used this momentum to draw his saber, intercepting the Gai Marquis spear with a loud clang. Hua Yunfei glared at the distant Xiao Chen and shouted loudly, Xiao Chen, you can run today but you can't run forever. The Hua clan will issue a kill on site order throughout the Dongming province. There will be no place for you in the Dongming province. Ji Chengkong said coldly, from today forth, there will be no place for you in the Nanling province. The Gai Marquis shouted, with my authority as someone from the imperial clan, I issue a death sentence. From this day forth, there will be no place in this world for you. Everyone was shocked, the three noble clans all ordered the death of the same person. Something like this had never before happened in the history of the great Qing nation. Xiao Chen was the first in the past thousand years, however, this first was not a good thing. To be targeted by three noble clans made his odds of living very bad. Xiao Chen smiled coldly to himself. He pulled out Zhang Muang from his universe ring and threw him into the air. Then, he fired out a stream of purple fire and burned him to ashes in an instant. Muang. Zhang Mingxun shorted out with a pained expression when he saw Zhang Muang turn to ashes. Ji Chengkong turned pale when he saw his cousin suddenly die. He said in a cold voice, if I, Ji Chengkong, cannot kill you personally, I am not human. There is no need for you to kill me. If the heavens did not let me condense my martial spirit until I was 15, I would not be retreating in such a miserable fashion today. Three years, all I need is three years, and I will personally kill my way through your clans. Duan Mu Qing, 
Wa Yun Fei, Ji Chang Kong, and Gai Marquis wash your necks in preparation. I will come for your heads in three years. Xiao Chen's voice came from afar, reaching the ears of the crowd. It reverberated around, echoing non-stop, three years from now, I will kill you personally. This person is truly insolent. He actually dares to challenge the noble clans alone. Those are clans that have survived for thousands of years. Three years is too long. It is not even certain that he can live that long. If he is able to, with his talent, it will surprise everyone. Come to think of it, our Dongming province has not been so lively in such a long time. Such a courageous person. Even the Zaihe province's Mu Chengshui is cannot compare to him. The crowd discussed this amongst themselves, feeling that it was inconceivable. Some felt pity for Xiao Chen, some mocked Xiao Chen for overestimating himself, all sorts of things were being said about him. Chu Chaoyun stood on top of a stone pillar in the distance. His hair fluttered around him, and he seemed to be in a good mood. He was hidden in the shadows as he looked in the direction that Xiao Chen left, revealing a faint smile as he did so. The holy weapon behind him was trembling, as though it was trying to escape its sheath and cut through the boundless darkness. The Azure Dragon. It has been a thousand years. I wonder if you will be able to surprise me. Xiao Chen rode on the Golden Lion King, smashing through multiple stone walls and countless stone pillars. There was no one that could obstruct him. When he finally arrived at an area downstream, he stopped. Boom. Just as Xiao Chen ran out of essence, the Golden Lion King turned back into a golden sculpture. Three people suddenly fell out of the air. Su Xiaoxiao and Jin Dabao were mildly startled but were able to recover their calm, and landed firmly. However, Xiao Chen was like a kite with a broken string. He fell shakily, and he was not able to maintain his balance. When Su Xiaoxiao saw the situation, she quickly got up and caught Xiao Chen. Xiao Chen was very pale, he thanked her and then struggled to get up. Then he caught the falling sculpture. The sculpture was already covered in cracks, and if it fell to the ground, it would break into a few pieces. Xiao Chen saw the cracks spreading further on the sculpture. He used his saber to slit his right hand and dripped his blood onto the sculpture, to the amazement of the two of them. The golden sculpture seemed to unceasingly, and magically, absorb Xiao Chen's blood. The cracks on it slowly began to mend themselves. Xiao Chen only relaxed after it was completely repaired. He gave a faint smile, and fainted. In the underground palace, the noble clans were in no rush to leave. There were too many injured, and they were all being treated, as well as recovering their essence. Everyone, I have a proposition. We already have so many injured, even before finding the golden body of the sages. Why don't we join hands and search together? Ji Chang Kong, who was seated on the ground, suggested. His mysterious phenomenon had just broken earlier, and he had just swallowed a medicinal pill, which he was refining. The noble clans had many casualties from the earlier battle. One third of the Gai Marquis Golden Guards had died, and there were less than a hundred left who were still in peak fighting condition. The six Hua clan martial saints had their holy river flow in reverse, washing over them until even their clothes disappeared. They all covered their nether regions with their hands. Hua Yunfei borrowed clothes with a sullen expression. The six Duanmu clan martial saints were significantly injured, as well. They were meditating to recover their strength. The ones who did not suffer from too many losses were the Ji clan and Zhang clan. Thus, it was appropriate that Ji Chengkong made such an offer. When Hua Yunfei heard this, his face turned cold, he had a disagreement with Ji Chengkong from before. Now, he was able to understand what he meant by his words. It was clear that he wanted to lead everyone here. He immediately laughed coldly, Ji Chengkong, with your abilities you expect to be able to lead everyone here. You are not even able to defeat a superior grade martial master, were you not ashamed? Ji Chengkong got up. The medicinal strength in his body had all been absorbed, and his complexion looked considerably better. When he saw Hua Yunfei, he immediately grabbed him by his shirt and mocked him, it is at least better than someone's clan who enjoys being in the nude. I think you seem to be short on clothes, do you need me to lend some to you? When many cultivators heard this, they glanced at the Hua clan martial saints where they were hiding themselves and could not resist laughing. Hua Yunfei was so angry, he turned red. He snorted coldly and left. 
Duanmu Ching saw that she still had six injured martial saints and said indifferently, the Duanmu clan agrees to Ji Chengkong's suggestion. The Gai Marquis recollected the battle armor of the dead Golden Guards before burying them. He strolled over and answered with a simple word, agreed. Hua Yunfei led six martial saints, who were now dressed, over. Although he did not have a friendly expression on his face, he still said, agreed. However, if there are any treasures, we divide them by clans, rather than by people. Furthermore, the Zhang clan and Ji clan should be considered as one. Zhang Mingxun said angrily, Hua Yunfei. What do you mean by this? Are you seeking a fight to see who is stronger or weaker? Just after Zhang Mingxun spoke, the six martial saints and twenty-odd martial grand masters took up a fighting stance. With Hua Yunfei's current strength, he was at a disadvantage. Ji Chengkong smiled faintly and pulled Zhang Mingxun aside. He said, the Zhang clan is indeed inferior to the other clans in terms of status. However, their strength is not weaker by much. How about we consider them a half share? Although Ji Chengkong intended to include the Zhang clan in the profits, the other clans agreed with what Hua Yunfei said. They would not allow Ji Chengkong to gain such an advantage. Everyone took a step back, no one else had a problem with such an arrangement. Before starting on their journey, they rested for a while. When the idol cultivators saw the situation, they all sighed. If the great powers all joined hands, they pretty much did not stand a chance. After the group walked a bit, they found another black coffin. They started to discuss whether they should open it or not. Finally, the Gai Marquis said, I have already opened many of such coffins. They are all coffins of martial monarchs. Although their value is high, it is not worth it, considering the risks. We are better off finding the coffin of the sages. When the crowd heard this, they all felt that it made sense. The other noble clans had opened such coffins before, as well. They knew that they only contained the ancient martial monarchs. Now that every clan was injured, there was no need to waste their energy on these small details. Along the way, they found many black coffins. Everyone immediately abandoned them all. After walking for two hours, they found a river that gave off a black, gaseous substance. The sound of the gushing river sounded continuously. The black gas above the river looked incredibly strange. Ji Chengkong stretched out his hand and pulled some of the black gas onto his palm. He observed it carefully. The black gas kept moving around, attempting to enter into his skin. It seemed like it was alive. Ji Chengkong appeared to have an invisible barrier blocking it, so no matter how much it tried, it was not able to enter.